Hello there, Maud. Oh, now, you can help me. You can help that pal of yours and all, if you don't mind, too. I'm sorry, Maud, I'm not with you. I bet he gave you a key, didn't he? To let yourself in so you can get on with that job you're doing. Yeah, yeah, he did, yeah. Well, be a good lad and use it to let me in. Oh, I don't know about that. Now, he's been out in the road playing dodgems in his wheelchair. Let me in and you'll be doing him a favour, I promise you. Yeah, Jim, you got a visitor. Oh, what the hell are you doing here? <coughs> I was watching out there when you were trying to get Mike Baldwin to run oh, you over. Oh, you stupid old bat! Just get out of my house, will you? In a minute. Just answer me one question oh, no, first. Oh, no, I don't have to answer any of your questions, Maud. As a matter of fact, you have absolutely nothing to do with my life. Do you understand me? Did you really want him to kill you? I said get out. Because, you see, I don't think that you did. <coughs> well, that shows you just how much you know, doesn't it? I think you wanted a bit of attention. I think you wanted folk to pity you. Shall I tell you something, Maud? It's always baffled me how you survived to be so ancient. I mean, why has nobody tried to throttle you before today, eh? Did you really want yes! to? Yes! You wanted to die? Yes! Oh, well, I'll help you arrange it better next time. I like a good funeral. Oh, well, what makes you think you would be invited, eh? Well, it doesn't matter. I'll be there anyway. <laughs> yes, you probably would, wouldn't you? No, not would. Will, when you do it. Because you are going to, aren't you? Look... I have answered your questions, Maud. Please, will you leave my house and give my head peace? We have planned your journeys around the network of canals that radiate outwards from the city centre. Yeah, it's dead easy. You can't get lost. Now, are you sure I'm not stopping you doing, well, whatever you would be doing if I wasn't here? One of my resolutions, Roy, when I left England, was that nobody would ever stop me from doing anything ever again. Uh, right, yes. Um... Anyway, I'm sort of on my holidays myself, aren't I? Recuperating. No. It's nice to have some company. Oh, yes, it is. Uh, I mean, for me as well. Right. Well, let's get going. Right. <coughs> Oh, after you. <laughs> I've got the map. <laughs> Somebody told me that you used to be a soldier. Yes. God help me. A sergeant, am I right? Get out! Well, you'll have heard a lot of talk about courage, about what it is to be brave, did you? And you'll think it's all about being young and strong. Well, now you're finding different. You're finding it's about when you can't be strong. That's when you need to have courage. I'll tell you what I need more than what I don't need. I do not need one of your lectures on this subject or on any other subject for that matter. Well, no. No. An old crippled woman sitting behind a counter. Do you know something? I couldn't have put it better myself. But what I always remember... Just shut up and get out, please! What I remind myself of every day is them young lads I grew up alongside of. They got turned into soldiers. They went off to fight for king and country and never come back half of them. Cut down when they were no more than 18 and 19 year old. And I feel how privileged I've been. Privileged to have lived on after them. Opened me eyes and still be alive when they're part of the earth in some foreign cemetery somewhere. Well, you've said your bit now, Maud, so please. Leave my home and leave me in peace. So, which regiment were you in? It's got nothing to do with you. The Royal Ulsters? Royal Engineers. Still remember your number? Six, seven, five. Six, nine, eight, nine, seven. Sergeant James MacDonald. I won't trouble you anymore. But remember... If you do decide to kill yourself, just let me know, and we'll do a proper job of it next time.
I still think you'll be letting down an awful lot of people. Well, who's going to vote for me anyway? Well, nobody, if they knew the truth. You are going to tell them the truth. Everything I put in my manifesto will be the truth, yeah. The truth that you don't intend to take your seat on the council? Well, no, they'll find that out afterwards. And find out they've wasted their vote. You think that's fair? It's not a matter of whether I think it's fair or not. It'll say something about the state of this country. Where well, every election's a fraud and every vote a wasted vote. So, no, I don't think I'm letting anyone down. What I'm doing is help educate them. Most people, if they have to find 500 quid to pay the rent, then they'd have mates help them out, wouldn't they? You know, colleagues who would help them, or employers who would pay them in advance and the wages. Uh-uh. Look, I'd help you, Luffy, but I'm going to need every penny I've got in case I'm sued. have to spend millions for speaking the truth. Doesn't say much for the world we live in, does it, huh? What's this style, do you mean? Oh, yes, the schoolgirl's dream candidate. Well, I thought all he wanted was an apology. He does now, but who knows what his spin doctor Emily Bishop might be whispering in his ear. Mm. Why can't you just give me an advance on next month's wages? Oh, Maxine, no! Look, I've done it before and you got yourself in a right mess. Then you begged and you pleaded with me never to do it again. So, sorry. So you'd rather see me sleeping on the streets, then? Maxine, you are not on any street. You're at your mother's. Do you know the way we acted are just a few lines in a silly local newspaper? You must have a guilty conscience, don't you think? I think, Audrey, if I were you, I'd keep my mouth shut. Take care. The World yeah. Cup is on, whether you like it or not. Oh. What have you done? It's like the black hole of Calcutta down that cellar. And it's his responsibility, that. Can't you clean that cellar up? Have you seen the mess? It's made of his T-shirts. Well, he shouldn't have come dressed as an ice cream salesman, should he? Oh, you mean he should wear old clothes like you do? No, I mean he should wear working clothes, just like everybody else. Well, that's the only thing about you that works, your clothes. Right, come through, love. I'll try and find something for you to change in. Cheers. Fred, hello, love. Oh, dear, my dear, what would you like? Uh, gin and tonic, please. Look, can I give you that? It's the bill from the photographer. Well, he charged you for photographing you. Yeah? He should think himself privileged. Alec, you look after <laughs> that. Gin and tonic, and I'll have another one of these. Right. Excuse me, Mrs Roberts. Oh. Yeah, I'd better be careful what I say, hadn't I? Have you spoken to the newspaper? Got them to issue a retraction? Yes, I have spoken to them, and what they'll say, well, you'll just have to wait and see. You'll not get far in politics, young man, if you can't stand the cut and thrust. I say, it's not for Namby Pambies, it's intellectual hearing. Exactly. It's not cut and thrust. It's downright lies and character assassination is what it is. I look forward to reading your apology. There you go. It's a good name for him, Spider, isn't it? I keep wanting to step on him. Oh, Fred, I wouldn't hurt him, is you? Hey, this is a bit steep, Audrey, this photographer. How long did it take? Oh, Ali, come on. You want me to look attractive and energetic and intelligent, don't you? Oh, and he managed all that? Oh, well, that is worth it, then. It's all I could manage, but well, I'll put yours in wash. It'll be dry in an hour. Well, if you're sure Jack won't mind. Oh, what's it to mind? Come on, get it off. Oi, what's going on here? You know what's going on? That's mine. Oh, don't fret. You'll get it back. I tell you what, it's never looked like that on you. <laughs> I didn't know it had muscles in it. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, yes. Very funny. Very funny. He didn't mind. Oh, ignore him. He's jealous. You see, you're what he used to look like 30 years ago. <laughs> but he had a bare belly then. <laughs> ah, don't tell me. Jack's not happy. Well, who says he's supposed to be? This is England. We don't have any of that rights to happiness stuff over here. No. Actually, I've got a little proposition I want to put to you. What's our proposition? How would you like to make good money, you know, doing nothing? Well, next to nothing. Just eat, drink and smile a lot. What is this? Well, whatever it is, it's strictly between you and me. All right. OK. Only, uh, I can't help but notice you have a certain way with the ladies. <laughs> 
Now, I happen to run an escort agency. Golden Years, it's called. Perhaps we could go there tomorrow, if you're not too busy. No, no, I'm not too busy. That'd be nice. And, you know, we can always cook at home tonight. And we don't have to go out. No, 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 I'd like to take you out. Right, then. Seems a very civilised sort of place, Amsterdam. I thought there'd be more dropouts and weirdos, you know. <laughs> sort of people who, who come here because it's a place where anything goes. People who don't fit into normal society. Yes, the, uh, the freaky, sort of uh, way out sort of people. Well, they do exist. I mean, there I was walking along beside you all the time. Anyway. Do you fancy Indonesian tonight? Because if you do, I know a nice place that's not too far. You don't mind if we join you, do you? No, of course not. Only I gather you don't intend to take your seat if you win. All oh, right, that's it. The heavy's moving in. Get me to change my mind. Well, I'm sorry, you're wasting your time. Well, I've got plenty of that. So have I. Oh, look, can you see me as a counsellor? I mean, be honest, I'm just... Not. So what are you then? Well, as far as politics are concerned, I'm a campaigner, aren't I? I'm an outsider, not a party member. So you're happy never to have any power, never to actually achieve anything? Spending all your life on the sidelines. Oh, you two are very good. You should do a double act. We do. This is it. Only it's not an act when we say we think you'd make a very good counsellor. You'd wake people up, get them thinking. You might actually achieve something. Mr Elliot? Here she is. A middle-aged man's fantasy, young, beautiful, and bringing a large cheque, or cash even better. Oh, well... For which you will receive one rent book and a key. Great. Only I haven't got the money. Have you not? I thought we had an agreement. Yeah, I know, and we have. We will have. Only I haven't quite got the money yet. I'm sorry, Blossom. If you haven't quite got the money, then you haven't quite got the rent book and key either. No, but I will have tomorrow. I'm going to get it from my mum and dad. Please, just give me till tomorrow. You're winding me round your little finger, aren't you? I'm trying to. <laughs> Go on, then. This thing you were telling me about, golden years... Yes? It's not some sort of send-up, is it? Of course it isn't. It's totally genuine and above board. It's registered with all the relevant professional bodies. Only, like I say, I don't like it talked about too much in here. And the idea being that I just go out for a meal with them or to a show? Yes, and then, you see, it's money in your back pocket. <laughs> Good-looking lad like you, you'll have them queuing up. <laughs> and, like I say, what happens after the show, the meal... <laughs> well, I won't be asking any questions, will I? Also, look at it this way, what it would do for you. You'd learn so much about government, finance, the way things work. Yeah, yeah, OK. Look, you're a young man. This experience could take you anywhere. I'm not straight to sleep. All right, then, let's put it this way. If you don't intend to take that seat, then I personally will do whatever's necessary, knock on every door in this ward if I have to, to let them all know what a fraud you are. <laughs> I don't feel it. What? I can't raise the money for the flat. Even my mum and dad let me down. I mean, banks and building societies, yeah, fair enough, but you think your mum and dad just have a little bit more faith in you. Look, I'll see you at lunchtime. Come across for a drink, yeah? Oh, no, I can't, cos Fred Elliot might be in there. OK, I'll come over to you. All right. Mm. Are you sure I can't get you anything? No, 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 thank you. <clears throat> I had breakfast at the hotel, well, Continental, a roll and some jam, but it was quite filling. Not what you'd serve with a calf. <laughs> They'd have a fit. <laughs> How is life in Weatherfield? Oh, much the same, except you're not there. Perhaps I could just have a coffee. Oh, yeah, of course you can, yeah. Do you uh, see much of Alma? Oh, she's always popping in. Cup of tea, chat with Gail. When I think about how I used to follow her around. I 
think I was just looking for a role model, really. Someone who'd teach me how to be a real woman. Yes. <clears throat> Which I am, now. What's more, I, I feel as though I am. I feel as though I've been on a long journey and I'm arriving at last. And uh, has it been uh, worth it? Well, I'm hoping so. I just know I couldn't have carried on as I was. And now I just... I just want to find out what normal life's about. You know, have a job, go out with friends. Maybe even fall in love. And people do, don't they? Yes, yes. We thought you, you might like to hear Geoffrey's election manifesto now that he's decided he will take his seat on the council if elected. I certainly would. <laughs> right, well, it's just a first draft, and I thought best thing, keep it short and sweet and stick to one main issue. Well, I'll go along with that. OK. <clears throat> People of Weatherfield, elect me and we will reclaim the streets, not by a lot of useless talk, but by direct action. I propose that posses of citizens armed with clubs stop cars and smash them into small pieces. Oh, after asking the drivers to step out first. <laughs> I should have put that bit in. Then, with these pieces, we will build barricades, which no, will block sorry, off the... Sorry, sorry, uh, can I interrupt? Uh, don't you think it's a bit strong? Smashing up cars? Building barricades? I mean, what you're proposing is armed revolution. If elected, I will bring a sense of humour back into local politics. Something I think that's sadly lacking in Weatherfield. <laughs> right, right, OK. Which we've just proved. Yeah, you have a bit. Now, don't worry, I'm just going to talk about the environment and air quality. That'll be all right, will it? Oh, that's fine by me. <laughs> then, of course, once I'm elected, we can build the barricades. Only after it's been debated by about seven committees. <laughs> but, actually, Geoffrey, th there is another problem. What? Well, if we are ever to get you elected, it, it's not just your manifesto that has to be right. It's also your appearance. Thank you very much. Good morning. Morning, Lord. All right, mate. What is it, another bottle of whisky? Oh, well, now, you'd like that, wouldn't you, you see? Watch me reckon myself and watch your profits going up at the same time. Well, that's what we're here for, isn't it? To serve people with the poison of their choice. Well, I'm afraid I'm going to have to disappoint you there, because that's not why I'm here. I'm here to say thank you for showing concern and giving me a wee talk the other day. I'm grateful. I'm sorry I didn't look like that at the time. Well, I never expected you to be grateful, nor even polite. Folk don't change just because they're in wheelchairs. Thank you very much, Maud. Life's never going to be easy. I'm the last one to tell you that. But feeling sorry for yourself's no answer. Drives folk away faster than if you had the plague. Is this the start of another lecture? No, that's it. And I'll never talk to you again unless I'm invited. Oh, but just remind me, will you, of one thing. What was that number of yours again? 675-69897, Sergeant James MacDonald. I'll be seeing you, Maud. I hope so. Cheerio now, eh? You look a damn sight better in that than you did in that old thing of our jacks. Maybe you should try getting Jack into one of these. I don't think it works that way, love. They say clothes make of the man, but there is a limit. <laughs> uh, can I have a quiet word? Oh, yeah. What about well, that business we were discussing? Escort agency. Oh, right, yeah, yeah. I'll be with you in a tick. Right. I was expecting to see a colleague of yours here, Maxine. Oh, I think she's still in the salon. So we're going to bring me some money. Mm? Still, I suppose that's the way you beautiful ladies work, isn't it? Keeping us men dangling at the end of a line. <laughs> Only because you love every minute of it, Fred. Oh, I do, I do, I do, I do. The all less so when there's money involved. Oh. So, you still haven't got the... Uh... Money, no. I don't know where I'm going to get it from, either. Well, can I make a suggestion? What, are you going to lend it me? <laughs> Not quite. But if you go to Fred Elliot and tell him you can't take the flat... Yeah, he'll just go bananas. It doesn't matter. In fact, it's all the better. Because then I go to him and tell him I want to take it. Boy, you mean we'll live together? Yeah, the point is, 
You tell him you can't take it, so he feels badly let down. Then I make him an offer. Chances are I can get it for a low price. Smash it. Great. <laughs> oh, no. No, I've never liked places like this. No, nothing wrong with this place. This is where I have my hair cut. That's very reassuring. Right. Jeffrey would like a, a haircut, please. Well, well, more of a restyling. OK. Right, do you want to come and take a seat? Well, what am I doing this? You want to get yourself elected. Come on. <laughs> right. Let's have a look. Ooh. Right. Now then, there's the lady's name and address and the time she wants picking up. Now, two things. We are a reputable agency operating to the highest of standards, so don't go there smelling of drink. Suck a mint. Right. Yes, and remember the little things. Open doors for her. Tell her she's got a nice frock on. Don't stare at the wig. She'd be wearing a wig? Some do, yes. But most important, yeah. the end of the evening, don't let her out of your sight until she's handed over a cheque. And that's for me? No, for me. Then I pay you the next day. You'll find it's a very satisfactory arrangement all round. Oh, you know what I've just realised? What? I'm meant to be working every night this week. I promise Vera. Oh, well, make some excuse. I mean, say you're poorly. Um, I'm not sure that's fair. After all, it were her that took me on. Oh, she won't mind. No thing about Vera is she's been lied to all her life. So, are you going back tomorrow, then? Uh, yes, that, that, that's when the ticket's for. Oh, I'm so glad you came to see me. Well, uh, I always did intend. I mean, it was always parts. Well, it was the main part, actually, if I'm honest. Well, I hope you can be honest with me, Roy. For goodness knows, I've been honest enough with you. <laughs> Too honest for me own good, you might say. And, um, <clears throat> what about you? Uh, will you be coming back to Weatherfield eventually? Oh, yeah, definitely. I'll have to. If only to sell me Dad's house. Ah. So you, you won't be staying? Well, that depends on whether there's anything to stop for. Yes. Or anybody to stop for. Well, best have a look what there's left to see then. I didn't know you spoke Dutch. No, well, I get by. Brought you back? Yes, well, everybody seems to be riding them, which is why I'm a bit delayed. I'm sorry about that. Why did you get lost? No, I, I got my front wheel caught in a tram line and inadvertently found myself turning left when I wanted to go straight on. <laughs> oh, Roy. <laughs> what? Well, I, I've always been aware of people laughing at me, but when you do it, it's, it's really nice. Oh, nice. Anyway, I've taken the liberty of hiring a bike for you. I thought we could go for a ride, it, it being my last morning and all. Roy, I can't ride a bike. Can you not? No. Oh. Well, perhaps we could stroll them alongside the canal, if you like. Like the big Lamsted Amos? Yes. That'd be nice. Roy. Yes? Must you go back today? Well, it, it's my ticket, you see. It's, it's got today's date on. And oh. I, I've not arranged with Gail to be away any longer. Right, of course, yeah. Well, shall we sally forth then? Right. <clears throat> oh, 
Geoffrey. That's magnificent. Do you think so? Well, don't you? Well, to be perfectly honest, I think I look all right. Oh, hello. Hello, this is, uh, Harry. Oh, yes, how do you do? Oh, well, what do you think? Well, I thought I'd seen everything with new labour. Yeah, all right. <laughs> they care, no, I'm not knocking it. Excellent, excellent. Uh, except maybe, um... Oh, Geoffrey. What? No, I'll never wear shoes in summertime. Well, I think you need to start now. Don't you think so, Mr... Um... All the same to me, love. I couldn't care if he wore a grass skirt. Hey, that's... No! Right, so, where do you want it? Well, outside, if it's not too wet. So put your shoes on. Where are your bikes gone? This is going to be very embarrassing, explaining to the shop. It's my fault. I should have known better. No, no, no. Yes, no, no. Roy, I could have told you. Bikes get stolen every two minutes here. Do they? Mm, yeah, there's so many of them. And they all look the same. You weren't gone long. Well, it didn't take long. Anyway, come on, let's go and have a nice cup of tea. There's a cafe over here. Right. Did you know the level of the canal is significantly higher because of the number of bikes lying on the bottom of it? I did, yes. I expect mine's there now. It's funny getting my wheel caught in that tram line like that. It's never happened to me in Weatherfield. It's a different gauge. Is it, really? No, I suspected that might be the case. Of course, I might have known you'd be aware of the real facts. I'm not. Sorry? I'm not, Roy. I'm not following. I don't know about the gauge. I just said that because I'm used to saying things like that. And I say things like that because usually people don't challenge what I'm saying. and It means I don't have to say other things. See. Hey, what about you, Maud? Here, come here, look. What about this? You and me have a race up and down here like chariots of fire, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> well, I can think of more pleasurable ways of breaking my neck, thank uh, you. You have a point there, so you have here, listen, come here, look. Hey! I've been doing wheelies soon so well. <laughs> hey, this is a political poster, right? Yeah. Well, go and stand over there. You what? Them two in the wheelchairs. Go and stand with them and look curing. It'll look good. Certainly not. My candidate wouldn't dream of anything like that. Yeah, no way. I won't compromise my principles. Suit yourself. I thought I heard you complaining about getting all dressed up when you don't normally do, that's all. Well, that's hardly the same thing, is it? It is in love and politics, darling. Right, over here. Here, cop all of that, go. Right. Big smile. Come on, come on. Cracking. Let's have another. Great. Show them tea. Lovely. What the? Excuse us, love. Oh, what's all this then? Mutton dressed as lamb. <laughs> That's a bit rich. Look at you, honestly. The length some folks will go to to get a few votes, it'll be your policies you're changing next. Yeah, well, at least I've got some. It's more than you, Eve. I've got policies made, sir. I just don't go screaming about them to everybody, that's all. And I certainly don't go changing my image just to get a few votes. What you see is what you get. Really? Absolutely. So you haven't gone to any trouble for your publicity? Oh, no, no, no. I've been far too busy campaigning. No, 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 no. I said to my photographer, just shoot what you see, love. I look forward to seeing them. Well, I don't suppose there'll be anything to write home about. <laughs> like your policies. We'll see. Say good night, Audrey. <laughs> nice to see you standing on your own two wheels at last. <laughs> All you need is a haircut and you look half decent. Hey, don't push your luck, Maud, please. 
Cheerio night. Bye. Take care. Hello. Oh. <clears throat> what can I get you? Dag. Uh, two teas, please. Thank you. So do you really see, Roy? Do you really understand what I'm trying to say? Yes, I, th I think so. But... Yes. Well, I've always found everything you've had to say about trams very interesting. Thank you. Are you not fascinated by internal combustion? I'm worried that I use interesting facts to avoid saying what I should be saying. Like what? Like, where are we going? Well, I... I would like to squeeze Anne Frank's house in if we could. No, Roy. I mean, where are we going? Us as people. Yes. See, I know where you're going today, back to Weatherfield. But where am I going? Well... Life could be very difficult for me in Weatherfield, Roy, whereas here... See, I, I need a certain level of support and understanding. You've got friends. I've got you, Roy. Nobody else. If I come back to Weatherfield, I might become a burden. Would you want that? I would never think of you as a burden, Hayley. So what do I mean to you then, Roy? Well... <laughs> yes. Are you all right? I'm, not, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, oh, are you wet? Uh, no, I'm sorry. Uh, it's all right. Uh, I think you've answered my question. Have I? You've told me what I wanted to know. Are you coming home, then? I don't think so. Thank you so much for coming to see me. Have a safe journey home. Where's young Blondie? Oh, Sandy. It's found in sink. Oh, yes. I've heard that before. I say, that's not a new one. Oh, no, he's as straight as a die. The feast is his peak. He's peaky. Oh, Mr. Elliot. Just the man I need. What can I do for you? Well, it's a bit embarrassing, actually. Um, I take it you've not seen Maxie. Can we have a word? Discreetly. Discreetly? Say no more. I am known as Weatherfield's Mr. Discretion, me. I thought so. Um, just, well, young Maxine. What about her? Well, I think she's bitten off more than she can chew. She's what? Well, you know, the flat. It's way above her price range, and the, the poor girl's terrified she's going to get herself into all sorts of legal bother. Can she not afford it? I'm afraid not. Um, she asked me to approach you. Hey, the silly girl. What do she think she's playing at? Well, I have got a suggestion. Oh, I. I'll take him. Hey, yeah, I love. <laughs> 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 
right. That's it. I'm away. Where are you going? Oh, we arranged. I'm having the afternoon off. Oh, no, you're not. Pardon? Well, Sandy's phoned in sick, so we're sure. It's all hands to the pumps, including yours. Yes, but you've got Jack. Oh, our Jack's gone to the dentist. I'm sorry, Alec. Didn't you know Sandy were poorly? Oh, well, um, I'm, I may have heard something, yes. It's a nice lad, isn't he? It's good to have somebody to rely on. <laughs> I hope he's going to be all right, cos he lives on his own. Do you think I should slip round with some of my chicken broth? No. Why? What's up with my broth? Oh, well, well, nothing, nothing, but uh, we don't want the staff to think we're mollycoddling them, do we? Oh, no. <laughs> Mind you, it's here since I mollycoddled a young man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you don't want to start now. How long will Jack be at the dentist? It won't be long. Right. Hi, Alec. Hi. Uh, I think I'll have a dry white one. Right. And you put it on the entertainment's account. I don't do no such thing. <laughs> Pulling your leg. Come on, what's got up your nose today? Uh, nothing, thank you very much. Right. And while we're talking accounts, I think it'd be a good idea if I took over the finances. Perhaps you'll hand that chequebook back to me. Oh, no, come on, stop being such an old grouch, Alec. Listen, I'm a mature woman, you know. Anyway, I need it to pay the photographer. I'm going there now. The opposition have only just started their poster campaign. Honestly, you should have seen what that spider were dressed up as. I shudder to think. Mind you, luckily, I'm not going to have any problems on that score. Alberto, the photographer, said I'd got classic lines. Oh, good. Yeah, we'll just toss that back and go and get your pictures, because we want to be hitting the streets before they do. Oh, jeez. Playing at. Hey, well, I hope she's all right. I'll give her all right. We're booking on the basis of there's been three people here. Look, we've managed. Yeah, to just, count. Maxine. It's four o'clock. How long does it take to pick up some lousy photographs, eh? Audrey, where have you been? Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm alone. Yeah, sorry, it's a bit of a pain. We've had to cover all your appointments. Yeah, I will booked in with you. Oh, not that I'm not happy with you, love. Yes, I know, love. I am sorry. I'll make it up to you, Rita. And Fair's all right? Mm, sorry. Photos, are you all right? I hope so, after all the work that me and you put in. Yeah, yeah, they're fine. Audrey, are you all right? Yes, of course. No, you're not. What, what's up? I'm so old! Hey, no, you're not! Yes, I am, and I'm so stupid. I've just been kidding myself all these years. Audrey, what's brought all this on? Oh, it's the photographs. They're awful. They're a disaster. Oh, I'm sure they're not. Hey, they're lovely. Lee. Oh, thank you, but I can see the truth. Hey. Do you know the photographer said I had classic lines? Well, you have. Yeah. All over my face and my neck. Oh. What am I going to do? Honestly, I'll just be a laughing stock. No, you won't. It shows someone who is uh, sensitive and mature, don't they, girls? It's, I, I mean, absolutely. Mm. Someone who you can trust, and that's exactly what you want, isn't it? Oh, thank you. Do you know, you're real friends, all three of you. Oh, it's just... Oh, I don't know. I was so shocked when I saw them. See, I just went wandering about. And then I saw my reflection in the shop window. And I saw this old person staring back at me. Hey, now, you're not old. Not in spirit, anyway. I hope I look as good as you at your age. Oh, there you go. It. Come on, that's better. <laughs> What's your destination? Uh, Manchester. 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 What? Mr. Kevin Garforth, Sarah Chikuma, please 
You don't think it's too young, do you? Oh, come on, Audrey. From now on, you've got to think young. Yes. A word, if I may, Maxie. Oh, I say. Very nice, Audrey. Spot on, is that? Oh, go on, Fred. No, spot on. Um, you may like to know that your dilemma has been resolved. Oh, what? And they... Please. Yeah. Take my advice, love. Never enter into arrangements that you are unable to honour. Luckily for you, I was able to make an agreement with your young man. Now, take a leaf out of the book of an experienced lady like Audrey here. Never bite off more than you can chew. <laughs> try. Oh, dear, where is everybody? Don't ask. They're all watching that football. We're going to have to do something, you know. We're only pub for miles, we're no telly. We're, we're going to go bust. Nah. Are you looking for that handsome young man of yours? Yeah, we're supposed to be meeting in here. Mm, the right charmer, isn't he? Gee, that new one of yours ain't so bad. Where's mm. he? Oh, he's poorly. Something he ain't. Well, no, he look fine to me, Vera. You are? But you, young Sandy you're talking about. Well, he looked in great form earlier on. I saw him getting out of a taxi with... Well, I thought it was his mother. I mean, she were old enough to be his mother. But uh, he were very attentive. She wasn't looking at him like, uh, well, like a mother should, you know what I mean? <laughs> no, no, I think he must have got it wrong. No, it was. I'm sure it was. Anyway, what do you want? Um, vodka and tonic, please. Right, a large vodka and tonic and a large gin of tonic, please. No, no. no. How's the publicity going? Oh, it's all under control, Alec. Don't worry. Have you got those photos? No props. And where are they? <laughs> At the printers. Good. <laughs> are they? I thought Look, you... Leave it to me. Leave it to Audrey, sweetheart. Think young, you said, right? <laughs> Hi, Emily. Hello. How do you do? Where's Battersby? Nice to meet you. Is this another one of your nephews, Emily? <laughs> Very funny. Not as funny as you look this morning, I can tell you. Still, that's politics for you, I suppose. But it's a dirty game. Not Jeffrey's politics. What? When you're trying to con people that you're a sober, honest young man, when all along you're a hippie with a habit, do me a favour. Hey. Let's hope he doesn't get to make mayor. He'll have ash pipes dangling off his chain. Right, that's it. Jeffrey, <laughs> oh, Jeffrey. Well, nice to have met you. <laughs> no more, Auntie Em. From now on, what people find is what they get. And if they don't like it, well, that's their problem. Oh, hiya. Oh, Fred's been seeing me. Ah, shouldn't think he's very happy either. <laughs> no, well done. So, when are we moving in together? Hiya, Vera. I just thought I'd pop in and apologise and let you know that I'm OK for tomorrow, if you were concerned about it. Oh. And, er, uh, me wages, if they're handy. Oh, yeah, right. So you're feeling better oh, now? Oh, fine now, thanks. I'm raring to go. Oh, it's just that somebody said they thought they'd seen you early, you know, in town. Oh, me? Oh, no way. I was in bed all day, me. Oh, well, she's not the most reliable witness. I'll go get your money. Yeah, everything all right? Yeah, fine. No problem. <laughs> Good. And have you uh, got something for me? Yep. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. All right, that's good, and that is yours. There we go. Thank hey. you. What the hell? Golden years. Golden years. I'll give you golden years. Uh, now, Vera. Shut up. And you. Here, take your hurt to pieces of silver, you Judas. And get out. Don't you come back.
Would you come this way, please, sir? Not you, sir. You, sir. What we'll do, I'll put the kettle on and then we'll sit down before we do anything else and try and collect ourselves. OK. Then first thing in the morning, I'm going to write a strongly worded letter of complaint to the head of passport control, or whatever he's called, and a copy to my MP. Oh, oh, honestly, Roy, there's no need. No, Hayley, I want to. I want to see that immigration officer personally disciplined for how he's treated you. Really? It, honestly, it's not worth it, Roy. Not worth it? Two hours he kept you stuck in that room, and not a word of explanation to me sat out there waiting for you. Oh, I'm sorry about that. I'm, I'm afraid it is just totally unacceptable. Yeah, I'm sorry. I should have said to you not to wait. No, no, I don't mean... I'm, I mean it's for them to apologise. Roy, I'd really prefer it if we just forgot about it now. What? I'd just really prefer if we didn't talk about it anymore. You leave it to me to do, then. I'll make a comprehensive complaint to all concerned. Roy, please. I'm asking you not to do anything. Please, certainly not on my account. What? I just don't want to cause a fuss. But you've had your civil liberties interfered with. I'm a very private person, Roy. I don't want to draw any more attention to myself. If it's all the same to you. Right. Do you mind? No. To your coffee. Stranger, I was beginning to think you'd gone teetotal. No, I've just been fighting a cold, Alec. Oh? Yeah, I've just been hugging me fire of the evenings. I don't think I'm winning. No, you don't sound too happy at all, Rita. Look, I'll fix you a hot McGilroy special. That's what you need. Go and sit yourself down. You know, I have a nasty feeling I've got flu coming on. I'm so shivery. Flu? In yeah. July? Well... No, no, what you need is a proper pick-me-up. And your friendly barman will work miracles. Just you wait. Oh, Vera, you have you got that list? Eh? That list of the barmaids that you interviewed and the phone numbers. Why? What do you want them for? Well, so I can get them back here and play me an interview, isn't it? They're 3.35, son. Here, listen, I don't want any of them barmaids. So? So? So, did... Is this not now my department, my little boulder bottom? Did you not say that you didn't want out to do with it in the future? Yeah, babe. Right. Well, trot away and get the list, then. There you go. Why are you into KJ? I'm not. Well, why don't you just tell me? Are we moving in together or not? Come on, don't make such a big deal out of it. Yes, but it is a big deal, Greg. Right from the start, I thought we were moving in together. No, you didn't. I told you. I said I, I couldn't trust myself living with you. Yeah, but when you said you'd get the flat instead of me, I, I thought... I thought I was doing you a favour. Did you? I got you out of trouble with Fred Elliot, didn't I? Look, I just need my own space, all right? Are you upset with me, Roy? Me? Do you think I'm a coward? No. What? For not being more of a fighter. No, I'm, I'm glad. Glad? Well, I, I'm a very private person myself, and well, I, th I think I would find it difficult if you were, you know, more political. That's what I should be, though, because I benefit from other people's campaigning. It's pathetic being so shy. Well... But honestly, I'd really understand if you'd rather not have anything more to do with What? Me. I can't stop things like this from happening, Roy. Hayley, I'm not saying that. Well, I would understand if you'd really rather not... No, look, look. Don't go home. Stay the night. You can have my bed. I'll sleep on the settee. Oh, no, no, I, I couldn't. Don't... Give up your bed. I'll sleep on the settee. I'll uh, take the bags up. Oh, I love. What can I get you? Ooh, G and T, please, Vera. Have one with me. No thanks. I'm looking forward to a nice, quiet bedtime cup of tea now. Why? What's the matter? Mm, got your guess. Alec. He's no help. 
No, it's me own stupid fault for trying to find a new barmaid. I got to end of my tether and stupidly said to Jack, just get who you like. Oh, Vera. I know. I need a brain transplant, don't I? Well, I'd have thought you would have filled this post by now. I mean, couldn't you find anybody right for the job? Listen, you've no idea how hard it is sussing people out. You have to be a mind reader. I, um, I could always recommend you my niece. Eh? You were right, Alec. That was just what I needed. Have another. No. No, I'll get home to my bed now. Are you sure? Yeah. Yeah, I just feel like a good long sleep. Well, thank you. Oh, it's my pleasure. No, are you sure I can't be? Oh, look, pull that away. And listen, always let me know if there's out you need, Rita. Anything I can help with any time. You're very kind, Ali. I will. I will. Good night, Ali. Good night, love. You know how much I like you, Max. I think you're a great girl. I really like being with you. It's just me. I just can't offer you the kind of commitment you need right now. You can't feel much for me then, can you? Do you want me to be honest with you? <laughs> it takes me a long time to feel really, you know, close to someone. It's how you learn to be when you grow up like I did. Oh. <laughs> when you're a young kid growing up, not knowing who your father is, you feel kind of cut off. So that's how you learn to be. And it's difficult to change. You don't want to be cut off, do you? Of course I don't. You've got to help me catch up. Take things a bit more slowly. That'd be wonderful, Grace. Bye. Oh, thank you, Geoffrey. What are you up to, Aunt Ian? Well, I'm just organising some friends to go round sticking up your posters tomorrow while you're off at your meeting. Uh, sticking up where? <laughs> Why you normally stick up posters wherever you can. I've got three parties organised. We'll have you all over Weatherfield by tomorrow evening. Mm. You're the only one who doesn't like it. Everybody else thinks you look very nice. I'm not interested in looking nice. I'm afraid, Geoffrey, you're going to have to... Um, what, what's that expression you use? Get real. It's awful, isn't it? Some kids have all the love in the world. And when there's others like you, I have a real Come struggle. Come on now, boys and girls. Some are a lot worse no off than I am. Like yeah, but you were scored then. Come on, tell your mother she wants you. It's going to be awful if you can't trust anyone again. Time! Oh, no. Still, you will do, given time, and I'll help you. I promise I won't rush things. You never know where she's been. <laughs> Night. Night. Good night. Here. Big what? Where's that list I give you? What list? That list of barmaids. I want it back. Yeah, well, I've not rang anybody yet, have I? No, I'm not, you're not going to do one either, because the vacancy's been filled. Filled? Yeah, and not by some brainless, busty bimbo. Vera, what do you mean? Natalie's niece. She sounds just right type for an ear. And she's got experience, and I've told her we'll be happy but, to but see but her as soon Vera, as... Vera, was it not me that took the responsibility of hiring the barmaids? Well, I'm now taking the responsibility of taking the responsibility back off you. Oh, um, just a minute. Come in. Would you mind? Can, can I just say something to you? Of course you can. I, I won't keep you up. Uh, the thing is, Haley, I've not been 100% honest with you. And uh, I want to restart with you as a mean to go on. 
So, well, about me being in Amsterdam, it wasn't really an accident at all, actually. Oh. No, no. I mean, truth is, I, I, I came out deliberately when I got your letter. Did you? Yeah. And, uh, well, I, I just wanted you to know that. Thank you. Oh, that's all right. Right, well, uh, I'll say good night then. Uh... Good night, Roy. Please, did you sleep all right? I did, yeah. I slept very well, thank you. Oh, good. It's actually quite a comfortable base on that sofa. Yeah, I was very comfortable. Roy, you know what you said to me last night? Hmm? About deliberately coming to Amsterdam to find me and that. Why did you do that? Why? Yeah. Well... Because it was such a big thing for you to do. I just felt from your letter that you'd be glad to come home, that's all. Well, I was, but I am. But it was still a very big thing for you to do. No, I, I just felt I owed it to you. Owed it to me? Yes, as, as the, the best friend I've ever had. Oh. I felt I wanted to let you know that, that, that I missed you and, and that I, I wanted you to, to come back. But what I'm wondering, Roy, is where do we go from here? Go. Yeah. I mean, we're here now. Well, we're next. What do you think? Well, I suppose you'll need to go shopping, won't you? Pardon? For some provisions to take home. And it's back to work for me. But, uh, well, do you fancy a pizza for lunch? <laughs> <laughs> I can't help it. <laughs> <laughs> what the? I think we were still doing the twist when that picture was taken. Well, she certainly wasn't Audrey Roberts then. It ought to say, putting the humbug into politics, excuse me. Good laugh, though, eh? <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear, oh, dear. Anyway. I don't think we'll be seeing Michael. Not after I told him to get the hell out of here, anyway. He did what? <laughs> Didn't Stephen tell you? No. Well, he was there, he heard what I said. But why? Because he came around at the wrong time and I was feeling sorry for myself, that's why. Right. But that's chucking away your best chance of getting better. <laughs> you better get that, it'll be the milkman wanting money. I can't believe you did that. <laughs> Oh. Hello. You're not the milkman. Uh, no, should I be? Sorry, I, uh... Yeah, I'm Michael Wall. I'm Jim McDonald's occupational therapist. Oh. You Mrs McDonald? Yeah. Well, I, uh... <laughs> I just thought I'd call round and see if he'd cooled off a bit after our last brief encounter. Yeah, he was just telling me about that. Come on in. I think he's really sorry. Oh, good. Guess who's here? All right, Jim. Ready for round two. Even if you could just display one. What do you mean, just? How many do you want me to? Well, ideally, if you could paper both windows, but both I know... Both windows? Good morning, Rita. Oh, oh, I see the poo face party's trying to queer my pitch. No, not trying, Audrey. It's succeeding. The cabin's supporting the Greens this year. What? Look. Rita, come on, you've always been a loyal Robert supporter. Well, yes, Not this but... time. Excuse oh, me. Oh, what does this mean, Rita? If you both of you let me speak. Thank you. I've only one word to say to you, Audrey Roberts. Paper lads. Pardon? Oh, don't pretend. I know what you've been up to with my paper lad, and I'm not best pleased about it. It was only a... Only doesn't come into it. 
Because of you, all my lads went out late. Oh, come on. Rita. Because you co-opted them into delivering your campaign leaflets. Well, if your leaflets are anything like your posters, they'll have made a total mockery of serious politics. Well, serious doesn't have to mean po face, does it? Eh? Well, anyone who tries to pretend they're 20 years younger than they are doesn't know what serious I means. I was forced to use that photo because the ones Alec had taken were useless. Oh, did they show you as you are? Both of you. Will you stop it? I've got a splitting headache and you're both of it making it worse. I just... both of you. Get out. Go and, go and do your campaigning somewhere else. And leave me to earn a living. So what you're telling me is, Michael, I have to stop kidding myself that one morning I'm going to wake up and everyone's going to be OK? Because, unfortunately, that's the way I'm still thinking. Yeah. That's not life as we know it, Jim. But it is life. And it's going to get a lot better than this. Well, you're dead, right? It's going to get a lot better than this. Uh, I'll get off if that's OK. Yeah, Elizabeth, look, uh, before you go, uh, I just feel odd to say um, everything you've been doing for me, it's greatly appreciated. Yeah, so Jim, I'll see you later. <laughs> Bye. Cheerio night. Morning, Gail. Morning, Roy. Morning. Morning, Hayley. Off one. Well, knock me down with a feather. Is uh, <clears throat> something the matter? Well, I'm just wondering if I've just seen what I thought I saw. Uh, sorry? Well, I expected you back today, Roy, but I didn't expect Hayley with you. Let alone staying with you. Ah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, how long has it been divorcing? Yeah, if you don't mind me. No, no, no problem, Michael. Ah, uh, about two years, something like that. Uh -huh. We well, don't exactly totally hate each other. No, not at all. Jack sure I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for her. To tell you the truth, she's been a rock altogether. I'm just sorry I've been such a burden, you know. Well, you won't be. Well, after I've finished with you, you're going to be Mr. Self-Sufficiency again. All right. Oh, well, dead on. One new barmaid lined up. What have you, uh... Yeah, I just came off the phone to her. I've told her to pop in tomorrow lunchtime so you can, you know, put her through her paces. Oh, great. Obviously, I've told her she'll have to pass an interview. Well, if she's all you say she is, she's as good as I had. <laughs> Alf! You must be bursting with pride. Hey? Bursting with marital pride. Audrey here. Bearing your political torch, as it were. Well, she might be burning it. I'm sure I don't know where to. Hey? Alf and myself are of one mind on this, and that's very depressed. Depressed? What are you depressed for? We'll get us extra votes by carload, will this? I say by carload. Audrey, whatever she wants. On campaign expenses. Just a minute. Could I have a word, please? Yes, of course you can, Maud. I'm at your service. Well, before you get cosseted with your admirers, <laughs> maybe you should have a piece of advice from a plain, ordinary voter. Well, I'd be delighted. What is it? Don't give up your day job. What? Because if vanity is all you stand for, don't expect many crosses in your box. But... <sighs> oh, well, 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 Spider! I must say I'm amazed at you. Hi. I've just seen one of your posters. And one of the things that I credited to you is be you true to yourself, but I'm sadly wrong. You're exactly the same as she is. Pathetic fakes. Perrier. Natalie Love. Yes, Jack. About this niece of yours. Lorraine. Lorraine, aye, aye. What's she like? Well, don't you remember her from last time she visited me? No, I don't. You don't remember her, do you? Not that I'm aware of, Jack, no. no, no. Well? Well, go on, go on, remind us. Is she out like you? Like me in what way, Jack? Womanly. Curvaceous. Curvaceous. What does she look like? Well, she's actually changed the way she looks, Jack. She's more into um, heavy boots now. Boots? Mm, and studs, you know, since she went back to college. Student? Oh, she's dead serious about her studies, Alec. I mean, that's why this job part-time would be great for her. It would be great for us, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Listen, you'll like her. She's got just what this place needs. What's that? Twinkle. 
for me. Yes, thank you. Uh, I'll manage that, right. yes. Uh, what is that? It's a television set, Jack, so our customers can watch the World Cup. You must be joking. Watch the World Cup on that puny thing? <laughs> you must be. You better off putting a pot plant on the bar. Yes, well, we'll see about that, won't we, Jack? <laughs> There you go. Is that oh. all right? Oh, that's dead on. I'm starving, I tell you. It's hard work getting your clothes on yourself, you know. <laughs> so, uh, what do you think of him? What do I think of Michael? Well, I think he's a saint, to be quite honest, putting up with the likes of me. Mind you, he says I'll not be long now before I can get myself out of bed and get out and about a bit, you know what I mean? Well, then you'll be shot at me, won't you? Fantastic. Well, I mean, you'll be free then. Live your own life. Liz? I've got any water. I'll just fetch it. You know, I think I'm the only one who's sense behind this bar. Excuse me? Well, look around. There's you and our Vera recruiting bother booted students for behind the bar, and then there's him fiddling about with his useless telly. It is not useless. It was working perfectly well in the shop. Well, it, ah. it'd be useless if it'd be brand new. Jack, you see, your trouble is that you're just too set in your ways. Will you stop fiddling about? We have got 24 hours to find the barmaid of our choice before we get Natalie's plug ugly niece foisted upon us. So what are we going to do? We are not panicking, Jack. Oh, so you like revolting student types, do you? Natalie said she had a twinkle. Yes, where the light glints on the stud in her nose. Well, anyway, I haven't time to discuss this now. Audrey! I need a word. Get my drink's over here. Uh, yes, good. Oh. Because I want a straight and sober answer as to what's happened to those photos I paid 190 old quid for, please. Why? What do you want with us? I want to get some new posters made instead of that mockery you've landed us with. Oh, Alec, don't be so stuffy. It's what the people want, pepping up with a bit of glamour. I mean, when they see me next to that pasty-faced tree hugger, it won't be the issues that get the vote. It'll be the X factor. If you've gone that, you can't use photos that are 25 years out of date. You turn up on folks' doorsteps, they'll think you're the candidate's mother. <laughs> no. So well, then, then it makes, right. it makes yeah. us up yeah. for this. Yeah. Yes, that's right. Yes. Yes. And then I'll give you another cover. Jeffrey! Oh, Here he now. is. <laughs> I was hoping you'd be back soon. Hello. Hello. <laughs> These are your trusty volunteers. They'll be on yep. leaflet duty next. Oh, <laughs> yes, leafleting. Don't worry. You won't be doing any more on my account. Oh, Jeffrey, what on earth? <laughs> I can't believe I let you do this to me. I knew it was a sellout, but you just kept on at me, didn't you? Well, no more, Auntie Em. From now on, I fight my own campaign my own way. Oh, Em, Eight o'clock. Eight... Eight o'clock. Mr Cropper. Cropper. Thank you very much. Goodbye. What's to turn his radio down, then he'll hear what folk are saying. Treated Hayley? Yes, well, trying to. She generally insists on paying for herself. Yeah, well, she's a very independent-minded person. That's true. Did she, um, stay last night? No. Why should she? She's got a house of her own. No, it's just the ones, cos we got back so late. I'm popping down the post office for short of 50 pence pieces again. Hello, Alma. Oh, Bonnie. Come on, give us a cup of tea. Guess the latest. Go on, thrill me. She stopped over. When they got back from Amsterdam, she stayed the night. They've not slept together. Well, why'd you say it like that? Why what? Well, like it couldn't happen. It's so unbelievable. I think I owe you a really massive apology, don't I? Yes, I, th I think you probably do. 
Do you want me to move out? Well, if that's what you want. It isn't. Not at all. Look, I behaved like a right nerd the other day. I mean, there's you slaving away on my behalf, and I come along and lay into you. Perhaps you should find a new campaign manager. Oh, no. Somebody younger, someone with fresh ideas. Somebody who isn't going to insist upon you wearing things you don't want to wear. You can't pull out now. I mean, I only started canvassing properly because you persuaded me to. Well, perhaps I shouldn't have. Not at the end. Perhaps for the sake of our friendship, I shouldn't have. It's just that I felt such a twerp wearing that suit. I wish I could make you understand. It's like me asking you to wear a shell suit or something. I mean, how would you feel? What is a shell suit? <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm obviously out of touch. Oh, please, don't. I, I couldn't bear to fall out with you, Geoffrey. I couldn't bear to fall out with you, Auntie Em. I'll stay on until you can find a replacement. How does that sound? Leanne? Yeah? How would you fancy taking on a bit more responsibility? Well, what would I have to do? Take over the early shift full-time. Full-time? You mean, like, every day? Well, obviously, I do them occasionally to give you a break, but, yes, every day. I'll make it worth your while. I know you and Nick are a bit short. Yeah, all right, then. Can I rely on you? I know you like to go boogieing or whatever it is you do these days till all hours. Hey, have I ever let you down before? Well, there was that time. Oh, OK, yeah, one time, but apart from that, when shall I start, then? Well, see as I'm full of flu. How about tomorrow? Yeah, all right. Good. Go and put kettle on. Let's have a brew. Just feel as if I need a drink. Morning, Alec. Morning. Forty of me usual, Rita. Love it. How are you feeling today? Oh, I've had a poor night, Alec. I've still got a bad head. What, still? Yeah. Rita! Oh, you have to let me in every morning, though. Oh, you're kidding. Just a minute. Here. These were Mavis's. Now, that's the key to the shop door. And then that's the burglar alarm. I'll show you how everything works. I'll take you through everything. Right. Thanks. <laughs> Is that wise? I'm getting old, Alec. Carrying up at six o'clock in the morning to do these papers, it's beginning to take its toll. Besides, What's the point of having a dog and barking yourself? Right, I'm going for my dad's for tea tonight. OK. Um, do you and Morgan want to come? Oh, I don't think so. Well, he said it was all right if you wanted to. No, I don't think so. Well, he said it was OK if you didn't as well. Just tell him Morgan's been paying with his tea, cos it's true, innit? I mean, he is. Tell him thanks, but I'm best not leaving him. Right. OK. <laughs> Um, it's, uh, still all right if I go, though, isn't it? Yeah, of course it is. All right, see you later. All right, then. Bye. 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 Now then, Audrey, now these posters of yours. I'm sorry, but they're going to have to come down, Volker. Stop it and look it at them and laughing. I, I, I'm sorry to be so blunt. They're, they're fine, Alec. Look, they're printed, they're up, end of story. I did not lay out £190-odd pounds for a photo session for you to dig up some snapshot from the 60s. 70s? They're not that old. <laughs> Listen, I want to see a new poster with one of the new photographs on it. But you can't. Why not? Because I put them in the bin. I don't them. <laughs> Burn them. Alec. The 190 odd pounds. They made me look like Grandma Buggins, Alec. I wouldn't mind if they looked like me, but they don't. 
Have you looked in a mirror lately? Oh, very nice indeed. Ex now, come on, Audrey. Life's too short. Hundred and ninety odd pounds worth. Oh, there's a definite change. It's like a breath of fresh air. It's as if he's decided he's going to get better, come what may. Oh, well, good for him. Hey, he's invited me and our Steve round for tea tonight. Hey, you smash it. Yeah. Well, I don't know what's made the difference, but something certainly has. Oh, well, it's you. Is it, heck? There you go, ladies. Oh, cheers, Nat. Thanks. It is, you know. I mean, you've nursed him, you've bothered with him, you've shown him that you care. That is exactly what you need when you've had the stuffing knocked out of you the way he has. Oh, and where the hell have you been? I'm late. Sorry. We said half past ten. It's gone half past twelve. I thought he said just to pop in when I were ready. Jack. What? This is our Lorraine. Lorraine, how do you do, love? I'm all right, Jack. Sorry I'm late. Crossed wires. I'm generally very punctual, aren't I, Natalie? I shall tell you. Uh, no problem. Come through the battle. My only failing, if I have one, is that I'm indecisive. At least I think I am. Which doesn't really affect being a barmaid, does it? Or does it? <laughs> <laughs> you tell me. <laughs> if he says anything, just ignore him. Hello. Where's the old um, white suit then, Spider? In the wash, is it? I think you need your eyes testing, Curly. Oh, yeah? What nice, friendly, acceptable policies are we uh, adopting today, then? Oh, sorry, once you've got your white suit on. Family issues, maybe. Or even uh, anti-drug campaign, perhaps. What's so ironic is that you two probably share a lot of the same ideas and values if you'd actually sit down and talk about things. <laughs> Leave it out, Emily. It's true. No way he sold out of capitalism. I know you both a lot better than you think I do. In fact, I'd be prepared to bet that you weren't ribbing Geoffrey about his suit yesterday, just to be rude, Norman. But because you actually felt quite disappointed that he looked as if he might be selling out in some way. Oh, I wouldn't go that far. And you, Geoffrey, you let yourself get wound up by Norman because you know that despite working for a company you don't approve of, like Furman's, He's basically a kind, caring, responsible member of the community. What, him? Now, I'm going to buy us all a drink. Well, here's your paint, Curly. Well, I'll pay for that. Now, if you two can't have a civilised conversation, I'm going to bang your heads together. Experience. Loads. Mainly on the other side of the bar. <laughs> <laughs> Only joking. No, I grew up in a pub. Do you know the black head in West Didsbury? Um, my mum and dad had it till very recently. Um, in fact, you know, you're just like my mum and dad. You're just like my mum, Vera. She always knows exactly what she wants and she just goes out and gets it. <laughs> I really admire her. She's brilliant. They're running their own hotel now in Buxton. Uh, yeah, I quite fancy that, you know. Uh, up not Buxton, though. Somewhere more livelier up and... Buxton's livelier than it was. Is it? Well, it is since they moved there, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Alec, our new barmaid. Yeah, this is Lorraine. No, that's uh, Natalie's niece. Hello, Any... Alec. Come on, love, take your coat off and I'll show you around. 190-odd quids with it. <sighs> what did they say? I don't know, it's dead. Bye, Fiona, thanks. All right, then, see you later on. Thanks a lot. <sighs> right, what can I do for you? Well, I'll have to see if I can think of something. Oh, yeah, well, if you're looking for Max and she's out on a dinner break. No, I'll wait. Um, you could trim my hair for me while I'm here. Me? It costs you six quid if I do it. Whereas, on the other hand, if you were to let Maxine do it, she could do it in the comfort of your own home. Oh! oh. Yeah, but you have to pay for quality, don't you? That's if you actually have a letter into the flat. What did you just say? Sorry? Just then, about quality. <laughs> I didn't think you were listening. You haven't got the tiniest bit of respect for her at all, have you? Of course I have. No, you haven't. Why are you letting her kid herself that you're serious? Oh, I'm serious. I'm always serious about women. I take having fun. 
very seriously. Hiya. Hi. Hi, Greg. I just popped in to see if you wanted to go for a drink after work tonight. Mm, I'd love to. Mm. Mm. Fine, then. <laughs> Six-ish? Yeah, great. Well, see you, Fiona. See ya. Yeah, we can get a glass. Oh, brilliant. Yeah. Fiona not with you? Uh, no. No, she couldn't come. Right. You invited Fiona? Yeah, of course I did. Uh, Morgan's teething, so, uh, she didn't want him, you know, crying if there's a babysitter there and all that. Right. Probably best. Well, I'm starving. Can't wait to see what you've cooked. Yeah, I can't smell anything. Ah, well, that's because we're having fish and chips on it, and I'm afraid you have to go and do the honours. So away down the road and get the full hit. All right, while you're there, get me a large bottle of dandelion and burdock, just for the crack, eh? <laughs> right. Right, here I go. Wish me luck. Why, where are you going? Uh, picking up Pinky and Perky at the Rovers. Then we're going shaking hands with the great unwashed. Yeah, that actually means that her, Alec and Fred are going out to persuade the common people to vote for him. Ooh, well, it means you have to kiss babies and things. Uh, I've never understood this kissing babies. I mean, it isn't even as if they can vote, is it? <laughs> See you, bye. See you later. Bye. Oh, I'd better get weaving as well. I'll keep Greg waiting. Max. What? Um... You know all this business with um, Greg and him not wanting you to move into the flat and that? I don't think he's trying to tell you something, do you? What is it with you, Fiona? Can't you stand me being happy or something? No, 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 it's not that. It, I'd love it if you found a bloke who made yeah, you Yeah, and I've found him. Now just stop pulling him to bits. You sound like my mum. Max, if any other bloke could have given you that line about being let down when he was a kid and having trouble committing himself, he'd have kicked him into touch in about ten seconds. Yes, well, he's not just any other bloke. I just knew I shouldn't have told you, and you make a great big deal out of it. I just don't think he's as nice as you think he is. Yes, well, you don't know him. I don't think you do. Look, Fee, when he's messed me around a fraction of what Steve McDonald's messed you around in the past, then I might consider whether you know what you're talking about. I'm here, I'm here. All set. Yeah, no, I'm not going anywhere till I've had a gin and tonic. I've been on my feet all day. Them bolsters look stunning. I say stunning. All Weatherfield is a gog. Well, thank you. Tell him. A hundred and ninety odd quids worth. He's uh, taking me out tonight. He won't say a word. So you're getting on all right. And smashing you. Yeah. Well, he's very fond of you. Yeah, I think he is, yeah. Well, he must be the way he went all that way looking for you. I don't know. The thing is, Alma, I still don't know whether he likes me like that. I mean, I'd understand, obviously, if he didn't, but sometimes it gives me the impression he does, and then he'll do something to make me think I'm just kidding myself. I wish I knew. Gail said you stopped over the other night at his place. No, I did, yeah. No, it happened. No, we just got back late in, and uh, I didn't fancy going back to an empty house by myself. <laughs> Why? Did Gail think we'd be up to something? No, Gail's just got a very lurid sense of imagination sometimes. <laughs> hello. Oh, hello. Hi. Can I get you two a drink? I'm afraid we haven't got time, thanks all the same. Are you ready, Hayley? Oh, yeah, yeah. See you later on. Yeah. Right. Ta-ra! Can I help you? Hmm? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, sure. Uh, hello. Um, um, can I have a pint, please? Yeah. I'm Lorraine. I'm new. Hi, I'm pleased to meet you. Um, what's your girlfriend having? Oh, that's not my girlfriend. Um, Natalie, have you seen Greg at all? No, I'm sorry, Maxine, I haven't. No. Anyway, listen, the reason why I got you around here was uh, I wanted to say how much I appreciate what you've all done for me over the last time, you know? Oh. No, no, I'm serious, Elizabeth. That's why you're here, man. I just wanted to say thank you very much indeed. No, oh, actually, Dandelion and Bird up talking oh, this. is you heard yourself. No, really. I really appreciate it, and thank you very much for putting up with me when I've been a pain in the neck. And thank you very much for not giving up on me when any other nor human being would have done so. No, I'm not. That's nice, isn't it? <laughs> Listen, Dad, um, do you want us to hold hands and have a 
special moment. Oh, <laughs> shut up, will you? <laughs> Stop it. Your dad's trying to say something important. Yes, and listen, if... Well, look, if there's anything good come out of this, then it's the fact that, well, I appreciate what I had before, OK? And even if I don't walk again, at least I know we're all talking to each other, you know? You will walk again? Yeah, of course you will, Dad. Well, I see. And at least it's happened to me, son. If it happened to you, I couldn't have borne it at all, honest to God. Chong Zhang, you know. Hmm? Oh, Jack, do you mind? Yeah, yeah, I know what you're thinking. I just happen to think she's got a very interesting face. And the rest? Yeah, not only that, she's beautiful. Not only that, she's got three different boyfriends. Everyone a rugby player, so I think on. Curly, glad I caught you. Um, well, listen, listen, come in. Don't you think she's beautiful? Uh, yeah, nice. Listen, um, Aunt Ian reckons now we're mates again, I should ask you whether I could borrow your computer to print out some election leaflets on. Well, yeah, yeah, all right, but I'm doing it for her, not for you, all right? Obviously. Thanks. All right. Um, so, can I buy you a pint? Well, it's for Aunt Em's sake, of course. Not for you personally. Understood. I'll get them. Uh, Lorraine, can I have two pints over here when you're ready, please? Certainly. Thank you. Hello. What's your name? Spider. Why? A bit quiet in here, isn't it? World Cup. Yeah, it is. And if Alec thinks he's their poxy little tell, he's going to bring the punters in, he's sorely mistaken. Has nobody told him? Hi, Jack. You see Maxine? Hi, Craig. Oh, hi. What do you want to drink? Oh, nothing, thanks. Um, I can't. Sorry. I've still got loads of work to do. I just popped in to tell you not to wait for me. Oh. Look, I'm, I'm waiting for a fax, so... Well, I'll come and wait with you. No, no, you don't. No, no, I insist. <laughs> come on. <laughs> it's years since I've been here. Thought you'd like it. <laughs> you forget how pleasant it is. I could have hired a boat. But I was concerned whether you could swim or not. It's not so much fun if you can't swim. That's the trouble with surprises. You, you can't budget for everything. <laughs> Including the weather. <laughs> I've always been a very strong swimmer, actually. Oh, good. Because if I'd fell in, you'd have to rescue me on account of I can't do much above a doggy paddle. <laughs> in fact, swimming was the only thing I could thrash through the lads at at school. It's dead romantic as well, isn't it? Don't you think it's romantic? Yes, I suppose. Yeah. It was really nice what you said earlier. It, it got to me. Because you were right. I don't think either of us knew what we'd thrown away. Not until it were too late. Well, obviously. We'd have known to hang on, wouldn't we? Yeah, well, there you are, you see. Hindsight's a great thing, isn't it? Yeah, I suppose. I don't know. Maybe... Maybe we just want to think of things... Well, make them seem better than they were, you know what I mean? Sometimes people just want to remember the good things, don't they? Well, yeah, but if you remember the good things, maybe it's because they were better than the bad things. Aye, whatever. Right. Well, I'd better get off home. Why? What's at home? Uh, telly. Telly? Well, she, you can watch the telly here with me, so you can. Do you want me so? Yeah, I do. And as long as you're here, uh, I won't put the kettle on. Oh, I see. Now we're getting to the truth that matter. You just want a slave. Made under more often. <laughs> <laughs> I love you. Well, that's very nice, thank you. Mm. I don't just mean I love you, though. I mean I'm in love with you. I want to be with you. I understand what you mean about the flat. And I told you, give it time, Max. You can't rush into things like this. But you don't want us to fall out, do you? And that's what might happen if we don't take our time. That's the last thing I'd want. Well then. I've booked a table at the Portofino for eight. Oh, I love 
love Italian. Yeah, I know. I, I remember you saying once. This is lovely, though. There's a reason I asked you out tonight. Oh, oh yeah. I, I, no, I don't want you to be alarmed. Right. Uh, the thing is, it's, I've been wondering, um, what I'd like is if eventually uh, you and me could uh, like possibly think of uh, having a relationship. Well, we already are, in a way. No, 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 you're misunderstanding me. No, I'm not. You mean an affair? Yes. But you would have to be very patient with me. See, it's, it's, it's not something that I'm comfortable with. I mean, not, not because of you being you, but... Well, because I'm me, really. We'd have to take it a step at a time. I'd like that. Would you, really? Yeah, more than anything. Well, that's good then. Where do we start? Well, I suspect we'll have to play it by ear. Okay. Per perhaps if I kiss you. I don't mind. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I know, you're sad. Yeah, I'm sorry. Oh, look, I've said it again. <laughs> no harm done. I've got to get to work. Oh, yeah. How's it going? Are you settling in all right? Fine, then? yeah. I'm going to be late. See ya. Sorry. <sighs> Do you know, sweetheart, you don't know your ball. What? Being normal. <laughs> right, so you've got all that in stock, yeah? Great, thanks a lot. All right, I'll see you Friday. Bye bye. Cause I've been there all day. Oh, there's a phone box outside if you're desperate. Look, I won't tell you about last night before nose disease comes sticking her all in. Oh, well, what happened? Me and Greg. <laughs> nope. We got to that stage in our relationship. Max, you got to that on the first night. No, I'm look, I'm being serious. Mm. I told him I loved him. There'll be posters all over the college, sweetheart. Now, you just haven't seen it because of all this air over your face. Now, it starts at 5.30. It'll be over at 7. Just tell me how many you're bringing. How many what? How long is it since you've had any of this cut? It, it's fine. How many what am I bringing? How many of your pals you're bringing? Look, have you got a minute? Because i better cut this, Nick. Otherwise, it'll turn into split ends. Gran. Oh, well, if you could manage, say, 50, I would sleep so much easier tonight. 50? Yes, come on, you're a popular lad. Here, yeah, and you can tell them all they can have a badge as well. There, look. Great. Nice. she moving in? Oh, this is a nice surprise. I had to take a detour. I thought my arms were going to drop off. That's all this. The past. It's me dad's. I'm taking it all down to Oxfam. Oh. Only another 29 trips to go. Is this what you've been doing all morning? All morning. I've only managed one room. Not a happy task, I'll bet. Mm. Could you do with some company? Oh, would you? Oh, what are boyfriends for? Yes, mate. Look, I know I'm strong enough, but when are these weights going to come? Oh, you should have had them by now. I'll be along any day, I reckon. Right. Right. One transfer board. It's not very really high-tech, I know, but it's going to make a lot of difference, this. High-tech? Michael, look, I hate to disappoint you, but I could have made one of these in five minutes, so right. I could. Now, this is how it works. You stick one in on your chair, just lift yourself up. Oh, that's it. Ah! 
at the other end on the bed or the car or whatever you want to get yourself onto. Right, right. Then you just lift yourself up and slide yourself across. You see, you make it sound dead simple, don't you? You said quick. Go on, let's see how you go. Right. Tommy! Oh, he decent? It's tough luck if I'm not, isn't it? Hi, Michael. Is he behaving himself? <sighs> just about, yeah. So, what's this you're doing, then? I'm surfing, Elizabeth. It's a transfer board. That's good news for you, actually. Your lifting days are over once he gets the hang of this. Oh, yeah? Well, what are you two looking at? Well, let's see, then. Well, you don't expect a demonstration on an empty stomach, do you? All right. I'm in Tamalta. I'll just get a full of heads. trying to do me out of a job. Look, Liz, why don't you go down the pub, get yourself a lager and lime, stick your feet up and just do nothing for five minutes? I bet you haven't stopped all day, have you? Is that an order? Yeah. Right. I'll not stay where I'm not yeah, wanted. I'll yeah. see you later. Cheerio. Right. Is there such a word as unifiedness? Yes. No. It's unity, Audrey. Unity. What? Got a short memory when it suits you, haven't you? What are you on about? Well, it wasn't that long ago when you were fretting whether to get back with Stephen McDonald or not. I lived and breathed mm. it with you. Now, all of a sudden, I get it together with Greg and you couldn't care less. Max, you're just more bothered about dog muck on the streets with Councillor Audrey. No, you? I do care. It's just... What's there to say about it? You said you loved him, he said he loved you back. Mm-hmm. Not exactly. Then what exactly? He said he was dead sweet. Sweet? Yeah. He said... He said he was really touched and it meant a lot to him. So he didn't say that he loved you too? He didn't, did he? Could one of you get that? Fiona Middleton, that's in speaker. Fiona, now let me run this by um, you. Um, Miss yeah, Weatherfield, uniting the borough oh, in Buta. Well, next Tuesday, well, we hold a pageant for the 90s and we judge the contestants on glamour, deportment and uh, the local general knowledge. What do you reckon? Do you know what? I reckon that I'm the only sane person here. Oh, <laughs> Yoda. What? I, I couldn't help noticing your, your, your bookshelves. Oh, Dewey Decimal System. Except for the bird watching books, they're in order of purchase. <laughs> if there's anything that takes your eye, you've only to ask. Oh, no, 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 no. You're not getting rid of all this lot. Mm, pretty much. Well, some of it's worth a few, Bob. I mean, the binoculars and, and his bowls. <laughs> not so me. No, I'll, I'll keep hold of my mother's sewing machine and one or two bits and bobs of china, but apart from that... As for these, <laughs> I'd gladly chuck them on fire. Every Friday night, same routine, as far as I can remember. We do polish all shoes, I line them up along mats. Then do his balls. 20 minutes with buffer each one. Head muscles like a navvy bit end of it. See, it looks after him. Hmm. You know what his last words to me were? Harold, have you polished me woods yet? Harold? He got a bit confused. Towards the end. Number one, Jim. Never forget the break. Never forget the break. <sighs> Rule number two. Go easy. Now, this is going to take you a long time before you can do this on your own. Never mind doing it quickly. Yeah, all right. Go on, then. What's rule number three? And just don't be too bothered what people think. Oh, people. Liz. <sighs> I should worry your head about Liz. He's been carrying me back and to the potty for God knows how long. We don't stand on ceremony here anymore. All right, it won't shatter her illusion seeing you make a hash of this, will it? I see, so is this the, uh, the pride before the fall speech, is that it? Come on, Michael, tell me the truth. What exactly am I allowed to do? Well, 
You can eat your sandwiches. Yeah, get well, stuck into them. Thank you very much. But I'm too tired to chew. You haven't. Chocolate to show it bread. Roy, chocolate digestives are shortbread fingers. It was me winning the Little Prince contest at Butlins. Me and Mother on the donkeys at Blackpool. Me and Dad, Christmas, he taught me to ride a bike. First day at senior school. Why? He threw him in the fire. Day I told him I wanted to be a woman. Scarborough. We had glorious weather that week. I remember when this were taken. <laughs> My mum were sick on monsters just after it. It was really embarrassing. He won the tyrant. He just couldn't cope. There weren't many pictures of me after this any road. I ditched the ones we had. I wasn't a happy teenager. I'm sorry, Roy. What for? Nothing's ever straightforward with me. Maybe it's all best left, eh? Right, I'll uh, I'll get on then. Sorry to be a pest. Oh, no, really. And I know how it must look, love, but yeah. I just want to get this speed absolutely perfect. Can I go early? Oh, Audrey, come on. You haven't lifted a finger all day. Oh, I know. There's but the floors to be done, there's the towels to be done. Let her go, I'll do it. Oh, Maxine, you're a poppet. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Oh. So, what, you're not rushing off to see Greg tonight, then, eh? Not tonight. Saving some space. That's what they're saying, it, and blokes like him. Blokes like what? You don't know him? Know enough. Look, why have you got such a downer with him? I haven't. Well, every time I mention his name, you just get a dig in. No, it's not that. It's just... I just don't think he's the right kind of bloke to get serious about. I'm just being honest, and that's what you've always told me to be, myself. No. No, not with blokes like Greg. Blokes like Greg, you've got to... Well, you've got to play them at their own game. You've got, you've got to act cool, act as if you don't care. But he does care. Not enough to say that he loves you back, Max. Whoops! <laughs> That's the last of that. Oh, I'll nip down the shop if you like. Oh, no, uh, we've got another one under the sink. Oh, it's time I was getting back. It's not fair on Gail, leaving her to cope like this. No. But, but don't worry about this lot. I'll, I'll drop them off at the charity shop on my way. Oh, no, no, I can... No, 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 it's the least I can do. Oh, thanks for all your help in that. My pleasure. Does the charity matter? Only there's a shop on Crimea Street where Emily Bishop works. Friends of Weatherfield Hospital. Oh, no, whatever. That sounds fine. Uh, I get a hero's welcome when they see this lot. <laughs> right, well, uh, 
Uh, I'll see you soon. Yeah. See you, Roy. And what is my secret? My secret is that I am just like you. Behind this glossy facade, it's just an ordinary mum who worries when the dustmen don't arrive, who cares that you youngsters have nothing to do and nowhere to go at night, who cries when you cry and laughs when you laugh. So, if you are ready for a change, if you want to put the personality back into politics, vote Audrey Roberts, Independent Business Alliance. I am woman. I am willing. I am Weatherfield. Is that it? Yes. I thought it was just the warm-up. You can need a drink. Yes, but well, you're not the only one. Come on. Hey, hey, no, not in here. Oh. No, through there. We need a receipt for campaign business. Oh, really? Well, I wouldn't want you. There you go. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, no, not prawns for tea again. Ha, <laughs> ha, very good. Oh, wow, there's loads. How many did you do? Keep your voice down, will you? There was no one in the office, so I did a double. And Vera, you've not seen this, all right? Seen what? Oh, nice one, Curly. Untouched. But listen, Spider, prawns apart, I appreciate what you're trying to do. Prove it. Be my campaign manager. You've already got one. No, aren't you me stepping down? What does it entail? Well, campaign strategy, administrative duties, share the groupies. <laughs> you're on. Oh dear, I'm filling up there. Two pints, please, Vera. It's got to have more content. Yeah, yeah, it's well, never mind, or never mind that. Couldn't you use an old speech of Alf? What's wrong with this new speech of mine? Well, how long have you got? Oh, fuck, oh, Winston Flaming Churchill. Uh, close, but no cigar. Audrey Love, it's now that a blue pencil and a few hours' work can't put right. Well, happy scribbling. Audrey, now, now. I hope that you will let me read it before the rally, or perhaps you would like to borrow my best frock and deliver it yourself. <laughs> oh, shut up. Oh, campaign crisis, I hope. <laughs> well, don't look at me. I mean, I shouldn't really be here. Vera, get this man a drink. He's got a long night ahead of him. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Uh, you might not have noticed, uh, Lorraine, but uh, tonight I'm wearing a bit of a different hat, you know. And which hat's that then, Curly? The invisible one? <laughs> no, this morning when you saw me, I was wearing my manager's hat, but tonight I'm wearing more of a local politics hat, you know. Hey, listen, let me have a leaflet. Didn't know he was into all this stuff. Spider Nugent. Have you all got daft names around here? <laughs> Nugent's a great name. So, can I count on your vote? I'm from an apathetic generation, Spider. I'll take some persuading. Oh, good. I like a challenge. We should get together and discuss it sometime. I'll make a note of that in my uh, private campaign diary. <laughs> Haley, I've been ringing your bell for ages. Yeah. I just had to get out of eggs. I was sick of your own company. Yeah. I do come for more bags. No. I, I, I took it out of the bin. I hope you don't mind. No. Only some days you, you can have it out on show, and, well, some days, if you feel like it, you can shove it in a drawer. That's up to you. I thought you thought. That's why I... Why should you bury the past? Because it's made you what you are. Modest and gentle. And lovely. Very nice of you to call round, Alec. Have you no better to do? Well, I was a bit worried about you, so I thought I'd just pop in. <laughs> Ooh, heck, it's stifling in here, Rita. It's like a sauna bath. Is it that bad? Oh, I'm sorry. 
Funny, I, I couldn't get warm. So, how are you? I mean, really? Oh, tell the truth, Alec. I took myself off to the doctors. And what did he say? Well, what do they always say? It's a virus. There's a lot of it about. Anyway, are you ready for a drink? After the day I've had, I couldn't be ready. <laughs> right. Let's put that right. right. Hey, steady. <laughs> Looks like you've had a head start. I blame it on wine gum. <laughs> Listen, Michael. Yeah? Before you go, give us a straight answer, will you? How long is this going to take? I mean, how long before I get some kind of independence back, eh? Oh, Jim, it's very hard to say, you know. You know, a lot of this depends on you, and some of it depends on, well, for want of a better word, luck. <laughs> luck? I mean, it is going to happen, but it could take uh, you months. Look, it's Liz I'm thinking about, not me. I mean, she can hardly be expected to keep this up indefinitely, you know what I mean? And, aren't there some kind of wee ladies, you know, like home helps come round and do all this kind of crack? Well, that's what your disability living allowance is for. That's what me what's for? You're claiming benefit, aren't you? Well, I get a wee drop of money, aye. The form's over there, bottom right. Yes. Well, you've not filled this in. Oh, hey, listen, have you seen the questions here? It's a nightmare. Look, I've got to go now. Next time I come, I'm going to go through this with you, all right? Right. Now, you should qualify for a higher rate. It's about 35 quid or something. Oh, what they do How much? Well, no, 34 pounds, something or other. Better than a poke in the eye. Oh, well, I'll tell Liz. She'll be dead chuffed. All set for the big match build-up, lads? Certainly are. Tess and Kev called round for him about half an hour since. Said they'd see you down there. Right. Cheers, Kev. See ya. See ya. Be good. We will. <laughs> Where are you going? We're going down the Legion. Meet the lads. The Legion? Yeah, cheap beer and free sarnies. Hey, a widescreen TV. Hey! hey. Did you hear that? Where are you two going? Well, we just fancied somewhere with a bit more life. <laughs> How long's it been like this? I'll get it. It's been like this for the past hour at least. <laughs> Have you seen Greg? No, I haven't, love. I wish I had. Oh, give us off a log of it. Push the boat out, why don't you? It was Jack. He says he's stopping at the Legion to watch the game. Oh, can't say I blame him. I feel like a in He's love. done what? He's supposed to be a partner in this business. Yeah, well, some partners get overruled, don't they? Like when we wanted a big screen. But you didn't, did you? Mind you, you know best. I know, that's so why you're old here. old is on. Jeffy's sexy bubbles oh, bonbon. It's more <laughs> like, <laughs> isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Bit of a laugh, isn't it? Yeah. Say that again. Yeah. Do a bit of that. Yeah, comedy in the Rovers. Can't wait very, to tell very very yeah. yeah, we could do this more uh, often, can't no. we, girls? Um, <laughs> do you remember earlier when I... Thank you, Elizabeth. That's the best curry I've had in a long while. Right. So I'm not redundant yet, then? No, nope, I only wish you were. Hey, if that's the way you feel, I can soon leave you to fend for yourself, you know. No, I don't mean that. Listen, uh. I was having a wee chat with Michael today. And we reckon we might be able to get you a bit of money. What are you on about? Well, not be much, but sorry, five pound or something. I don't want your money. Well, it's a good job too. For if I had to pay you what you deserve, I'd be bankrupt. Jim. No, 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 no. You see, look, it's not my money we're talking about here, right? This is money from the state that you're legally entitled to. But don't go tell me you couldn't find a use for it. Couldn't we all, but... That's what I mean. I just thought it might make things a wee bit easier for you. Easier? For who? What do you mean? What do I mean? Right, well, here's what I mean. I mean, it might make all this carry on seem a bit... more like a job and less like an obligation, you know what I mean? Thanks. What? Well, in case you hadn't noticed, I don't do it out of obligation. I do it because I choose to. 
Yes, and I'm very grateful. Thank you very much, Elizabeth. But I am your ex-husband. Ex, you know what I mean? You've been out there in the big wide world. You've had a taste of freedom. And now you've got this millstone round your neck. Now, don't get me wrong, I would feel exactly the same way, so I would. Oh, cheers. Remind me to stay clear of accidents for the foreseeable future. Oh, no, future. no, no, no. Oh, God. No, no. Look, I don't mean... Do you know, I wish I'd never started this. Oh, no. I'm glad you did. If that's the way you want to play it, fine. I'll come in, do a job, and we'll pretend there was never anything between us. <sighs> what do you think? Very nice. And it's uh, Leanne's first display. I didn't want to stifle her enthusiasm. No, no, it's, it's very good. <laughs> but listen, I came to check on you, not your display. How are you today? Oh, I'm all right. Now there are good night's sleep can't fix. I'm not so sure about that. You looked decidedly peaky last night, Rita. Nonsense. But thanks anyway. Thanks for what? Well, for coming round and showing an interest. And coming today. Oh, it was nothing. Well, it meant something to me. It's very nice to have a quiet night in and a good chat sometimes. I'm not sure that I'm again sometime. Up now, Will. Up now, Will. Oh, listen, I'm going to have to go. Uh, that's the telly arriving. A telly? Yes, wide screen, circular armor, stereophonic, so we can hear those bone crunching tackles in painful and minute detail. I'll see you. No, I, I said nine o'clock. We've all got businesses to run. We can't be holding campaign meetings and expect us businesses to run themselves. I'm beginning to wonder if you're taking this seriously, Audrey. What do you mean, of course I am? Look, I didn't ask my fingernail to break, you know. Broken fingernail? Is it painful? Well, it is, really, because it was really... Look, can we get on right. to the matters in hand? Would you like a plaster? <laughs> I don't think a plaster is not very good for no, no, Can we get on, please? But thank you, though, for your concern. That was really nice. Not at all. We have to have you looking your best. Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> right. Now, Fred and I have isolated what we consider to be the salient issues. We have to make you different than Spider. Right. Now, what do you think it is, that you've got that Spider hasn't. Decent fingernails for a start. <laughs> I mean policies. L yes, Ali, listen. Now, the thing that is different between me and Spider is mm. that, well, I take a pride in my appearance. Now, that's what's missing these days. We should try and get back to the times when folks were... Uh, Fastidious. Exactly, exactly, Fred. You know, when young men had lovely, short, clean hair and the girls wore lovely, pretty, floaty things instead of these great hobnail boots they go around in now. Oh, dear. Yeah, yes, yes. Could we get ever so slightly back to the issue of your speech? <coughs> <coughs> this... We shall be appealing to the middle ground. Okay. Uh, people like uh, ourselves, you know, solid, dependable people, but with entrepreneurial flair, whose activities and hard work should be rewarded in order to encourage others. A bab on a nation, the small businessman. Small. <laughs> so the return of the unified business rate and the notion of a rateable value. Oh dear, now what's all this about? Well, it's about securing you the votes of the people who matter. Do you understand this? What, this? Yes, of course I do. I mean, Alf is going on about this all the time. See, it's like I've said. This fine lady with her fingernails will be the mecking of us. <laughs> right. I thought what I'd do today is leave you a flask. No charge. Come on, Liz. Can we not get this sorted out? I didn't mean to cause any offence, you know. No, I don't suppose you did. I just don't want sympathy, that's all. That is not what I'm giving you. Then what is it? <laughs> Hello.
Hello? Oh, hiya. Yeah. yeah, I'm just on my way to work. Yeah, hang on. Steve, for you. Stephen, how do you... Liz! Liz! Listen, I'll call you back. No, I'll call you back. Liz! So, ladies and gentlemen, in conclusion, the National Non-Domestic Rate Pool, which has provided the unified rate in the pound, must, if it is to be retained, be tempered with the development of a business improvement area for Weatherfield, so that the relief for the businesses so necessary for growth will be given. So what do you think? Ah, uh, it's great, yeah. What does it mean again? Well, um, with the abolition of the business rate to the national system from the local system, yeah. do you know I'm not sure? I shall have to check with Alpha. Oh, but you see, now, people don't want to listen to all this. I mean, I'm falling asleep just in the telling of it. Well, no, I mean, it's, it's kind of interesting, isn't it? Hmm? Yeah, it's great. Thank you, Steve, love. That's all I wanted to hear. From now on, I'm going to write my own speeches. Where are you going? I'm going to write something for Fiona Love that people really want to hear. Ta da! What's she doing? I'm going to come and drink. I've absolutely. You okay? Uh, yeah, I'm fine, thanks. Why? Well, you just you seemed a bit distant this morning, as if you had something on your mind. You could say that, yeah. Right, come to the Rovers, I'll buy you a drink. Uh, I'd love to, but I can't. Thanks, Mike. Jim will be waiting for his dinner. You know, he's a lucky fella. Having you fussing around after him. Thank you. you. Change your mind, you know where we are, don't you? Yeah. Cheers, thanks. What does it look like I'm doing? I'm hoovering. coming around here again. Very funny. I'm serious. I don't want you to. Sorry, it's my fault. All these things I'm saying, I keep coming out wrong these days. Look, what I really mean is, Liz, you're a free woman. You should be out there meeting people. You don't want to be held back by me all the time. No. I'm here because I want to be here. All right, look, the real reason is you're slowing me down. And what? You're slowing me down by doing everything, doing all the things for me. I need to be doing these things. If, if I've any chance of getting to be a half-decent man again. Yeah, but I'll help you. No, you can't help me by being here all the time, doing everything for me. Oh, well, I'm sorry if I'm holding you back. No, no, come on, Elizabeth, don't start that. I don't mean that. I'm very grateful, but I have to do more. I have to do more if I'm going to get my independence back. Yes, but I'll help. No, no, you won't help being here. All I do is shout and you come running. Well, I thought that's what you wanted. Pardon? I thought you wanted me. I thought that's what you were getting round to saying. It's 
story about a laugh, isn't it? You say one thing and I think the opposite. Please, Vera. Oh, he's a dear. Yeah, it's your big meeting tonight, isn't it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> God help us if Audrey Roberts becomes a politician. You keep her in a place. Hey, she won't need any help from me. Huh? Now then, I know we are political rivals, but we can still be civilised. <laughs> oh, from the camp which took sleaze to new heights. Oh, that. A misunderstanding. Wrong end at stick. He appears to be quite confident. The confidence of the naive. Give over fretting, Alec. Audrey will slay him in the aisles. She's got the popular touches, Audrey. She's in tune with ordinary people. Yeah, I know. That's what worries me. I mean, we want to come out of this with something besides free nail varnish for the over 50s. Which is why we give her a decent speech, isn't it? With what we've given her, how can she go wrong? I say, how can she go wrong? This is Charlie's daughter, Sylvia. Hiya, Norman. Hiya. Can I pint, please, and uh, two tickets for the Trocadero? The Trocadero what? Sally. I'm glad you took my advice. Oh, I will have you were right about that. Lorraine, nothing? Uh, no, she'll be on tonight. Anything else? Uh, no, I'll just nip home and get me rolled up beach towel. You know what? To reserve me seats. <laughs> 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 Yeah, you I know. You're, right. you're crazy, you're so Let's go. Hey, you mad? Look, I'll see you later. Hi, sweetheart. How are you doing? Uh, fine, I guess. But, um, well, I've run out of them leaflet thingies, so I better get off, eh? Oh, uh, have you? Right, run out, I mean. <laughs> oh, yeah, those. Um, well... Don't yeah. worry, look, I'll get your granddad to finish off. Oh, cheers. See you hey, later. You, no, no, just a minute, just a minute. Uh, Come on, put this on. No, you got me, kid. No, come on, for your grand. Oh, that's lovely. Smashing. No. Oh. Read all about it. Read all about it. Read about your own independent green candidate. And when you've read all about him, come and meet the man himself and then give him your vote. Yes, vote for Spider Nugent, the thinking man's answer to the... The rabble that usually are living the town wrong. Oh, oh, okay. yeah, come on, then. calling you. Come on, vote for Spider Nugent. Honey, don't just stand there. Come on. What? Vote for Audrey Roberts. Come on. Oh. Vote for Audrey Roberts. Vote for Audrey Roberts. Oh, for heaven's sake. Good gracious. Come on now. And, uh, oh, Audrey. No, 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 Audrey. No, no, Listen, if it's good enough for young what's his name, it's good enough for you. Now, hust. What? Hust. This is a hustings, isn't it? So hust. <sighs> it's uh, two pound thirty. Love that. Thank you. Are you all right? Well. No, uh... she isn't. She's very poorly, and she shouldn't be here. I keep telling her that, but will she listen? Oh, is that right? I'm fine. It's uh, just one of them summer bugs that's going on a bit. That's all. Well, that doesn't sound too good, does it? Well, it isn't. But she won't listen. I'm fine. Just. Keep Morgan out of range to be on the safe side, eh? Yeah, OK. Well, uh, take care, OK? If it gets any worse, you want to go and see a doctor? Mm. All right, see you later. On. See ya. Bye. Oh, honestly, you take any more, then Lee, you're rattling from Rosamond Street. You just concentrate on what you should be doing. And I don't thank you for joining in my conversation with customers, either. Okay, quiet down, please. I'd now like to present the independent Green candidate, Mr. Jeffrey Spider Nugent. <laughs> free strikes <laughs> and free education. <laughs> Cheers. Well, I've no need to ask how you are. Oh, I don't know how I do it. Amazing, isn't it? This wonderful talent I've got for reading him wrong. Do you know, I'll convince that he were gearing himself up to asking me to move back in or at least start seeing each other again. But? No. 
We were plucking up courage to tell me to bog off. Oh, no. Liz, that's awful. After everything you've done. Oh, he was very upset about it. Wasn't malicious. He was concerned. Huh. So what's it all about, then? Why is he telling you this now? He reckons I stifle his independence. You what? How does he make that out? Well, he says the more I'm there, the less he's got to do. What? Ah. Uh, don't take this the wrong way, but I can see that. Oh, cheers. No, no, think about it. If you want Jim to be more independent, well, you've got to give him the space to be able to do things for himself. You've just got to work out a regime that allows him to do his own thing. Yeah. Right. So where do I fit in? Oh, just seeing how things are going, complimenting his efforts, praising him, that sort of thing. The usual man's <laughs> I'm afraid so. <sighs> just when I were getting used to having control. I quite like him being dependent on me. I'm not a political party. There's only one of me, and that's where I score over all these others. Because I'm not towing any line. <laughs> you vote for me, and you'll be doing the next best thing than being there yourselves. Because I'm there to ask questions. To keep them on their toes. To make sure they do their best for you. Finally tonight, another independent candidate for the Independent Business Alliance, Mrs. Audrey Roberts. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> Good evening, everybody. <laughs> Honestly, didn't he go on? Do you know, I thought I was never going to get on. Nearly got me knitting out. <laughs> and what was he going on about her? Free this, free that, free the other. Well, of course, I know why he's keen on that, because he normally has to pay for everything. <laughs> but I'll tell you what. Now, I didn't hear him say anything about women, did you? No. No. I was going to talk to you tonight about the uniform rate in the pound. But then I thought, oh, no, I can't be bothered with that. No. No, leave that for the old fuddy duddies to worry about it. Eh? What we want is a good time, isn't it? <laughs> so, ladies, this is for you, okay? <laughs> it's about time we got our way, isn't it? Yes. Especially for you, I am unveiling, wait for it, I am unveiling tonight the return of the glamorous Miss Weatherfield concept. <laughs> <laughs> so, what do you think of that then? Listen, kid. I'm sorry I snapped at you earlier. I know you meant well. Oh, that's all right. And even noticed anyway. Did you snap? Well, even if you did, it was only because you're not well. She'll see our Janice when she's got an head on her. Yeah, well, I'll have an early night tonight. That should fix me. Why don't you have an early night and stay in bed tomorrow? No. Why not? Don't you trust me? Yeah, of course I trust you. But if I stay in bed tomorrow, it'll send all sorts of messages to my brain. Chief one being that I'm past it. And I'm not. All right. Right then, I'm finished. I'll see you tomorrow. Yeah. Hey, I had a lot of nice compliments about your window display. Well done.
recognise a good idea when you hear it. You're a disgrace to women. I'm a disgrace. If you looked in the mirror like this, sweetheart. <laughs> I have got to put this contest on because it is what the people want. They want to return to the decent ways when you can look in an audience and see which are the lads and which weren't. I mean, looking at you lot, I haven't a clue. You can say that again. Yeah, well, I wouldn't bother entering, darling, because I don't think you stand a chance. Oh. <laughs> Alpha, you can take me home now. Alpha? Fred? Alec? I expected to see Lisbon, eh? All oh, right. You're missing her, then. Well, I thought you might be. Well, she's out shopping, is she? How did she told you where she is? That's not like her. How would you know? Well, it's just not the impression she's given me, that's all. Well, if you must know, I've told her to come around less. Oh. oh. Well, go on, what's that supposed to mean? It just means I'm not surprised. Oh, come on, Michael, cut yourself on. Just tell me what you mean, OK? I've got this other client, a uh, bloke called Joe Thomas. Oh, he really loves his partner, and uh, now he's lost the use of his legs, things are a bit different. You know, he sees with other men and he knows he can't compete and uh, he doesn't like it. Now, first he was getting really angry about it, but they've worked through that now. Then he got very depressed. And now he's begun to realise that he's losing control of a lot of the decisions in his life. Decisions he used to take for granted. So he's told her he doesn't want to see her anymore. Now, it isn't because he doesn't want to see her anymore, it's because he's in control of the decision not to see her anymore. However much it hurts her, however much it hurts him. Rubbish. Oh, well, you know him, dear. So why is that rubbish, then? It's rubbish because he's probably got nothing left to give, Michael, OK? So he does the only thing he can. He sets her free. Well, yeah, I mean, that's how he dresses it up. Wants it to sound noble. I that thought was... your work was meant to be confidential. Joe Thomas. Well, I have changed his name. There you are. Like I told you, he probably doesn't even exist. Oh, he does, he does. You shave his face every morning. See you tomorrow, Jim.
Oh, God. Oh, God, what's happening to me? Where do you want these? Uh, over here. Look, oh, do you know what people say, don't you? If you can't stand the heat, you get out of the kitchen. I was hoping for a bit of sympathy, especially for the new film. Well, I just think you're laying yourself wide open. And I don't know why you've done it either. Because, Maxine, I'm trying to make Weatherfield a better place for you and your children. Mm, you made me feel better. What about the grandchildren? Yes, them as well. Oh, I'm not surprised you blew it. You probably made me feel about 100 years old. Mm. So I did the turn against you. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing to do with me. I mean, all they wanted to know was what I was going to do to bring a bit of life into the place. The next thing I know, the whole room is in an uproar. And Fred, Alec and Alf have disappeared. I've been mean, talking about generals deserting their troops. Audrey. I don't know how you've got the gall to face me. Look, uh, do you two want to go upstairs where you can carry on your discussion? What discussion? I've got nothing to say. Oh, back home again, eh? Oh. Hello, home. Hello, home. <laughs> <Hello. laughs> oh. oh, look at this. Horrible bills for Daddy and... Lovely birthday cards for Mummy, oh, eh? Oh, do you want to open up between you? Share them out. Oh, there you are, then. Yeah, I thought we'd never get back. Yeah. If anybody wants anything to eat, they'll just have to get something out of the freezer. No, they won't, cos Daddy's got a surprise for us all. So look at that card. That's a nice one. What kind of a surprise? We're all going out for dinner. Where? The Crown. I booked it before we went away, because I knew you wouldn't want to start making a Sunday dinner when you got back. Well, I don't, but I don't want to go out either. Not the minute we get back. Things to do, Kevin. That's a lovely card. Who's that from? Auntie Gina. What so. things? It's your birthday. Well, I've got unpacking for a start. But we're going out for our dinner. Look, girls, do you want to take those presents we got for David and Sarah Louise across the road? Come on, and now if they're not in, just come straight back. Here you go, now be careful on that road. See you in a minute. I'm sorry, Kevin, but I'm really shattered. All I want to do is switch off. The last thing I feel like doing is getting ready to go out again. I feel drained after that flight. I must look a right mess. I'll ring up and cancel. And I know it was supposed to be a surprise, but... Well, I wish you wouldn't spring it on me in front of the girls. It makes me look a right killjoy. I'm sorry. And anyway, I don't think the girls will want to go to a hotel and have to sit still all the time. Just thought you'd be sick of burgers. Look, why don't we go out tonight? We could get a babysitter. Tonight? Oh. All right, yeah. I'll uh, ring up and try and change the booking. Well, what, have you gone off the idea now, or what? No. Just go and see if the girls were all right. Oh, uh, do us a favour, will you, Max? Just check if I've locked the flat door. Yeah. Sally. I'll uh, catch up with you later in, in the robes about dinner time, yeah? yeah? See ya. There it was. Cheers. <laughs> Hi, Rita. Hello, love. Did you get the card? Yes, thanks. Are you all right? You don't look very well. Oh, dizzy, sick, cold. Do I feel as if I've been kicked by a horse? Isn't it getting any better? Do you feel cold? I can't say I do. In fact, I'm boiling. I'm shivering. I've had the fire on and my winter dressing gown. Have you been to see a doctor? Yeah, she said it was a virus. Just has to take its time. If you rest. I bet she said that. Oh, if I don't keep busy, Sally, I'll make myself even more miserable. I was going to invite you to a birthday drink tonight, but I think you'd be better off in bed. Oh, so Leanne keeps telling me. Well, it's about time you listened to her. Did you say it was your birthday? Never mind that. Come on, Rita, let's get you upstairs to no, bed. I have to wait till Leanne comes back. It's early lunch. No, I'll mind the shop till she gets back. Go oh, on, to bed. Sally, I feel dreadful. I haven't got your card. I always remember. I am sorry. Go on, upstairs. Right, love. I'll be up in a minute. Up a bit, lovey. This high. Down a bit. Do you want one in the window? Yeah, I, I think we'd better put one on the outside, otherwise we won't see it through it. Uh, but come on, and I'll, and I'll show you where to put it. I tell you, some up for now. I shall be glad when all this is over, all this football. Oh, so will I, better. <laughs> Listen, how are you fixed for making some sandwiches this afternoon? All that lot? 
Well, our chat reckons it's going to be packed out in here. Oh, go on, then. I've got now to tell some. <coughs> Oi! I hope you're right about all this food. We don't want it going to waste, you know. Betty, at 8 o'clock tonight, this place is going to be heaving. Hey, eh? what with that new wide screen? It's going to be like being there in, in the Stade de Francais. Ooh, ooh, ooh. What with the cheap booze, free food? It's going to be the busiest night since Jubilee. Well, I hope you're right. I know we've been enough bar staff and all. Oh, hang on, Vera. Whilst I remember. But till 8 o'clock, I am going to be working my little cotton socks off. But once that referee blows the whistle, that's me finished. I'm watching the match. Do you mean you won't be behind bar? Oh, for the duration. And where did you get this idea from? Because I have not missed a World Cup final since West Germany, Hungary, 19 flipping 54. Yes, but we didn't have a pub to run then, did we? I mean, why can't you watch it and carry on working? Because. because I might miss a flaming goal, might I? Well, they play it back again, don't oh, they? Give me strength. I am not going to miss the match. Well, neither am I, then. You're not interested. You never play me, have been. That's a lie. A lie? You never even come and watch your husband when he was playing for Salford Sunday League, you. Did he used to play football? <laughs> In my prime, you know, when I first got wed, yeah. What position did he used to play? Inside out, like he does now. Centre forward. 30 goals a season, yeah? Scored every match. We're lucky if his girls want to see her now. <laughs> never <laughs> once, never once did she come to watch. Because I was so busy making your dinner. You don't even watch it on the telly. You're not interested. Now, listen. You're not leaving me to do all the work. You don't even know who's flaming playing, woman. So it smells good. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, son. Oh, me? No, no, no. Just doing myself some cheese on toast, mate. Stop making a proper Sunday roast. Not at all. I couldn't be bothered with that carry on. Yeah, fair enough. She has been round, though, hasn't she? No, she hasn't actually. I got myself up. All oh, right. Not had a row, have you? No, we haven't had a row. Right. Look, I have to learn to do things for myself, okay? Now she understands that. All right. She's trying to help, though. I know she's trying to help, but it's not doing me any good, and it's not doing her any good. So I've told her to keep away, okay? What, just like that? Yes, just like that. I have to learn to do things for myself, all right? Now, do you want a cup of tea? Uh, yeah, yeah, I'll put the kettle on. No, you won't put the kettle on. I'll put the kettle on. <sighs> Cheers, best if you don't, eh? Cheers, mate. You have a good time, then. Uh, brilliant. Wide screen, eh? Yeah, get in early, otherwise you won't get a seat. A uh, bit of a problem, Anna. Sally's birthday. Don't tell me you're going to miss the match. I had it all planned, didn't I? Nice lunch out, back in time for the football. She told me she wants to go out tonight now. Yeah. Kevin, it, it's the final. Didn't you tell her that? It's Sally's birthday. <laughs> Can't tell her to rather watch football. Well, couldn't you go early? What? Until I will just have the soup. Oh, <laughs> God, what? Yeah, on. I wonder if there'll be an hat trick, you know, like the one in 1966, when Jeff Hurd scored against uh, West Germany. Peter, you're not even interested in football. I am, aren't I, Betty? Oh, I'm not. The only match I've ever seen was when I was on my honeymoon with my Cyril, Blackpool and Preston North End. I was chilled to the bone. Oh. Do you know, with that crowded, I never saw a thing. So it was the first time and the last time. Hello, yeah. Can I uh, book a table for tonight, please? Yeah, a special occasion. It's my wife's birthday. Uh, about half five, please. Oh, right. OK, half past seven. Thanks. I really think you'd be better off in bed. No, no, I, I'm all right, Sally. Not if you don't do as you're told. Do you still want this soup? Do you know what, perhaps that's all it is. I've not been eating properly. I'll stop with you till you have it. I'm not sure I can manage this, Sally. Oh, oh! I'll get a cloth. Oh, don't. Oh, Sally, I don't know what's wrong with me. Oh. There. I'll keep Wolf from the door. Best of British, is that? All oh, right, thank you, Fred. Now then, listen, about the other night. Pretend it never happened. They were only students. Uh, well, students are not. She's a liability. 
Now, we're wasting our time, Fred. What's more to the point, we're wasting our money, and enough's enough. Hmm. You don't mean it. I'm afraid I do. Now then, shall you tell her, or shall I? Fred Elliot over there. Oh. I am not talking to that man. Well, you asked her to be a campaign manager. Well, I've learnt my lesson. I'm not going through with it. What? You mean you're pulling out? Yeah, don't you dare try to change my mind. I won't, no. I think it's the best idea you've had. What do you mean? Well, you make a terrible counsellor, you know it. No, I wouldn't. Why would I? Well, look at you now. I mean, it's the first opposition and you want to pull out. Why don't you leave it to people that know what they're talking about? Oh, so now we know, don't we? I mean, you've never been behind me, have you? Well, I'm not going to stand down now. I've changed my mind, so there. If only to prove you wrong. <sighs> I'm lost. <laughs> Alec. Yeah. Give us a pint, will you? Yes, sir. She's just told me she wants to pull out of the election. Never. Oh, that's terrible. She hasn't. She has. And then when I said I thought it was a good idea, she put back in again, just to spite me. <sighs> I wish I hadn't said out. Yeah. Well, more than I do. It was an accident. Happens all the time in our house. No. I've been dropping things the last few days. Don't worry about it, Rita. What you need, some antibiotics. Shall I ring the doctor? No. Don't do that. Why not? It's Sunday. Well, they've always got somebody on call. Please, Sally. I don't want a doctor. Why? I'm scared. What are? Don't even like to say it. <laughs> this is how Ted was when he had his brain tumor. <laughs> Cheese on toast. Is that all we're having? Don't stop worrying about him. But you know how he likes his Sunday roast with all trimmings? Well, maybe he'll work up to that next week. Anyway, I think he's doing quite well, considering. He gave you your marching orders, didn't he? Oh, I told you, didn't he? Oh, but it's like being on holiday, isn't it? Well, no. I'd rather him let me help. Well, I think it's better that he's coping on his own. Well, yeah, of course it is. Oh, look, look. I mean, we're just throwing good money after bad, Fred. But if we... If we pull out now, we'll get Nout back on our investment. Well, what would we have got back? A couple of invites to Mayor's Ball. I mean, what freebies can she chuck our way? Oh, fast. I can remember an all-expenses-paid trip to France, courtesy of Councillor Roberts. Oh, you mean that black pudding jaunt? And that weren't the only one. I've spent many a week in Charleville, and it's not cost me so much as a son team. I said, not so much as a son team. Wine food, accommodation, all for a fraternal speech to la Fédération de Bouches. I think of all the late licences that could come winning your way. Believe me, I think there's a lot to play for. She doesn't stand a cat in hell's chance of getting elected, Fred. I mean, the way it's looking, she, she and Spider are going to get Labour in through back door. No, I mean, they're cancelling each other out, Fred. I think I've had an idea. Have you got a few bits of paper and some biros? Well, I think I have, yeah. Why? What's your plan? Shh, not a word. Every one of those symptoms could just as easily point to flu. There's all sorts of viruses. I went through it with him. I can't put it out of my mind. What you need is a prescription. Maybe I'll feel better tomorrow. Yeah. Well, if not, will you go to doctors? Promise me. I'll come with you. All right. Yeah. Good. Rita, I think you'd be better off in bed. No. No, I'll stay out, Seti. Are you cold? Yeah. Will you put fire on? Will you pass me my dressing gown, please? Are you sure? Yeah. Look, you get off. Never mind me. You enjoy your birthday. If I feel better later on, I'll come down to Rovers and I'll have a drink with you. Do me some good. All right. Thanks, love. See how you feel. Yeah. Thanks, love. Ooh. 
So you've done everything for yourself since last night? You must be knackered, mate. Oh, catch yourself on, Michael. I can't cope, you know. Sit down. Let's not make you a cup of tea. Yeah, it's all right. I need to take it to extremes. Now, your family and friends are still allowed to help a little bit, aren't they? Aye. And uh, well, it is important to let them know what you're thinking. Liz in particular. Why Liz in particular? Because if I'm not wrong, I'd say you're still in love with her. I'm right, aren't I? Sorry, I'm late. I've got talking to Curly. No, oh, it's all right. It's only beans on toast. Where's the kids? They're round at the plats. Yeah, I've sorted the meal for tonight. We're in the crown for half seven. Can we get a babysitter? <clears throat> well, I was going to ask Rita, but she's not very well. Do you want to curl it off? Oh, I would rather. I'm sorry to muck you about, Kev. Besides, Rita said she might join me for a drink later if she's feeling a bit better. It's up to you. Should we just go for a drink, then? Yeah, may as well go in the Rovers. I'm sorry. It's all right. But what is the point, Michael? Eh? There's no point at all. If it's just... If it's... If it's not in the true sense, you know what I'm saying? If it's just words? I mean, that is all I'm capable of. And I think Elizabeth needs more than that. I mean, a fat lot of good words are to her. And I can't give her any more. Not the state I am now. Well, have you told her how you feel? What? What's the point in that? It's not going to do her any good. I don't want her suffering the same as me. And look, I, all right, I don't want her to know, OK? feeling any better, so I'm just going to take myself off to bed. Can you manage? No. No, I'll be all right. In fact, I think I'll just sleep it off. I feel very tired. No, love, just... just put the alarm on. Lock up. I'll be better in the morning. Yeah. I'll see you tomorrow, love. See you tomorrow. Change. Oh, cheers, Betty. Okay, love. All right. Oh, hiya. Have you been see Jim? Yeah, I've just left him, actually. Uh, orange juice, please. Okay, love. So he let you in? Yeah, grudgingly. How is he? Well, where he is going, he'll be entering the Great North Run. I'm winning it. Yeah. Once he sets his mind to something, nothing gets in his way. Did he tell you that he's made himself off limits to me? Uh, yeah, he did, yeah. You see, the thing is, Liz, I. I don't think he's exactly sure how much help he can accept. Not where I'm concerned. Don't want to know. Don't want me near. Are you sure about that? He made that very clear. Well, what Jim says and what he thinks aren't necessarily the same thing. Why? What's he said? Uh, it's just an impression I'm getting. And if you do speak to him, I didn't even say this much, all right? Right. Oh, well, Sally. Yeah, you're looking for your better half? No, I've, I've just seen Rita. She's not very well. What, still from last week? She insisted on going to work this morning, but I persuaded her to go back to the flat. Maybe I should pop round and see if there's anything I can do. Well, I've just seen Leanne. Apparently she's gone back to bed for the rest of the afternoon. Oh, well, that'll be the best thing. I'll pop round in the morning.
So you had a good time then? Oh, brilliant. Wasn't it? Yeah, it was great. I'll oh. tell you, you can spend days and days in that magic kingdom. Yeah, well, you'll have to bring your photographs then. Yeah, all right. What's wrong? I wish you'd take that hat off. Why? It's a laugh, isn't it? <laughs> well, it was when you bought it a week ago. Oh, all right, I'll take it off then. And don't go on about Florida to everybody. Folk will think we're showing off. All right. Do you want another? No, I'm going to finish this now and get back home and get on with washing. You stop. I expect you'll want to watch football. Oh, you don't mind, then? No, of course I don't. You stop as long as you want. Have you got a minute? Depends. What's it about? Just like to buy you a drink and have a chat about one or two things. To your advantage. Find it out, to You don't know, do you? Not till you hear what we've got to say. Who's we? Me and Alec. He's in back room. You've got two minutes. I've been all round college putting up your posters. Have you? Well, that's really kind of you. If you'd like me to do anything else, campaigning, you know where I am. Yeah, great. Ta. Have a good holiday. Florida, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, brilliant, thanks. Yeah, I've always wondered about Florida. Is it all it's cracked up to be? Oh, sorry, I'm, uh, I'm interrupting something. <sighs> Right, I'm going to get off. If Rita comes in, will you pop down and get me? Yeah, if the game's started, though, I'll use the phone, OK? Uh, pipe, please, Jack. <laughs> on the other hand, maybe I'll stop and just have one more drink, just in case she's on her way. What do you make of that? Bunch of signatures on a piece of paper. It's an opinion, Paul. Oh, whose opinion? Them people, them as have signed to say which way they're voting, A. Smith, J. R. Brown. Joe Public, the electorate. Now, do you know what that means down there at bottom? G. Bannister. Labour. 48%. A. Roberts. Independent Business Alliance. 40%. Oh, G. Nugent. Independent Green. Oh, 15%. But there's still a week to go. The writing's on the wall for them as has eyes to see. Labour's going to pinch it. And for why? Because you're taking votes off Mrs Roberts. She's taking votes off me. And anyway, by your reckoning, these figures add up to 103%. Yes, well, there's obviously going to be a big turnout. <laughs> Precisely. Now, this is all the more reason why we should adopt tactical voting. Now, here's what I propose. No. Young man, I'm on your side. I've thought of a way of you getting your green policies into a council chamber. You're against all my policies. I'm a vegan, remember? Yeah, but the other ones... Wind-powered bicycles and the like. Now, Mrs Roberts will be prepared to incorporate all that into her manifesto as a means of ousting to their candidate. Now, what do you say? What's the catch? No catch. All you have to do is step down in her favour. Oh! What about the girls? Gail's giving them the tea. Oh, so you're stopping? Yeah, why not? I'll get them. You stop there. Right. Hey, ha, 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 look what he did there. That's amazing. Can you give it a rest? His folk won't serve here. <laughs> this night I've been a football with her for the last 40 years, every Saturday. Boots on other foot now. It... Pass! Go on, pass! That's a replay from the semis, you loon. So, I'm catching up on what I've missed. So, how was Disney World? It's great, if you like that sort of thing. Yeah, you're looking really tanned. Are you waiting to be served? It suits you. Kids enjoyed it as well, all three of them. <laughs> well, I hope you know you've been missed at work. Give over, I'm sure Mike Baldwin caught very well without me. Well, he might have done, I don't know, but I didn't. Beg your pardon? I mean it, I missed you. Glad you're back. My husband sat over there. Well, oh, it's more interesting than the football. How do you know? Well, isn't it? He must be mad. Oh, hi, Ken. Um, do you mind if I do you now? Save me coming over later. Do me? Uh, <laughs> how do you mean? Oh, <laughs> well, you know I'm your... Oh. Good evening, Ken. <laughs> you know I'm your local ratepayers candidate, so I was wondering, can I count on your support on polling day? Well, I shall certainly give it my full consideration. Oh, 
right. I was hoping Rita would give me a G and T. I mean, the best I've done all day is a tepid cup of tea from some old age pensioner who went rattling on about his neighbour's fence. I mean, why tell me? <laughs> Uh, she might be in the Rovers. I think I overheard Sally say she was going to call in. Oh, oh dear. I suppose I'll have to buy her a drink then. Oh, no, 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 no. Strictly against the rules. Representation of the People's Act, 1900 and whatever. Uh, that's right. Oh, save me a couple of quid. Thanks, Ken. See you later. All right, bye. For the last time, no! That there's no way I'm going to step down for Audrey Roberts. Well, if you won't listen to reason, Happen you listen to the crackle of this. What is it? Enough to keep you in sandals for the rest of your life. This is bribery. Oh, it's not. It's common sense. Go on, take it, you soft apeth. I won't touch it. And an hundred in bar. Is that what you think my political integrity's worth? A hundred pounds? Oh, as sharp as this one. It's not taken him long to learn the ropes. All right, then. One hundred and fifty, and that's our last offer in tip. Well, I thought hundred were pushing it. I don't want your money. I wouldn't take it if you offered me a thousand. Well, we're not. Let's make that quite plain. <laughs> and I'll tell you something else. If ever I was going to stand down in this election, you two have persuaded me to fight this one to the death. What sort of daft talk's that coming from a pacifist? You might have money and prejudice on your side, but it won't do you any good. Is that so? Well, we shall have to wait and see, won't we? Because I fight with the sword of honour and the shield of truth. She's been sniffing them tea bags again. So is that why you wanted to go out at dinner time? So you could watch the football? Yeah, not that bothered. I believe you. Sorry, what? Nothing. Happy birthday, Sally. Hey, Sally, it's your birthday, isn't it? Here, have that on me. Oh. Only don't let on to our Jack. Oh, thanks very much, Vera. That's very nice of you. Well, you kept that one quiet. Any happy returns? So, let me guess, 20... <laughs> yeah, I wish. <laughs> Come off it. You can't be more than, what, 26? <laughs> you don't look it. Hiya. You in company? Ah, uh, no. Come and join us. What can I get you? White wine? Um, I'll have a spritzer, please. In fact, grab those chairs. I'll bring the drinks over. OK. Sorry about this. I didn't know she was coming in. Another time, eh? Yeah. No, I mean that. Madhouse. Oh, free food, cheap beer and football. What do you expect? Can't see Rita. Perhaps she's round at Sally's. No, no, no. Sally's at the bar. You know, I used to be like you. Really? How's that? I used to be a bin man. Charming. No, what I meant was I didn't realise the value of education until I left school. So I went back, had another crack at the nut, you know. I'm doing very nicely now, thank you. Well, there's hope for us all. I've got a few books, you know, if you want to borrow them. You are doing business studies, I take it. Sorry. You don't think I'm too pushy, do you? Of course I don't. You know, saying I love you. I know that puts some guys off. You worry too much. Oh, yeah, I know I do. I just worry you might not like me anymore. I worry I might like you too much. <laughs> Jim? Jim, it's me. Are you OK? Yes, I'm fine. Right, well, can I come in? Elizabeth, I'm trying to have an early night. You're not watching the match? What do you want? Nothing. Just a chat. I won't stop long. Look, maybe tomorrow, all right? Jim, will you please let me in just for five minutes? Come in. I, uh, I hear you've been to see Rita today. Yeah, if she's not better in the morning, I'm going to doctors with her. Well, as long as someone's keeping an eye on her. Trouble is, she's afraid it might be something else. Well, like what? What Ted had. You mean, 
Oh, no, surely not. I'm sure it's not, but... All the same, maybe I'll pop round and try and cheer her up, eh? Well, I've done all I can, but if you think that's a good idea... Yeah. Tell her I'll pop round in the morning. Yeah, yeah. Right, thanks, thanks, Sam. Yeah, so she's rolled okay, over here, Betty, love. Right. There you are, There you are, lad. There you are. Oh, nice one. Well done, Billy. Here, Alec, pass these round. I'm just popping out for half an hour, Vera. You are not. Look, it's all hands to the pumps. Here, grab hold. I just caught Alec trying to skive off. Keep your eye on him with short staff as it is. I said you should have been Natalie for tonight weeks ago, didn't I? Well, I went to know. What I? Well, you know everything about football. You should have known we'd be busy. And so should you. But don't you blame me. It wasn't my idea to get a wide screen in. He's brought down. Give over. He dived. That was never a dive. <laughs> well, how come he didn't give a penalty then? I don't know. He would have gone a golden goal, wouldn't Not it? Not Van der Sar won the same day. <laughs> Brazil don't miss penalties. <laughs> <laughs> I know you. I know you too well. This isn't about just coping for yourself, is it? Why are you shutting me out? Because you want to do everything, Elizabeth. Every damn thing. No. No, it isn't just that. Is it because you can't face up to what's going on between us? Look, Elizabeth, that is wishful thinking. We can't bring things back the way they were, OK? But it's happening now. For me, it is. And I think it is for you as well. Why can't you just admit it? No, you're wrong, all right? Besides, it can't be the same ever, can it? Oh, it can. It can if you let it. Everything that was good for us, it's there waiting for us again. No, it's not. Elizabeth, I am not the same man that married you. Do you understand me? Yes, you are. Of course you are. Inside you are. Look, all I'm asking is that you don't close your eyes to what's happening between us. Nothing is happening. Nothing is happening. It's in your imagination. Look, I don't want to hear this anymore. Don't mention it again. Don't bring it up, OK? Rita? Rita? That's the goal from the turn one. <laughs> oh, yeah, keep that oh up, what a that. goal. So, eh? Superb. Oh, oh, Sally, have you got a spare key for Rita's? I've been knocking, but I can't get a reply. Are you sure she's in the flat? Well, yeah, cos she said if she felt any better, she'd be in here, she promised me. She must be in the flat. Well, I keep on. Still only 21, but he earns a million pound a year on doors before he even kicks a ball. Excuse me, excuse me. Hey, I could teach him a thing or two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like what? Hey, never you mind. 21. Oh, well, 20 years too late, me. Yeah. Hey, who's that? Uh, Rivaldo. <laughs> Reminds me of Gary Wilmore. <laughs> <laughs> will you get round here and do some flaming work? Just jealous. Don't like me looking at men in shorts, you know. I am not jealous, Vera. I'm just fed up by running this damn place on my own. Alec! Yes, five minutes, Jack. I've just got to pop out. Oh, flaming Nora. I'll come with you. Kevin? What's the matter? Are you all right? What are you doing? Uh, I'll be back in a minute. Watch my pint. Alec, are you sure it's a good idea to disturb her? Look, I'm not taking that risk. Shall I fetch somebody from the pub? No, I'll have another go. What's the problem? It's Rita. She's in there, but we can't get any reply. Look, could you have a go? Are you sure about this? Yes, yes. Stand back, then. Rita? 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 Oh, my God, Rita. Oh, look, feel the pulse. Boiling up. Phone an ambulance. Now! Phone an ambulance. Can you feel a pulse? Yeah, yeah. Come just on. very slow. 
Come on, Vera. Wait a minute. Hang on, I'm saving. Where's that flaming Alec Kilroy? How the should I know? Who's next? Yeah. Lorraine, 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 one, three, five, three, five, five, five. you're home when you're ready. I've only got one pair of hands. Just wait till that Alec Kilroy gets back. Yeah, well, he's going to miss the first goal at this rate. They kick off in a bit. Dare go to the side of that bar. I'll tell you what, we'll toss for which I have to watch. Go on, then. Uh, I'll have heads. Yeah, it is. I, I watch the second half. Oh, come on, Vera. I want to watch the end of the match. It's well, so well, 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 Who's left to tip that on? Hey, your house is on fire. <laughs> yeah. That sounded like an ambulance. Hey, I'll tell you what. He's going to win this 3 2. No, no, 2 1 extra time. What do you think, mate? No, no, no. France 2 0. I'm down. Yeah. yeah. Hey, hey, there's only one team on every game. Yeah, yeah hello, hello, it's it's all. <laughs> I'll, I'll go in the ambulance. I'll give you a lift if you like. I only would have the doctor. I might have been in time. Come on, let's get in the car. Oh, it's Rita. Do you know I knew somewhat was up? Yeah, I think you're right. What's happened? We don't know. They look so worried, don't they? They look good to me. <laughs> until she's stabilised. Oh, Greg. Try not to worry. Is there any news? Yes, it's carbon monoxide. She's been poisoned by carbon monoxide gas. What? How could she be? I don't know. They, they, they put her in something called a hyperbaric chamber. They're trying to contact the consultant. Can't the doctor see a deal with it? Apparently not. This Dr. Bird specialises in lung disorders. Have you seen her? They wouldn't let me. Oh, I think is she going to die? No. Have they said she's out of danger? Well, no, but if she was worse, they'd tell you. They'd take you to a bedside straight away. Oh, I wish they would. I just want to be with her. You and me both. Greg did not kick that door down. I'll never cease to be grateful for that. Anyone would have done it. Look, it's... Uh... Turn midnight and you're still here. It's no problem. Well, there is. I mean, you've been marvellous, but you should be at home, you know, getting a good night's sleep. I don't mind being here. Oh, Greg, you should go. Well, as long as you're sure. Oh, no one could have done more. Thank you. Thank you very much. Are you going to be all right? Yeah, I'll be fine. All right, then. See you later. Are you going to work or what? Uh, yeah, in a minute. I was just going to ask Curly about Rita. Curly, any news of Rita? Well, I haven't heard anything. I was just about to ask you. What, what's wrong with her? She was rushed into hospital, found unconscious, according to Deirdre. They had to break in, apparently. Uh, when was this? Uh, about 8 o'clock during the football. Well, what's the matter with her? Well, that's just it. Nobody knows. Well, Sally might. She should be in the factory by now. Yeah, I'll have a quick word with her. Oi, oi. Doesn't look much like a fixer, does he? Just the man I wanted to see. Come to uh, up your offer, then, have you? What are you going to throw in? A leg of lamb? A few pies, perhaps? I knew you got all the wrong end at stick. Oh, yeah? Alex suggested we played a little joke on him. You know how he is. Yeah, a laugh a minute. Yeah, the trouble is he doesn't know when to stop. I had a feeling bit water you were taking it seriously. Yeah, I did. You need a sense of humour in this business. I say you need a sense of humour. <laughs> you have two of your candidate. 
Well, as long as no harm's been done. No, it'll give the enfranchised classes something to chew over. The enfranchised classes? The voters. I know who the enfranchised classes are, thank you very much. You're not proposing to tell them that... That you offered to bribe me to pull out of the election? It were a joke. It won't be when I let the rest of Weatherfield know. You can't tell anybody. Yes, he can. And not only that, it's his duty. Yeah, hey, I don't know whether to spread the news door to door or uh, sell the story to the Gazette. Yeah, come in, she's not back yet. She phoned up, said she was staying the night. Oh, I hope she'll be back by now. Uh, oh, hello, girls. Hello, hello. Yes, hello. Right, you two girls go and get your school things ready. Go on. So what time did you leave? Oh, I didn't stay long. I, I didn't want to get in the way, you know. Um, so tell Sally not to bother with work today. I'll square it with Mike. Well, all right, I'll tell her. She'll be phoning soon. Yeah, she must be exhausted. She should take tomorrow off as well. Oh, yeah. Well, the boss, like Baldwin. Yeah, but she was really upset. Oh, well, she's bound to be. She's close to Rita. It's not that long since her mum died. Yeah, not the best end to your holiday. No. Still, we've got a lot to look back on. Oh, you had a good time, then? Oh, fantastic. Girls can't wait to get back to school, tell all the mates about it. Yeah, I can imagine. Yeah, Rosie liked the beach, Sophie liked all the cartoon characters. Oh, she thinks they're real now, does she? <laughs> she even brought a little Dumbo on with her. <laughs> Dumbo. Uh, yeah, he's great, isn't he? <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I'll, uh, I'll be seeing you. Yeah, all right, ta-da. And, uh, thanks. Thanks, I'll see you next week. See you later. Bye-bye. Right. Bye. right, that's me finished, I'm off. See you in about an hour. All right, going to throw us? Uh, no, I'm nipping home. I'm calming Alfie down. Why? Well, he's tearing his hair out over Rita. He's always had a soft spot for her. Hmm, aren't you jealous? <laughs> no, it's platonic. Are you sure? Listen, if anybody's got designs on Rita, her body and her bank account, it's Alec Gilroy. And not necessarily in that altar. <laughs> Ta-da, <laughs> see you later. See you later. See, you. see, that's how you should be. You should just take your man as he comes. What, do you think I'm trying too hard? No, I, I didn't, didn't say that, actually. Well, I went too far, didn't I? Well, well, how should I know? No, I think I'm trying to corner him. Well, then Max, take the hint. What, so I've gone too far? I don't know. Look, you've got to make up your own mind about it, OK? What would you do if you were me? Any news? Um, no, nothing yet. Oh, Greg. Good of you to come back. Oh, I was practically passing the door. Uh, are you on your way somewhere? Just a couple of firms that we deal with, but they can wait. It was very good of you to, to give Sally the day off. Oh, uh, Mike did that. Very, very kind. He's out of it. He's scared stiff. There should be some news by now. They said they'll know more when the specialist gets here. Any idea about where the um, carbon monoxide came from? Well, Alex says it's given off by faulty water heaters. It happens ab abroad. Cheap accommodation, self-catering, usually. We were notified about it at Sunliners. Even put a warning in the brochures. You see, you're coming from the beach, you take a long soak, you start to relax, feel drowsy, and then suddenly the fumes from the water heater... Her blood's full of it. There's got to be some explanation. All that time she was ill and I was away. That was a virus. Do you think if I'd known about carbon monoxide, I'd have left her there? No, of course you wouldn't, Alec. I don't know what to do. They keep asking me about a next of kin. There isn't anyone, only us. Well, she's got a foster daughter. Well, she hasn't seen her in years. I don't know where she is anyway. I'm going to talk to him again. I'm going to have to tell me something. I'll be with you in a minute. Thanks for coming. Do you want me to go? No. Then I'll stay. I've been ringing all morning, as well as can be expected. Did, <laughs> did they put you through to intensive care? Well, no, I didn't ask. Oh, I did. They were tightly up there as well. You can't expect them to give confidential information to all and sundry. I'm not all and sundry, Betty, neither are you. Well, we are to them. We're bound to hear something soon, love. I'm not waiting for that. She's very special. Oh. Ah, is this Rita we're talking about? Yes, love, there's still no news. Who's the hot pot for? 
There's a bloke coat in the corner, but he's gone home. Uh, I'll take that and a pint, and if you offer to pay for it, I'll expose you. Pardon? To the press. <laughs> Ignore him. He's labouring under a welter of misapprehensions. I am not labouring under anything, as far as you're concerned. What's he done now? I've done out. Rubbish! What's your next move, then? Standing outside the polling station, waving fivers around? You what? You'd do anything to get Audrey elected. Talk about votes for women. I did not offer Geoffrey Nugent money to stand down. Oh, yes, you did. That's bribery. That's corruption. Uh, corruption par for the course with Alec, but... Oh, I'm surprised at you, Fred. It's a pack of lies, Betty. Yeah, and that's another lie. I think I'll have my dinner elsewhere. Good afternoon. Yeah, bye. Fancy Spider being the focus of political intrigue. Tell me more. I'll have to go soon. Thanks for staying so long. Yeah, if I don't make these suppliers, then Mike will be on my back. Yes, you, you better get on with your business, hadn't you? You could have come to Dunmore, and it's appreciated, isn't it, Sal? Yeah. I'd stay if I could. It's not as if you really know her that well. She looked so helpless when we found her. It's not easy to get out of your mind. No. No, it's not. I could just cry. Sally, I'll, I'll call Mike. No, don't. You can't stay. I don't want to leave you. I'm all right. Are you sure? I wouldn't have got through last night without you. Call me any time. If you want me to come back, I will. I can sink my teeth in them things. Oh. I live in fear of finding Fred Elliott's toenail clippings in one of them. Oh, no, he's very hygienic, he's Fred. He'd pass anything off as prime beef, given the chance. Have you been talking to Curly Watt? No. Why? Oh, nothing. No, you'll know sooner or later. <laughs> Any more word on Rita Sullivan? Well, no, she's still in intensive care. That's an experience she could do without at her age. Look, Rita's younger than you or me. She'll get through it. I dare say. But will she ever be the same again? Of course she will. Well, I wouldn't want a lot of tubes up and down me innards. Well, it would have saved your life. It's an assault on the body. Only the young can withstand that kind of thing. So what do you want the doctors to do with you? Switch you off at the mains? I don't know what I want, but I know what I'll get. What? A get-well card from the warden of Mayfield Court. And no visitors. Hey, you have years ahead of you yet. What a fool. Absolutely... You'd never think Maud would feel so sorry for herself, would you? <laughs> what? So what else is happening? Ah, well, basically, you see, we'll be stuffing leaflets into uh, envelopes. <laughs> and that's supposed to take Audrey Roberts out of the race? Well, I've got loads more planned than that. Really? What? Well, I'd have to discuss that with Spider first, you see. I'm just a campaign manager. I can't do anything without his permission. Will he be stuffing envelopes? He certainly will. You haven't got a press conference lined up for him? Uh, no. Uh, but, but if we did, I'd have to be there. Why? To fend off awkward questions. Uh, anyway, do, do you fancy it? I can get a few tins of beer in order a few pizzas. Sounds OK. Oh, uh, great. I said what I had to say yesterday. Yeah. You don't want me anymore. You've had enough for me. Yes. I got you through the bad patch, but now you can carry on yes, by yourself. Yes, yes, yes. That's how you feel? Yes! All right. Well, I won't come back again. Fine. You won't humiliate me anymore. <sighs> Liz, Liz! Look, I didn't say what I said to humiliate you, honest to God, I didn't. Well, why else? Oh, you know the way I am. Yeah, you're angry. But, Jim, what can I do about that? All right, all right, I'll tell you. Just please don't go, OK? Don't go. You've just told me to go. No, I didn't. That's not what I meant at all, all right? I didn't mean it. What? 
Well, now I really can't understand you. It doesn't matter what I said, okay? Just forget it. Look, I, I can't do anything without you, all right? I want you. I want you. You said... No, it doesn't matter what I said. Please. Mr. Gilroy, oh. Gareth Bird. I'm the consultant for Mrs. Sullivan. Oh, yes. Uh, have you examined her? Yes, I have. Has her condition improved? Well, I'm glad to say she's out of danger. Oh. oh, good news at last. She certainly had a very narrow escape. Another five minutes, she'd have been dead. And I should warn you that uh, when she does come round, she may be ill for some time. What was it, the water heater? Well, the usual cause is a faulty domestic appliance of some sort. It's just so sensible. If something wasn't working, she would have had it fixed. Oh, well, if she was aware of it. You see, the problem with carbon monoxide is it, it doesn't smell and it has no taste. I mean, even at low levels, it can be fatal. Well, she has been ill for a few weeks, uh, but she's had flu. Oh, well, the symptoms are flu-like. That's why it's very often misdiagnosed. She's so careful. I can't believe her flat wasn't safe. Could the, could the fumes have come from somewhere else? I mean, there is a factory nearby. Well, it's a possibility, but as I said, more often than not, it's a domestic problem. I mean, the cause will have to be investigated, of course, but uh, right now, she is our priority. C can we see her? Well, I don't see why not in a few minutes. Uh, the nurses will let us know when, when they're ready. Oh, thank you. Could you hurry up more, do you think, please? I'm working as fast as I can. Do you know if Fred are to get someone younger to work in this shop, I'll have a word to him. Well, he could employ you. On your election posters, you only look about 12. They're perfectly good photographs. Well, how come they're in black and white? I thought they only had sepia in them days. Oh, very funny. <laughs> Enter your rival. You couldn't have used photographs that old. It'd have been nothing but a look of anticipation on your father's face. Uh, just get on with it, Maud, would you please? Oh, I'd have thought you'd have been buying recycled. Oh, no, I don't use that dirty looking mug. Well, you've got to, you've gone green. Oh, I haven't. Uh, Alex says you have, and Fred. That's why they're trying to merge our two parties. Merge? Oh, yeah, yeah, we're on the same side now. Hey, it's good of you two off to step down. Step down, me? Well, one of us, I don't suppose it matters which. Though, of course, a hundred and fifty quid sweetener might not be enough for you. Sweetener? What are you talking about? Mm. Ask your spin doctors. They've got all the answers. I will. You can shove all that back on the shelves and all. What, they still don't know what caused it? Well, it's fumes. That's all I know. I mean, Alec, oh, was that upset. He was barely making sense. Where would fumes come from round here? Industry. We're not green belt, more's the pity. It's not going to be fumes, is it? Otherwise, we'd all be ill. What about Underworld? Well, the same as. We'd all be exposed, just like Rita was. No, we wouldn't. She's in that shop all day, right next door. What happens if they've got a leaky boiler? Listen, if Mike Baldwin's knickers gave off fumes, we'd all know about it. Off the street work over there. Well, something caused it. Are you worried, love, that you might be in danger? No chance. I work out. My body can take anything that's thrown at it. <laughs> <laughs> Fred Elliot! You offered money to that walking scarecrow! I didn't. Oh, yes, you did. You wanted him to stand down so she could win. He made that story up. He wants out. You've got him on the ropes. He can't face the prospect of not having any votes on day. Well, I don't believe you. Good, because it's not true. Mind your necking. I say, mind your own business. It is my business. I'm the campaign manager. A G&T for the most attractive and charming independent candidate in Weatherfield, oh, Betty, please. That, love. Oh, good tactics, that is, eh? Get her drunk and then bury her with compliments. You can forget the compliments, Fred, because you're going to need more than the G&T to talk yourself out of this one. Claudre! No! There she is. Don't be put off by the equipment. It's helping. Right, I'll be off now. Yeah, thanks. Oh, Alec. I didn't think it was going to be like this. You... you go home, Sally. I 
I'm not leaving her. I'm stopping here. <sighs> you see, I can't even bear for you to touch me now. All those times when you washed me and you dried me and you dressed me, I couldn't bear you to touch me. I just wanted you. Oh, it just kept me thinking about the way we were when we were young. The way, the way I was when I was young and fit and strong. But I'm not young like that anymore either. We were kids. No. We were lovers. That's what we were. And now, now it's just all words. It's just words and that's all I've got. But it's enough. No, it's not enough. It's not enough. I'm, I'm not a man anymore, Liz. I'm like some wee lad. I've got all this rubbish going on in my head. Things I want to do, things I want to say. Say it. No. Please. You don't want to hear it. Oh, I do. No, you laugh. I love you, Elizabeth. I love you. Rosie, Sophie, I, uh, oh, I have missed you too. Where have you been? I've been to see Auntie Rita in hospital. Is she better? She's a bit better. Hi, right, girls. Clearing the toys. Go and wash your hands. We're going to have our tea in a bit. Go on. Go and do as your dad says. Be quick. So why didn't you phone me? Didn't get a chance. Why? What have you been doing all day? There was no news. I had nothing to say. I thought you would have phoned the garage, even if you didn't phone here. Well, you could have phoned the hospital. I did. You put me through to patient inquiries. I couldn't ask them to start looking for you, could I? I was asleep half the time anyway. I'm worn out. How's she doing? How do you think she's doing? I don't know. Because patient inquiries wouldn't tell me. You've told me nothing. She's out of danger, but... She's still unconscious. Alex stayed with her. I got the bus home. You should have phoned me. I would have picked you up. What do you want me to do, Kevin? Phone you every five minutes? I just want you to... To what? Just to take a bit more notice. I'm sorry. I'm tired. I'm... I'm not thinking straight. She's going to recover, but... They don't know what the long-term effects are going to be. I was just worried. Alec wanted me to stay. I would have anyway. Yeah, no. It's all right, it's just... I'm sorry. <sighs> Made us some tea. Thanks. We was watching the football. It was all going on outside. We didn't know anything about it. According to all them in the Rovers, Greg Kelly's a hero. Well, it was lucky he was passing. Could have been to take you to the hospital in his car. Yeah. Better go and have a wash. I must look awful. How long till the meal, then? A couple of minutes. Right, OK. We'll face things together. I'll only make you unhappy, Elizabeth. You won't? Not this time. It's still the same me, you know. I'm still the shouting and fighting <sighs> and roaring. I haven't changed. It's all here, you know. I don't care. You should go away from me. No. I've nothing to offer you, Liz. You're all I want. What if... What if I stay like this for the rest of my life? Can't you hear me? It doesn't matter. But it does matter. You are all I want. But you... You can't love me, Elizabeth. Oh, I can. Right, we're all set for school then. I'll take them if you want. No problem. I'm glad of the fresh air before a day in the factory. Well, now that's the sale of your mum's house completed, what do you reckon? About what? The money. 
Do you want to put it in a savings account or something? I thought we'd agreed. You were going to buy Natalie's share of the garage. That's what you wanted, isn't it? Yeah, well, I've not been sure it's what you wanted. I said, Kevin, before we went away. Yes, well, you've not been known to change your mind, Sal. Well, get it done, then, before I change it again. Come on, girls, we're going to be late. Oh, you're up. No, it's one surprise after another these days, so it is. I was just about to make a cup of tea. Oh, well, uh, I'll get it for you. Right. I've just been practising with this here board. It's, uh, it's, it's a bit tricky to start with, so but if you well. keep up... You were saying? Nothing. Tell you the truth, Elizabeth, I've been up since half past six thinking about what I need to say to you. And? Well, I'm none the wiser, so I'm not. But I do think we need to talk. I think we do, yeah. Right. But not now. Because if we do, I won't get to work till dinner. Hey, uh, what's she looking for? Oh, Greg moved into his flat last night, didn't he? Oh. You don't think he's gone to the factory without me seeing him, do you? Mm -hmm, yeah, like when? Well, when I was working. <laughs> It'd have to have been very quick, then. Hey, here you go, Maxine. A quick wash and cut should take you away from the window for longer than one minute. <sighs> I'm just here for a word with Mrs. Roberts, if I may. I thought you did all your talking behind closed doors with Spider Nugent. That's precisely why I'm here. To ensure that the people of Weatherfield are not exposed to the sort of jiggery-pokery that gives Jerry Mandarin a bad name. Was that actually English? I thought we might go to Paris this evening. Mmm, that's that posh restaurant on Keys. It's dead expensive. I sampled their luncheon yesterday, just after I'd been to the Thabatoire. Cracking menu. Well, I suppose we ought to get all this sorted out. Splendid. Shall we say seven? Councillor? Oh. That sounds wonderful, actually, doesn't it? <laughs> Councillor. Here we go. Do you know, if you ask me, this magazine ought to be called Sad. It's for women who don't have a life. I mean, look at that. Collecting yeah, this... teaspoons for fun. Oh, look, there's a voucher for a jigsaw puzzle. 10,000 pieces of baked beans, and it's gone up, you know. £2.50. What a waste of money. Oh, morning, Alec. What can I get you? What do you think you're doing? Me? I'm helping out. Helping out? Helping out? You've no authority. Where's Leanne? What's it got to do with you? Everything. I happen to be looking after Rita's interests. Yeah, and I'm looking after Leanne's, and she's in charge. In charge? She's not even in the flaming shop. She's gone to the wholesalers. That's why I'm standing here. And she better be back quick and all. Baldwin will skin me. But you know nothing about shopkeeping. You drove that woman away. I gave her good advice. What's wrong with that? She didn't spend a penny. That's no to do with you. Now, do you want serving? I want to check that till for a start. Hey, if you are calling me a thief after I've been stood in here helping out, I'll tell you... Uh, uh, all right, all right. Now, uh, just tell me, when will Leanne be back? When the taxi brings her. The taxi? We don't expect her to bring ten cartons of fags back on bust here. Should be... Just wait till I see her. I'll give her a piece of my mind. Oh, well, if that's how you feel, I'll be off and all. I've got my own job to do. Look, we can't leave this shop unattended. Well, you wanted to be in charge. It's all yours. I have a pub to open. Good. You can buy me a drink at dinner time. A sort of thank you for helping out. But... Hiya. Sandwich. Got me one as well. I thought I'd join you. Put them down for a wee minute. Look, uh, about last night, what exactly was going on? Well, I know it's been a long time, but... I thought you'd have remembered what a kiss was. No, I'm being serious. Look, uh, I know this here's a strange time, you know what I mean? For the pair of us. And I know full well you're trying to make me feel better. But I don't want you sitting there feeling you've made a big mistake. I mean, let's face it, you and I are used to making big mistakes. So I suppose what I'm trying to say is, uh, well, I don't feel you have to let me down gently, you know? I kissed you because I wanted to. 
I knew exactly what I were doing. And I've no intention of letting you down, gently or otherwise. Okay? Mm. Fiona! Oops, sorry. You won't mind if I lay it back? Won't I? Why? Well, if Fred's taking me somewhere posh, I'm going to need somewhat suitable. I thought your wardrobe was full of something suitable. Maxine! Have you ever thought that it might be a certain lack of, shall we say, style that's putting lover boy off? Actually, Greg says I'm the most stylish woman on the street. Oh. <laughs> and that's what attracted him to me. Ah. Hello. Hi. Sorry I haven't been in touch. I've just been too busy moving into the flat. Oh, moved in already? Yeah. I was just wondering if you'd feed for lunch. Oh, yeah, great. Here you go. See ya. Max! What you've got for us, haven't you? Yes, thank you very much. You're working through, remember? Well, it's no problem. We can do it tomorrow. V? Max, I've got a dentist appointment. Come on. Oh, go on. I'll stop. If I'd only think I'm being extravagant if I turn up in somewhat new. Yeah, like you'd notice. Oh. Thanks, Audrey. Oh. You've just got me vote. <laughs> well, thank you. Oh, um, I've left my wallet in the office. You go ahead and get drinks in. All right. <laughs> oh, Michael, just the man I wanted to see. Now, why does that make me think you want something? It's not for me, it's for the people of Weatherfield. I employ half of them. Isn't that good enough? They want something new, something honest, new representation, and I've got a guy just to do that job. Oh, yeah, you want me to vote for that new wave pot-smoking vegetarian eco-warrior? Oh, this doesn't sound too good. I'm everything he despises. I'm an entrepreneur, drive a big car, make lots of money. Don't tell me you're going to vote for Audrey. Well, if there was a poll for Gossip of the Year award, I might, but uh, anything else, oh, forget it. I'll put you down as a don't know then, shall I? No, I was just wondering how Rita was. As well as to be expected, that's all the hospital would say. Good, good. Are you going for a drink? Uh, yeah. Yeah, so am I. You're not going to see Rita, otherwise I'd, I'd give you a lift. Thanks, Greg, but you've done enough. You know, this might sound a bit weird, but when I was at the hospital, I almost enjoyed it, being there with you. Well, it was a strange situation. And then I woke up in the night, worrying what you must have thought about me, babbling on about all sorts of rubbish while Rita was at death's door. I better go. Kevin's waiting for me. Well, I still don't think you've thought it through properly, so I don't. You're not the only one with time to think, you know. So in knickers does leave a little bit of time for the brain, even for me. Uh, you know, I could really do with a hard starter, Elizabeth. Honest to God, I could. Oh, no. Every time you have to face up to something, you have a drink. Well, that's one thing that is going to change. Well, I do have quite a lot to face up to, wouldn't you think? Yeah, and you're going to do it without a drink if we have to have any kind of future at all. And what kind of future can I offer you? You know, I'm not some starry-eyed kid. No, no, you're not. You're a very attractive woman, so you are. Mm. Is that a problem? Oh, well, yes, it is a bit of a problem, you know what I mean? I mean, let's face it, my greatest achievement over the last fortnight has been getting out of bed and getting myself dressed. <laughs> Believe you me, you need more than that, Elizabeth. No, that's where you're wrong. I'm really proud of you for doing that. It's progress. You couldn't have done that a fortnight ago. Oh, well, whoop de do, eh? Who knows, in a week's time I might be able to get to the potty on my own. <laughs> Great. Jim, what do you think this is all about? Tell you the God's honest truth, I haven't a clue. All right. Yeah, there have been times when I hated you. But see now you've come to terms with all this. It's not pity. I'm proud of you. And I love you. <laughs> Hi. Yeah, yeah. Hey, you remembered what I drink. It wasn't exactly difficult. Well, next time I'll try and order something a bit more uh, exotic, maybe a, a gin sling. You can ask for one, you still get a pint. Mm. I haven't a clue what a gin sling is. Well, to tell you the truth, neither do I. That it? Yeah, 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 that's OK. Uh, are you still up for a bit of uh, envelope stuffing tonight? With you and Spider? Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, he's got to be there. I mean, he's the candidate. 
I could send him out, though, to do a bit of canvassing. So we're left with a pile of envelopes to stuff on our own. I can think of better ways to spend an evening. Yeah. Uh, spoke to the solicitor. He reckons it could go through quite quick. Oh? I mean, that's providing Natalie don't start playing silly beggars. You don't think she will, do you? So? I'm sorry, what? You seem miles away, then. Right. Can't be easy, can it? Me talking about business when it's your mum's inheritance and that. Mm. Chris Collins sounds like a bit of a lad. Oh, a bit. He had an affair with Samantha. Oh, the barmaid. Pretty girl. Can't blame him for that. Mm. While she was living with Des Barnes. Ah, oh, talk about doing it on your own doorstep. And while he was working for Kevin, he was knocking up Sally. She had an affair. I know. You'd think Paul wouldn't well in her mouth. See ya. Yeah. I'd better get back to work. You okay? Yeah, I'm fine. I must be jet lag or something. Well, take it easy, all right? You know I love you, don't you? Maxine? Oh, hi. I've just wondered, are you busy in the salon at the moment? So, so, why do you need an appointment? Oh, it just needs tidying up a bit. I thought I might pop in when I get five minutes. Well, I can make an appointment for you. Oh, no, it's not a problem. I suppose you'll be taking time off to help Greg move into your flat. No, he's done it all himself. I was telling him about the last tenant who lived there. What about him? I was just saying that Chris worked for Kevin. I do hope you weren't telling Greg things that aren't his business. I do have to work with him, you know. What? Oh, you mean you and Chris? No, I mean, that's Asian history, isn't it? <laughs> exactly. Be nice for you having Greg so close. You'd be able to see a lot more of him. Hmm, I hope so. You know, compared to all the blokes I've been out with, there's just no comparison. Anyway, see ya. Well, I nipped in to see you this morning. The seat me reckon she'll be OK, so good. That which is here at all is a bit of luck. Mm. Ah, Jim. How you doing? You visit him, Rita. <laughs> yeah, seen enough of that place to last me a lifetime. No, these are uh, these are for a lady friend, so they are. Have they allowed to ask who that might be? Yes, girl named Elizabeth. Oh, and there's us thinking you were turning into an old romantic. That's huh? exactly what I'm doing. Hmm? Uh, well, Elizabeth and I, we uh, we might be getting back together again. Oh, very good. I couldn't be more pleased for you. Is it, uh... Common knowledge. But it will be now, Maud knows. A cheek? <laughs> no, I'm not counting me chickens. I mean, after all, I'm hardly the catch of the day, am I? <laughs> well, if Liz thinks so, that's all that matters. Listen, I'm off. Good on you. Aye, cheerio, See mate. You I bet you're glad you didn't do anything stupid now, aren't you? Hey, come here. I'll tell you what, Maud. I never thought I could feel this way again. You know, is it funny? I mean, if this contraption's got me and Elizabeth back together again, Maybe it wasn't such a bad thing falling off that building, eh? What's Maxine saying about me and Kevin this dinner time? What about you two? I can't remember, like what? I don't like being gossiped about. Oh, I'm sorry. I'd, I just like to know about people. You know, so I don't put my foot in it. Look, I know you two have had problems, but it's none of my business. Exactly. And as Maxine says, it is ancient history. I wouldn't be putting thousands of pounds of my mum's inheritance into the business if I thought we had problems, would I? You really don't have to explain anything to me. I just wanted to make it clear to you. I take it you and Maxine are getting serious. And what makes you say that? Well, now you've moved into a flat, that's very handy for her. Moving has nothing to do with Maxine. No? No, I... I wanted somewhere close to work. And, well, the neighbours are nice. The lovely family next door. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha. <laughs> now, Maxine's fun, but it's nothing serious. I guess I just haven't found Miss Wright yet, as my mum would say. I better go. Yeah, Kevin will be waiting. This isn't what I imagined Spider's place would be like. Well, that's because it's not his place. He lives with his auntie, doesn't he? Oi! Well, oh, that EM's well cool. Oh, this is where the fields aren't so Mrs. Merton. 
She looks like a little old lady, but you cross her at your peril. <laughs> yeah, well, the little old lady we should be uh, concentrating on is Audrey Roberts. We've got to win this campaign, so, people, let's get stuffing. Yes, boss. <laughs> You've got gifts, Audrey, given to very few leaders. Glamour, charisma, our very own Evita Perron. Oh. Come on, Fred, you've said that before. Haven't I did. <laughs> Mind you, with your sylph-like figure, it'd be more like Rivita Perron. <laughs> now stop it. All this talk can turn a girl's head, you know. Oh. Girl, listen to me. <laughs> Listening to you, Audrey, gives me no problem whatsoever. Fred, um, you know, Alpha. Shh. Do we have to talk about him? Well, he is my husband. And, you know, usually he gets very jealous if I so much as look at another man. But with you, he doesn't seem to have a problem. Why not? Am I not a man? If you prick me, do I not bleed? Because he knows that you're just my campaign manager. And I know that all this flattery is just to make me feel good and go out there and sock it to him, eh? Rita. Rita, love. I've brought Betty to see you. Oh, Rita, you gave us an awful shock, love. Sorry. Who'd have pictured Alec, eh, as a hero? I've never seen him as an arrow flint type myself. It's, it's not that any any of us wouldn't have done. Besides, if I'd let old happen to you, I, I don't think I don't think life would have been worth living. Hey, cut yourself on. What are you doing? Them floors are for you, not for me. Well, I'll see more of them here than I would if they were at the flat. I see. Is this your way of trying to tell me you're looking after me too much? Uh, don't start that again. Hey, it's a long time since anybody bought me flowers. Well, well, don't worry. They're just from the corner shop, you know. Don't spoil it. Sorry. Well, you know me, I've never been any good at saying things like that, you know. Well, well, things like thank you. Yeah, well, at least we know each other well enough not to make a big deal out of it. We also know that we made an awful lot of mistakes the last time around. And this time, you know, there's three of us. <laughs> Not just you and me. There's you, me and the Ferrari here. Yeah, well, I've always fancied men in sports cars. We have to take it one day at a time. And if it's not working, we only have to go back a day. The secret is not to try too hard. And then, uh, well... Maybe one day we'll realise that we've grown old together. That's the nicest thing you've said to me in 25 years. Mm. If I didn't know you better, I'd think you were trying to get me tiddler. I'm just trying to get you to relax. An election campaign's like running a marathon. You need to pace yourself. You mustn't peak too early. Oh, sometimes I think I've never peaked at all. But now's your chance. You're mature, confident, beautiful. There's nought to stand between you and your destiny. Well, when I dreamed of my destiny, I didn't think of weather for your council. Do you really think I'm beautiful? How could I not? I've watched you blossom as this campaign progressed. Can I say something to you, Fred? Something that I wouldn't say to anybody else? Of course you can, my dear. Well... I feel you've let me see a side of myself that I've never seen before. You know, the real Audrey Roberts. <laughs> For starters, I think it's time to get tough in this election. Music to my ears. Starting with this libel thing of spiders about being paid off. It's slander. Libel's written, this was spoken. Oh, well, whatever. Do you know, I think we should go straight to the police station and get rid of that spider nudant in one bold move. It's a belting idea. But it's what he wants, you see. Police involvement raising his profile, his word against ours. Can't be proved. 
and mud sticks. No, you must rise above it, stick to the issues, smile your lovely smile, and the election is yours for taking. Right. <laughs> right, that's it. Who wants a drink I'm buying? Uh, no, not for me, thanks. I'm knackered. Um, I'll pass two. Do you need a hand? No, I'm all right. I'll just... No, nah, it'll only take a minute. Then I'm off for a nice long soak. Right. Um, I think I'll get home, then. Are you sure you don't want that drink? You know, just to say thank you for the work that you've done this evening. Another time, eh? See you. Yeah, see you. Bye. Cheerio. What do you think, then? Of Lorraine. Nice girl. Nice. Nice girl. Chocolate biscuits are nice. Your Auntie M, she's nice. You fancy her? Well, yeah, yeah, but... But what? Oh, come on, you've been getting any vibes? Well, I don't know. I mean, what would a girl like that see in someone like me? You know, the last two years have been the loneliest of my life. Yes, well, you've had your moments, so you have. Yeah, I suppose I have. But moments, that's all the work. Well, you want to try living in a house that used to be a family home, I'll tell you. Yeah, well, at least it was your own place. You want to try living with somebody else's furniture and somebody else's decorations. Then you realise you don't belong anywhere. And where do you belong? Yeah, with you. You know, we said we'd just take it a day at a time. Mm -hmm. Can we start with a night at a time? Can I stay? You know, I really want that, Elizabeth. What's the point? Me like this. Hey, at least you won't be rolling over in bed kicking me like you used to. I want that more than anything else in the world. To kick me? Yeah, I do. If it means I can stand on my own two feet again, be a proper, be a proper man. I'll do it, if you stay with me. I'll do it for us. I love you. You've turned the gas off at the mains. Yeah, I did that as soon as I came back from the hospital. I turned everything off and opened all the windows. Good. Let's do that. I mean, to think if I if I hadn't called round. It's... Right, well, we'd best see if we can find out how it happened. Yes, well, fumes, the doctor said. Yes, but uh, from where? Is there a gas boiler on the premises as well? Well, I I'm not sure. I I I'm just a neighbour. Well, well good friends, of course, but... Yeah, most probably the fire. <laughs> of course, you know the usual culprit is. No, who? Jackdaws. Jackdaws? Yeah, the jackdaws make their nests in the chimney and block the flue, so there's no ventilation. Oh, I see. Yeah, right, well, I'll leave you to your investigations. I'll be down in the shop if you need me. Ta very much. I'm gonna pop into town and get some stuff for Rita. I'll look in on her on my way to work. Doesn't mean you'll be finishing late, does it? No, I'm ordered day in lieu anyway. But if Mike wants me to work overtime, I will. Why? I just thought we might go for a meal tonight. You were very keen on going out for meals all of a sudden. Well, it's not like we can't afford to go out once every two weeks, is it? Gives us a chance to be on our own, doesn't it? Well, just don't book it, just in case I'm not up to it. OK. You heard from your sister yet? Gina, no, but I'm sure she won't drag her heels. Tell you. Can't wait to own that garage 100%. Get rid of Natalie. Kevin? What? Have you ever wondered what it would have been like if you'd stayed with her? You what? Well, if you and I hadn't got back together and you'd stayed with Natalie. Oh, trying to give me nightmares or something? You might be very happy together. What? You wish I had? No, I'm not saying that. Well, what are you saying? Oh, nothing. I'm just being stupid. Ignore me. All I think about is you and the girls. You know that, don't you? Yeah. Well, how was it for you, as I say? And what's that supposed to mean? I've only asked him. It was wonderful. 
but not altogether satisfactory. Jim, we've been through this already. Ah, oh, but it's important, isn't it? I love you, and I want to be with you. That's what's important. <sighs> that side of things was always very good between us. <laughs> well, yeah. But the trouble was, we had problems in just about every other department. <laughs> you never know. Maybe celibacy might turn us into the perfect couple. I can wait as long as it takes. Can you? Well, even if you can't, I mean, where the hell should you? How many times do I have to tell you before it sinks in? I know it won't be plain sailing for either of us. It's what I want. You are what I want. Uh, I've not come to buy anything. I've just popped in to see if you're going to make an appearance at the Rovers today. Oh, well, I'll, I'll, I'll look in if I, if I can, right. uh, to see how you're all managing. <laughs> oh, we're managing all right. Well, we've no choice, have we? Whether the customers are managing. You see, they don't like to be kept waiting for their ale. <laughs> yes, well, I, I can't very well leave Rita in the lurch now, can I? So you're going to leave us in the lurch instead, are you? Look, don't get me wrong, Alec. I think it's wonderful, all the things that you're doing for poor Rita. But, I mean, you do have a business of your own to run, you know. Yeah, well, well, I'll be in tonight, Betty. Yeah. I'll work at twice my usual speed. Well, it's not this evening we need anybody. It's this lunchtime. I mean, that's the busiest. Oh, well, I, I, I've promised to go and see Rita at lunchtime. Oh. Uh, well, you've got Jack and Vera. <laughs> get, get, get Natalie to bring Lorraine in if, Look, if you're yeah. still struggling. Don't worry, lovey. I mean, we'll manage. I shan't hold my breath either to see your face tonight. I mean, you're dead on your feet. Yeah, well, I was up at five this morning for the papers, Betty. Oh, Alec. Slow down, love. That's Rita won't be the only one in hospital, you know. Ta-ra, love. ta -ra. Thanks, Betty. Who put that gas fire in upstairs, do you know? No idea. It's been in a few years, I think. No, it's been fitted in the last 12 months. I say fitted. My four-year-old could have done a better job. Are you saying it's not been done properly? Well, let's put it this way. I'd be very surprised if the corgi registered, and they'll be in very hot water if they are. Hold on, are you saying what I think you're saying? That it wasn't an accident? It was an accident waiting to happen, more like. That fire's a death trap. Do you mean to say Mrs Sullivan could have almost died because some plumber did a botched job? Your friend is very lucky to be alive. And whoever put that fire in should be prosecuted. Shall I stay again tonight? You can stay every night if you want. Do you mean that? It's up to you. Well, it's a big step, isn't it? Moving back in when we've only just... Uh... We've only just what? Well, got back together. It's not as if we're kids, though, is it? No, and it makes plenty of sense. Yeah, but I'd have to let Deirdre know. I don't want to leave her in the lurch. No. Are you sure that's what you want? Nothing to make me happier. Right, then. You're up. Right. Right, well, I'll see Deirdre and tell her today. Or, well, if you think you need time to think about it, you know. No, I don't need time to think about it. I think it's a great idea. I'll leave you to tell him the good news. See ya. What good news? Sally, love. What are you doing here? Shouldn't you be at work? Mm. I had half a day left of my holiday, so I thought I'd go shopping and I'd come and see you. How are you feeling? Tired. My head's still banging, but apart from that... So, do you know how long you're going to be in here for? I don't even know how I got here in the first place. Hasn't that anybody told you? Well, I can remember bits and pieces. Sitting in my flat, feeling as if I was suffocated. I remember being in the ambulance. And the next thing I knew, a nurse were taking my blood pressure. So you don't know how it all happened? Carbon monoxide fumes, the doctor said. Oh, Rita, you were very lucky. If it wasn't for Alec, you wouldn't be here at all. Alec? He went round to see you. There was no answer, so he came looking for me. He made Greg Kelly kick the door in. Oh, I should phone and thank him. Well, you won't find him at the Rovers. He's looking after the cabin. He's not. He 
There's no need to do that. Well, that's what I said, but he insisted. He said Leanne's too young to cope on her own. I was worried about the shop. Well, there's no need. It's all under control. Hey, he's even getting up in the morning to do papers. The daft tape. Honestly, Rita has been absolutely amazing. Rest of us haven't had a look in. Hey, something to tell you. Um, do you want to take a seat? I'll just be two seconds. What's up? Mum and Dad are back together. Honest? Yep, Dad's just told me now she's even thinking of moving back in. Oh, that's brilliant. Yeah, I told you some good would come of it, didn't I? I cannot believe the way your mind works. What do you mean? What, like you did your dad a favour by pushing him off the scaffolding, Keep it did down. you? What was it? Your good deed for the day? Uh, no, I didn't mean it like that. No? But I thought you'd be pleased. Wish I'd have told you now. Steve, I am pleased. For Jim and Liz, not for you. Hey, I should be going in a minute. Well, it was lovely of you to come. Well, I brought you some makeup and a new nighty. Oh, you should. Sally, get me a purse. It's in my locker. You don't want paying for it. It's instead of grapes. Yes, you do. No, and anyway, it gave me a chance to treat myself. What do you think? Well, it looks more like the sort of thing that Leanne would wear. Good. I'm fed up of looking like an old maid. Kevin and the kids all right? Yeah, they're fine. I'll bring them to see you next time I come. You and Kevin all right? Yeah, we're fine. I knew a holiday would do you some good. Yeah, a holiday from each other would have done us even more good. What do you mean? Oh, Rita, you know what it's like. Family of four sharing the same room, spending every waking hour together. Maybe when I get out of here, you and Kevin could go away for a couple of days on your own. I'll have the kids. I don't want to worry you, but it might be quite a while yet before you're up to it. Oh, when I am up to it, it's the least I can do. Oh, sorry, uh, I forgot I'd lit it. Silly of me. Look, here's your knight in shining armour. But I like a never-ending stream of visitors. Sally, love you. If I'd known you were here, the I would... more no. the merrier. I'm just going. I will not on my account. No, no, I've got to get to work. Oh. I'll come and see you tomorrow, Rita. Whenever, love. And thank you for everything. Bye. Bye, love. Bye. Bye, Sally, love. Well, you look like you're on the mend. I'm alive, Alec. And I know who I have to thank for that. Trying to be a good neighbour, that's all. But it was young Greg Kelly. I mean, he gave you the kiss of life. Really? Wish I'd been awake for that. And Sally, of course. I mean, she were a tower of strength. No, it was a team effort, in fact. You don't mind if I take my shoes off, do you? See how my feet are crippling me. It's hard work getting up at that time every morning doing papers, isn't it, Sally? Yeah, you can say that again. Sally told you, she then, that I've been working in the shop. You didn't ask my permission. Oh, I did. I knew you were unconscious at the time. There's no need, Alec. Well, somebody's got to do it. That's what I pay Leanne for. Oh, she's only a kid. She can't manage on her own. Besides, I like helping out. Gets me out of the rovers. And I'm very grateful. But you've got enough on your plate. You just concentrate on getting better. Don't be worrying about the shop or anything else for that matter. It's you I'm worried about. Well, don't. I've got the constitution of a 20-year-old, I have. Full of life, I have. So I can see. Oh, what time do you call this? The day's nearly over. I cleared it with Mike. He said it was all right. Well, that's no business of mine whether he does or not. Just wondering where you were. Keeping tabs on me, are you? <laughs> well, the place isn't the same without you. Just been to see Rita. Oh, where was she? Much better. She said to say thank you to you for all you've done. That's a nice T-shirt, isn't you? Yeah, thanks. So 
so you have to see a customer? Yeah. Right, well, I'll see you later. Bye. Hiya. All right. What time do you finish tonight? Uh, not sure, seven-ish. OK, meet me in the Rovers and I'm going to take you out. You're taking me out? Mm, that's right. <laughs> well, there's an opera I can't refuse. No, you can't. Alec. Mm. Wake up. Oh. Oh. Did I fall asleep? Oh, Rita. Oh, I feel terrible. Well, you shouldn't. I had to wake me up in case you had to get back. Why? Well, what, what time is it? Half past three. Oh, God, you're right. I'll have to go and see Leon. She's fine. I've already phoned. Oh, well, I'll, I'll drop in the rovers and then I'll pop back later. No. I'd sooner you just went home and put your feet up. Are you sure? Positive. Right. Uh, I'll see you tomorrow. I'd like that. Oh, by the way, I know what I meant to ask you. That gas fire of yours. Can you remember who fitted it? Of course I can. It's nearly new. So who was it? Jim MacDonald. Well, it was Steve who actually did the work. Steve MacDonald? Yeah. Why do you want to know? Hey, oh, thanks, Betty. Thanks. Uh, any news of Rita? Well, she's still poorly, but she's off the critical list now. Oh, good. Apparently the side effects go on for years. No. Yeah, so I'm told, you know, headaches, loss of memory, that sort of thing. Oh. Of course, some people do make a full recovery. Oh, well. Keep your fingers crossed, eh? <laughs> no way. Oh, here she is. You dirty stop out. What are you drinking? <laughs> uh, red wine, please. Two red wines, please, Betty. Okay, love. I was nearly sending a search party out for you. I uh, know. I'm sorry I should have phoned. No, it's all right. I had a fair idea where you were. I was at Jim's. You were providing 24-hour nursing cover now, eh? Uh, well, it got to be a bit more than that. Really? Actually, we're thinking about moving back in together. No. Just thinking about it, we're not going to rush into anything. Obviously, I'll sort things out with you first. Oh. There we are. Thanks very much. And uh, thank you for all your help, you know, the other night. I enjoyed myself. At least I enjoyed the company. I don't find politics very exciting, to tell you the truth. Oh, well, obviously, you don't know Spider very well, then. Well, yeah. Well, some of his antics in the past would make your hair curl. Like what? Direct action. Direct action? Yeah, civil unrest, throwing up barricades, retail espionage. Wow. Yeah, but that's all in the past. I've managed to persuade him that if he wants to reach his goals, uh, now he's got to use the ballot box rather than my freezer cabinet. I see. Well, you see, I'm sort of his, uh, well, Svengali at the moment. Well, if you need any more help, just give me a shout. Well, what about uh, tonight? Tonight? Yeah, we're having a meeting in here. We're talking about strategy. You'd be more than welcome. I think I might be out of my depth. No, no, your input would be very useful. Mm, if you really think so. Yeah, about seven-ish, in here. And if the discussion gets too lively, we can always go for a Chinese. OK, you're on. There we are, girls. Two pound eighty. Thanks, Betty. Thanks, girl. Thank you. Well, I just hope you know what you're letting yourself in for. Well, I should do. We've been together 23 years on and off. Yeah, and it was definitely off till he had his accident. Yeah. Well, sometimes a tragedy like that makes you get things in perspective, doesn't it? Yeah, and sometimes it can muddy the waters. How do you mean? Are you sure you're not confusing love and pity? No. No, I'm not confusing anything. I do pity him. I mean, I wouldn't after what he's been through. But it doesn't mean I don't love him. I think I've always loved him, even when he put me through hell. And seeing how strong he's been and how he's coped with all this, I love him more than ever. Oh, Liz. I hope it works out for you. I really do. Hey, I'll make sure it does. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Ah, oh, you're beginning to make a habit of this. Anyone would think you didn't have a home to go to. Yeah, well, the way I feel now, I think I prefer being at my machine. For someone who's just come back off two weeks holiday, you don't look very happy. 
I'm sorry I'm being miserable. Just ignore me. What's the matter? Oh, nothing. I don't believe you. I better go. Kevin's meant to be taking me out for a meal tonight. <laughs> you don't look too thrilled at the prospect. I'm not. It's complicated. Maybe it's Rita. I, I just feel really as though everything's getting on top of me. Do you want to talk about it? No, I really have better go. Are you sure? Got a nice bottle of red here. The customer gave it me as a thank you for sorting him out. Why don't I crack it open? You and me can sit in Mike's office and have a chat. Aren't you meant to be meeting up with Maxine? Hmm. Not for ages. There's got to be a corkscrew around here somewhere. No, I really should go. Just stay for one glass. What do you say? Just one glass. Listen, what we need is a strategy meeting. A what? A brainstorming session. Come up with some new ideas. There's only a week to go, you know. Oh, yeah. Yeah, all right, then. Good idea. Um, when? Rovers. Half an hour. OK, I'll get Auntie Emily and Toya. Uh, no, uh, don't do that. I, I think we just need the inner circle. Inner circle? Yeah, me, you and Lorraine. Lorraine? Well, she's hardly what I call key to the campaign. Mm, well, she's key to mine. You're trying to hijack my campaign, mate. Oh, I'm not. I'm just trying to kill two birds with one stone. Yeah, all right then. Don't know what Mike would say if he's so sat in his office drinking wine. <laughs> he's gone home. I spoke to him an hour ago on the mobile. He told me to lock up. I still feel like I'm doing something that I shouldn't. Is that such a bad thing? Oh, I can um, talk you through last month's sales figures if it'll make you feel any better. <laughs> no, you're OK. So, um, you and Kevin are going through a bit of a rough patch at the moment. All marriages have their ups and downs. Don't see why ours should be any different. Well, I hope that doesn't mean you're just going to accept it. Well, we're getting OK. Most of the time, I suppose. You suppose? Well, we had a very bad year last year. Kevin started seeing somebody else. Oh. You know her. Do I? Natalie. She works in the Rovers. She owns part of the garage. And you can't forgive him for it? When your life's been turned upside down, it makes you think about all those things you take for granted. I'm sorry I shouldn't be saying all these things. No, go on. I tried so hard to make it work, but I've changed. My eyes have been opened. I, I feel like I'm missing out on something. I really should go, so should you for that matter. Wait. You can't waste your life like this. I've said too much. It's just the drink talking. Well, this isn't. Right, this is what we do. Every morning, first thing, we have a, a breakfast meeting and we decide exactly what we want to achieve that day. You've actually lived underground, in a tunnel. Oh, yeah, yeah, loads of times. What was it like? Cold, dark. You're lucky you didn't suffocate. Yeah, anyway, as I was saying, right... Oh, sorry, Kelly, I've just got a pop to Lou. I'm quite enjoying this. Yeah, but it's not helping me, is it? Or the campaign. Oh, no. Yeah, you're right. Well, what should we do? Well, why don't you shove off? What? Well, look, I'll tell her that you've got a, an interview with a local paper or something. Oh, please, please, spy her. Huh? OK, just this once. Oh, cheers, mate. Well, go on, then, quick, before she comes back. Boy, then. Mm, he's still over the road, seen his car parked outside the factory. Yeah. What time's supposed to be? Mm. About half an hour ago. I've given him five minutes, I'm going to drag him out myself. Where's Spider gone? Uh, he, uh, he had to dash off. Anyway, he told us to crack on without him. Can I get you a drink? As a matter of fact, I'm a bit tired. I was working all day. I should get home myself. Oh. We do 
doing? Only what we've both wanted to do since the minute we met. Stop it. Why? What's the matter? Is the door locked? Uh, no, I don't think so. me to this party tonight. Fancy coming? Uh, well, I would, but I'm helping Auntie Emily sort some jamble for the hospital. Big sale tomorrow. I could give you a hand. Uh, another time, maybe? Sure. See you. Bye, Curly. Where are you going? Oh, I've got an essay to do. It's Friday night. Tell me about it. <sighs> Hi, mate. All right, mate. I don't suppose she said anything, did she? About what? Well, she clammed up when I arrived. So she wasn't talking about me then. All we talked about was me Auntie Emily's jamble. Mm. Curly, ask her out. I can't, I can't. I mean, look at me. I mean, look at her. Well, we've been through this. Spider, did you know I was married before? Yeah, vaguely. Well, she was blonde, beautiful, and a barmaid, and she worked at the Rovers. Sound familiar? But she married you. Yeah, and then she ran off to Kuala Lumpur to get away from me. No wonder my self-esteem's so low. Well, turn it to your advantage. Tell Lorena's story. You might get a sympathy vote. See ya. See ya. <clears throat> All right. Yeah. I'll let it go. Greg, are you in there? I thought you'd locked it. Yeah, so did I. Um, in here. What are you going to say? I don't know. Hi. What's going on? You're supposed to be meeting me in the Rovers about an hour ago. I'd better go, Kevin. So what happened? Uh, well, we're just packing up. We had to undo everything. Um, yeah, I noticed a, a mistake in an order. What's this? Oh, well, that, that's the problem. It's Mike, well... He, he likes a bit too much of the Alvino. That's when the problems start. Right, I'd better get going. Oh, thanks again, Sally. I owe you one big time. No problem. So, if you're finally finished the day, why don't we go over to your flat? Oh, let's have a drink first. I've just spent an hour in the Rovers waiting for you. Oh, a Rovers? Somewhere we can get champagne. I'm celebrating. Oh, what are you celebrating? Getting away with it. <laughs> we could have had a, a disaster on our hands. We can't let him get away with it. Alec, please. Five minutes later, he'd have been facing a manslaughter charge. And here you are letting him walk away scot-free. Alec, I'm just glad to be here. Here? Rita, you're in hospital, thanks to Steve MacDonald. That young lad just goes round ruining one life after another. You OK to have the girls in the morning? No, I can't. I'm working. Why? Oh, it's, uh... Just arranged to go to the solicitors. About the garage? Yeah. Well, I said, Kevin, you're buying that it's not a problem. Just go and do it. Yeah, well, I'd have to say it, Rosie and Sophie with me if you were working. Well, they'd like going into town. Yeah, well, Natalie's going to be there. She's arranged to go through some papers and stuff, haven't she? So? So, you said you don't like the girls seeing her. Makes them upset. Well, it doesn't matter anymore, does it? Things have changed. Come on, Kev, open that bottle of wine. It's Friday night. Oh, no, I want a kiss first. You know, I've been so worried. I thought you were going to change your mind. I wouldn't do that to you, Kev. Not when it's the one thing that you really want. He 
He's asleep. Oh, you are so good at getting him off, you know. Pack it in. <laughs> what? There's no way you're conning me into getting up at three o'clock in the morning to give him his bottle and change him. Come on, why not? I've got to get up early in the morning and open up. Well, then, let's have a very, very early night, then. Sounds good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Well, it were closed. Yeah, well, much as I hate to interrupt. Well, then don't. We're closed. Look, you might have convinced Fiona here that you're a decent human being, but you've never fooled me. Alec, what is this? I would have thought you'd learned your lesson last time. OK, you finally lost it, then I think you'd better leave now. Yeah. First, you mess up my granddaughter's life. What are you bringing I... up Vicky for? That's history. Yeah, and thanks to you, Rita's almost history, too. What about Rita? Love her boy here, now and killed her. Excuse me. No, th this was an accident. This has got nothing to do with me. It was a gas fire. A gas fire you fitted. Uh, and don't come the act with me, because I've seen it all before from you. The gas fire? Yes, the health and safety have checked it out today. Lethal it is. And you fitted it. Yeah, I fitted it over a year ago. It's got nothing to do with me. Ah, well, tell that to the judge, MacDonald. I'm having you for this. say it's them, it's not you, it's Bill Webster and... And me dad. Yes, Steve, and your dad. And you're going to have to say something, because Alec is not going to stop at threats. Yeah, well, it's me dad I'm worried about. I mean, he's really looking forward to the future now. Him and me mum have got themselves sorted out. Yeah, but Alec isn't going to say anything to your dad, because it's you that he's after. Oh, if Alec can get to me through me dad, then he will. The fact he's in a wheelchair isn't going to stop him. And if he does get in touch with the police, then they're going to want a word with him, even if Alec doesn't. Right, well, you're going to have to say something to your dad first, before Alec does. Yeah. Well, maybe I should tell me dad it was me that put him in the wheelchair in the first place. Get all the good news over with at once. Oh, yeah. I bet that'll bring a bigger smile to your face in that Maxine can. Yeah, thanks. Bet you didn't think I could drum up that much business, did you? No. I'm glad I was wrong. You know, it's nice to see the factory working on a Saturday. Everybody's happy. So, where do we go from here? That's up to you. I've still got a few irons in the fire. You might be just the sort of bloke to help me out. Wait, do you mind? This has to be a private conversation. I'm sorry. Let's go and talk in the office, shall we? With the door shut. You know what? Greg isn't what you think it's about. He's not just after one thing. An hour and 25 minutes. What? Before you mention, can you not change the record, Max? Mm, what's the matter with you today? Mm, grown up problems. Well, what's wrong? Oh, Steve just got himself in a bit of a mess, that's all. Oh, now there's a surprise. Mm. Anyway, you won't have to put up with me next weekend. Won't I? Mmm. Look. Three nights the price of two, and it's four star. And it's expensive. Yeah, well, I just want to show him I can appreciate classy things. What, like his wallet? No, I'm going to offer to pay for myself. Oh, yeah? What's to say about that? Well, Greg doesn't actually know yet. I thought I'd suggest it, you know, offer to pay for him, and then he realise I can't afford it and pay for us both anyway. <laughs> So it's all hands on deck for final push now. <laughs> a bit like the crew of the Titanic. <laughs> oh, come on, Alec. The fragrant lady needs you. Yes, and so does Rita. Yeah, she does. Oh, I wish I could do more to help her, but I'm stuck with this election now. Yeah, well, but I'm sure Rita understands that, Fred. Anyway, tell Audrey I'm with her in spirit. Oh, you may as well take a magazine. I doubt she'll have time to collect it. She'll have no time for reading either. I say she'll have no time for reading. What? We're pressing the flesh with lump and proletariat this after. String vesses and kids with impetigo. Do you know, Fred, I always knew I could rely on you to emphasise the caring face of politics. The one thing I care about is stopping Spider Nugent spreading his new age poison throughout that council chamber. He'll be looking to demonise anyone with so much as a pork chop in their freezer. No. 
folk in Weatherfield deserve the delightful Audie Roberts. And my God, they're going to get her. <laughs> yeah, well, it's all right for some, isn't it? No, I enjoyed that, Jim. I really enjoyed that. It's good. Hey, your dad's on fine form today, isn't he? Yes, sir, I see. Hey, Stephen, come and sit down. Join me. Buddy, will you get this wee lot of drink? I will, though. I didn't know your mates were Ken Barlow. You always said he was a pompous prat. Well, I misjudged him. Misjudged a lot of things, really, didn't I? Anyway, look, are uh, you not working today? No, no, I uh, thought I'd come and see how you are. Well, I'm doing fine, coming on leaps and bounds, so the physio says. Well, not literally, not yet, anyway, but, you know, doing all right. You're getting there, aren't you? Well, you see, you know this recovery business? Awful lot of it's mental, so it is. I mean, as soon as I've started talking about the future with your mother, well, I just feel there's nothing to stop me, you know? I'm going to get well, so uh, you wait and see. Something on your mind? Yeah, yeah, actually, um... I've got something to do. I'll, uh, I'll catch up with you later, yeah? <laughs> and remember, when I get elected, I shall guarantee free child-minding, so just think, a vote for me is a vote for peace and quiet and freedom. Hello, little baby! You tell you a mum to vote for that nice <laughs> Mrs Roberts if you could talk, wouldn't you? There you are, you see? What could be clearer than that? Still alive, and lucky to be so, apparently. I've, uh, I've brought you these. Damn. I heard about the fire. Alec. I just can't understand how it's happened. I mean, was it the fire itself, or did the flue get blocked? Steve, I don't know. If you want to know anything, ask Alec. I think Alec's already made his mind up. What's he been saying? He came out of the salon, threatening police, jail, everything. I tried to explain to him, but he wasn't exactly in the mood to listen. So you thought you'd come round here and try it on me? Rita, I'm not trying anything on. I'm just trying to explain to you that Alex got it in for me. Well, you can hardly blame him, Steve. You put the fire in. I can remember that much. Yeah, but I was just a labourer. If anyone's going to get prosecuted, it's going to be Bill Webster and me dad. And I can't see them bringing Bill back from Germany just for this. So it'd be your dad who'd carry the can? Yeah. And that's why, I mean, it's not for me, honest. What does your dad think about it? He doesn't know. I was going to tell him before I came here today, but I just couldn't. He's got enough on his plate, what with the wheelchair and everything. I didn't know I was going to explain this to him. Ta. Ta. Hi! Coffee? Oh, yeah, great, thanks. Here, take mine. Careful, it's very hot. So you can make me some more in a minute. Flipping won't. Yeah, well, we'll take it anyway. I don't mind. <laughs> Thought I'd give you a hand for an hour. Well, there's no need. Uh, me and Spider are going out canvassing in a bit. You can give me a hand uh, with the figures, if you like. I've been out doing a bit of polling, you know. Yeah, y your mind reckons we're well in front. Oh, I'm not surprised. Who wants more of the same old thing? This woman's only a husband in a skirt. <laughs> Good point. Good point. We should have pushed that, eh? I mean, who's going to vote for Alf Roberts in a skirt, eh? <laughs> not when we've got Spider Nugent here, the alternative vote, eh? <laughs> Shouldn't we be going, Spider? Yes, you two better make a move. You've got to cover Inkerman Street. Yeah, well, I would, but you only ordered pizza ten minutes ago. Look, you're not going to get through a special and a ten-inch vegetarian on your own. Yeah, all right, well, I'll uh, heat it up then when you two get back. Tell you what, I'll help you eat the pizza, then give you a hand on Inkerman Street. That way we're all happy. <laughs> what? 
Mr. Horner? You're from social. Oh, <laughs> no. <laughs> no. I'm Audrey Roberts. I'm standing for council. Your independent business alliance candidates. I'm not interested. Oh, but you should be, because it's very important that you choose the right quality of candidate to represent you. And Mrs. Roberts here, she is the wife of the previous incumbent, Alfred of the same name. Is he all there? Oh, my agent is just pointing out that I intend to continue the good work of my husband, Alf Roberts, who has held my seat for many years. And was responsible for many fine policies, such as... Uh, town twinning. Fantastic. Well, I've got a policy of my own. I don't buy out from the door. Not double glazing, not dusters, and not scraggy old tarts. So you and Slaphead here get lost before Prince here holds your flaming seat a lot firmer than your flaming husband. <laughs> Come here! Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Lord Almighty, if Spider wants to represent these lot, then he's welcome to them. You know... I noticed a distinct family resemblance to Les Battersby. Oh. Come on. Mm. Onward and upwards. No, I think. <laughs> Your dad. What are the chances of him walking again? Uh, they're not sure, really. How do you mean? Well, I reckon it uh, depends on him, whether he wants to or not. Oh, surely he does. Well, you know what my dad's like when gloom's descending on him. He's all right within himself. It looks like him and my mum are going to get back together. Really? Yeah, sir. That's cheered him up a bit. And now this. You'll have to know, Steve. What the hell are you doing here? Oh, I get it. I should have known you'd think nothing about trying to con a sick woman to worm your way out of this mess. Go on, clear off out of it. Alec, I may be a sick woman, but I'm perfectly capable of looking after myself. Now, I suggest you go somewhere and calm down while I finish talking to Steve. But he's taking advantage! I don't blame Alec for the way he feels. Oh, I know how he feels. I'd feel the same if Fiona was an heir of the baby. But listen, if you really do prosecute her, what's going to be the point? And like I said, it's not going to be me that gets done anyway. It's going to be my dad. And I reckon that just might finish him off. So why did you drop out of uni, Spider? Ah, uh, lots of reasons. You know, sometimes I think it was a mistake that I should go back and finish my degree. I don't suppose you need to go to university to be a barmaid, eh, Lorraine? No, but I need to be a barmaid to go to university. I'm doing an access course at the college. Working at the Rovers helps with the grant. Yeah, it must be really hard studying and working at the same time. It'll be worth it in the end. Do you reckon? I'm not too sure anything worth knowing can be learnt in a classroom. He's a bit of a university of life man, is our Curly. I have studied. You don't get to be a supermarket manager without working hard. Especially as I started off as a bin man. I want to go on, get qualifications, make something of myself, not just end up a shop girl. I'm doing an essay at the moment about the history of Weatherfield. Ooh. Now there, I could help you. But Spider helps out on the archaeological site. I don't suppose you could take me there sometime? Uh, it's, um, it's a bit difficult. You see, it's a very sensitive area. Well, you know, one false move in 2,000 years of history gets trampled underfoot. My stepdad works there and all. Bless. I wonder how much history he's destroyed with his size tents. <laughs> Spider says we all have a part to play, however small, don't you? Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Talking of which, Inkerman Street. Come on, I'll give you a hand. Oh, great. That's a relief. You can go instead of me. I really ought to get on with my essay. Pity you didn't think of that before you wolfed all that pizza. Um, couldn't you just spare us half an hour? We could team up. Me and you, you and Spider, we'd soon crack it. Yeah, me and Spider make a great team, don't we? I'm sorry, I've really stayed too long. I'll pay for one of the pizzas. That'd be five, I think. Uh, no, no, that's, that's, that's on me. <laughs> Thanks, anyway. I'll see you.
You could have tried to convince her. Hey? Oh. Sorry, Curly, mate. Right, come on then, Inkerman Street. You can take one side of the street, Curly, and me and Spider will manage the other. You couldn't leave well alone, could you? Even when I ask you specifically, get Steve MacDonald in your sights and there's no talking to you. He could have killed you. It was an accident. He didn't mean to. Peter, for God's sake. You know better than to fall for that stuff. This is Steve MacDonald we're talking about. And what about Jim MacDonald? It's him they'd take to court. Do you want me to hound a man in a wheelchair because of an accident? Jim MacDonald is in a wheelchair because he fell off a building drunk. If he gets better, it'll be the doctors that have made him better. Not to do with you. Alec, I'm on the mend. Pursuing Jim MacDonald won't make me any better. But it might make him a heck of a lot worse. See, the thing is, Mike, I don't want to get stuck in a dead end. To be honest with you, I've had offers to set up on my own. Oh? Who off? Well, that's not really important. I had to raise some capital and I don't have the cash. So I pay you too well, you raise the capital and sit up with the competition. No, the money's not the issue. Like I said, what I want is a future. All right, think about this. I love my work, I love my wife. I love my golf. If I could take things a bit easier, then... <laughs> you taking things easy? You wouldn't have to sit up on your own. Because everything you want will be over there. You're going to put this in rain? No. But you can doing what you're doing now, and I think about it. You can sell. But can you run a factory and keep those girls in check? Take on more responsibility and... Well, we'll see what happens. Is it too late to pull out? Why ever should we do that? I've got the scent of victory in my nostrils. No, that's not victory. Not with what we've stood in more than once today. Oof. It's time for the master stroke. You can promise them the earth now. It's too late for to the candidates to object. Cut the council tax in half. Free tellies for pensioners. Oh, I can't do that, Fred. By the time anybody realises, he'll be inside that council chamber, charming the entire borough. Oh, I don't know. Trust me, I say, trust me. Oh, and more meat for school dinners. They'll like that one. Any particular butcher? <laughs> Uh, Pints of Bissell, please, oh, and a large gin and tonic, Bessie loves that. No, I'll just have an orange juice, please. Oh, come on, Sal. No, really, an orange juice, that's fine. Oh. Two large scotch, please, Betty. I'll be with you in a minute, love. You know when I went to see the solicitor about the partnership agreement? Yeah. I got him to draw up a new one. You want? Well, I think it's time for a fresh start, Sal. Now we've got our marriage working better than ever. What do you think? Well, yeah, but... Well, now it is OK, Sal, and it is your money by rights. I've told you, it's yours. OK, it's ours for the future, the lot. Look, all you've got to do is sign here. Sign what? The partnership agreement for the garage. Look, this is setting us up for life, this, Sal. You and me. Mike, Greg, you join us in that drink, I'll get it. Me and Sal, we're celebrating. Oh, cheers, thanks. Yeah, uh, cheers. Howdy, partner. Kevin, I've been thinking about this partnership. Mm, so have I. Mm. Brilliant, isn't it? I'll tell you what, I've even been thinking of the sign. Webster, Webster and Daughters. What do you think? I'll tell you what, though. It'd be nice to have a son up there eventually, won't it? Oh, I don't know. Not now. I said eventually. No, I mean about the partnership. Hey, what are you talking about? Well, this is your business. It should be yours alone. That's what I wanted the money to achieve for you. You've been grafting all these years. It should be yours. That's why I'm giving you this money. So that's why I want you up there with me. Together, sharing. Because that's what we are. We're a partnership, in every sense of the word. Thanks, Sam. That'll be 32p, please. 37. Th Pardon? 37p, that's what they are. 32 pence, thank you. The 37p! I think you'll find that says 32p. Well? Yeah, yeah, it does. Thank you. But it should say 37p. We might tell this price of the pad, didn't. But I, I, You've I, backed I, him up all wrong. I, I, She's going to go bust in a week at this rate. But who will? 
Oh, uh, morning, Mike. Uh, no, no one you know. You sure? I'm always interested in other people's business, especially if it's going wrong. Oh, well, this this one isn't. What can I get you? Back into my cigars, please. Uh, right. That, uh, that, uh, that'll be... Uh... 9 95 Got you on the hopper, she? Uh, oh, no, 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 certainly not. <laughs> Mike, hmm? I tried to get you yesterday. Oh, yeah? Um, I was hoping to pop in and see Rita this morning, and I was just wondering if I could make up my hours tonight. Well, that's very commendable of you, Sally. Uh, well, I wouldn't want to do it otherwise. Uh, OK. And maybe if there is a chance of more overtime... Oh, you're a glutton for punishment, aren't you? Well, we are a bit short. Yeah, OK, you're on. See ya. Hey, see ya, mate. <clears throat> have you got it? Pardon? My project, I've got it in today. You said you'd have a look at it for me. Oh, oh yes, yes, of course. <clears throat> Was it all right? Uh, well... Uh... Oh, it weren't, I knew it. So what do you reckon? <sighs> I thought so. You don't need to be polite, it's crap. Uh, no, no, no. I, I wasn't going to say that exactly. You mean it's good? Uh, no, I wasn't going to say that either. Oh. It's got a lot to commend it. Go on. Well, structure. I mean, it starts off in one direction and then goes miles off somewhere else. You said I had to give it a beginning, a middle and an end. Yeah, but preferably in that order. I'm getting fed up with this. People think I'm thick. No, no, I don't think you're thick. Far from it. Well, some help might be a good idea. A bit of extra light, you know, uh, coaching. Go to your teachers. I'm, I'm sure they will be delighted. No way. I'm not having people calling me a boff. that way, doesn't it? He must be worn out. You see, he's running his business as well as mine while I'm in here. I see, he sounds like a good friend. Oh, he is. One of the best. I couldn't ask for better. Alec Gilroy, are you listening to this? Eh? What? Oh, I must, I must have dropped off. <laughs> Oh. Dr. Plowman, Mr. Gilroy, I've just been hearing about your heroics. Oh, that's nothing, nothing at all, no. Rita, uh, Mrs. Sullivan, she'd do exactly the same for me. Well, it's good to know you've got friends. That's what I've come to ask you, really. Excuse me? Your care arrangements. Who's at home with you? Uh, no one. I live alone. I see. Is that a problem? Well, we'd like to discharge Mrs. Sullivan in the next couple of days, not least because we need the bed. Oh. But she should have some care arrangements. Have you any family? No, not really. Well, perhaps I could contact social services. Oh, no, 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 that's not necessary. No, no, I'll, I'll look after her. Hang on. If you're sure, Mr. Gilroy. Oh, yes. Excellent. Well, I'll go ahead on that basis. You're right, Mrs. Sullivan, he is a good friend. Now, look, Ali, that's very kind of you, but you've done enough already. Oh, it's no trouble at all. But you're dead on your feet. I mean, it's obvious you're not getting enough sleep. Look, I'm not getting enough sleep because I'm laying awake thinking about them McDonald's and how they're getting away with murder. Alec, you know my views. I still think we should... Alec, that's enough. Now, are you a friend or not? Well, of course I am. Then you respect my wishes. <laughs> oh dear. Read this. Let's have a look. <clears throat> hmm. Fed up with subsidising people who don't pay their community charge. Hey? Go on. I pledge that in future you won't need to be if you adopt my policy of naming and shaming them. If you don't pay, don't stay. Naming and shaming will drive them out of the district. Oh, I see what you mean. It's a good idea, that, isn't it? Or this one. We should do more for the unemployed to help them regain their self-respect. Community litter gangs will help them and the local area. She's lost it. She's finally flipped. 
I'm not so sure. Uh, what do you mean? Well, some people might think that's a good idea. But she can't do it. Well, they're not going to know, are they? So she gets elected on false promises? Yeah, and then she becomes a proper politician. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I see what you mean. I didn't think anyone would take her seriously. Toya did. Yeah, but Toya's... What? Go on. Toya's what? You're saying I'm thick, aren't you? No. Not at all. Politically inexperienced. Thick. I'm fed up with it. Toya? So why aren't you at school? I'm on my lunch break and I'm giving you an hand. Yeah, and very grateful for it we are too. In fact, we're going to have to mobilise all our supporters. Get them to explain that Audrey can't deliver on these promises. Yeah. Ring Lorraine. Why Lorraine? Why is she becoming involved all of a sudden? We don't need her. We need everybody. Especially people who don't think that Audrey's ideas are brilliant. Oh, go on. Have your little joke. Toya? No! I know when I'm not worthy to be around all you brain surgeons and supermarket managers. Oh, Toya, don't be silly. Bog off. Right, then. I'm off. Remember what I said? What? Alec. Listen, the world should know what a dangerous place it is with them McDonald's at large. Well, they won't hear it from me, and they won't hear it from you. Go on, toddle on. Alec. Thank you. Oh, hello, Sally. Hi. How is she? Oh, she's much better. Yeah, she, she's coming home. Really? Oh, yeah. that's wonderful. Yeah, look, look, I'll have to pop off, so oh. I'll see you later. Yeah, see Bye. you later. <laughs> Sally, love, how mm. nice to see you. Oh, you do look much better. And I feel it. How are you? Oh, I'm fine. You haven't taken time off to come here, have you? Because you shouldn't. No, it's OK. I've arranged to do extra tonight. Oh, Sally, you shouldn't do that. You should be at home with Kevin doing something romantic, not sweating over a machine in a factory. How is he, anyway? Who? Kevin? Well, who else? You didn't think I meant Mike Baldwin, did you? No, he, he's fine. Is there something up between you and Kevin? No, no. In fact, he's asked me to go into partnership with him in the garage. Has he? How do you feel about that? That's it, isn't it? You're not sure, are you? I knew there was something. You can't pull the wool over your Auntie Rita's eyes. Uh, uh, jam donut, two Danish and a custard pie, please. What would you like, custard pie? Oh, hello, Toya. How are you? Not at school. Going tonight? Well, here it is. Big meeting tonight. I thought you would have been there, didn't they tell you? Yeah, of course. It's just you asked where. Yeah, I, I knew about the meeting. Of course I did. It's been fixed for ages. Mm. Didn't know you were going. Oh, yes, yeah, spider rang. Insisted I came along. Got a lot of college work on, but you seemed so desperate. Well, you shouldn't be ignoring your studies. Oh, well, one night won't make a difference. My tutor reckons I'm way ahead anyway. Uh, 1.35. See you tonight, then. Why aren't you at school? I've got the afternoon off. No, you've not. You handed that project in yet? No, I haven't. Why not? You've done the work. You mustn't be ashamed of it. Let your teacher know you've made the effort. There's no point. Yes, there is. Your wages. Eh? You hand that project in. I'll advance your wages to tonight. And then if Lorraine and Spider do go out, well, you'll have the money to go with them, won't you? Yeah. Cheers, Roy. So it's a bit tricky sometimes, let me tell you. Uh, can, you um, can I interest you in one of Audrey Roberts' leaflets? Hey, Hi. campaigning for the opposition now? No, not exactly, but I think you should get a chance to read it if you haven't already. <laughs> oh, see, painting over disabled car parking spaces in the front of local shops to improve customer access, well, I have to say it's an interesting proposition. Yeah, and one you're in favour of, Jim. Oh, I stick a note. If it stops me going shopping, it works. <laughs> <laughs> so much amusing. <laughs> Something pathetic. This is the most cynical piece of electioneering I've ever seen. Rubbish! 
It's just an imaginative use of public relations, is that? Give a far-sighted visionary like Audrey Roberts a blank agenda and see what she comes up with. <laughs> enough, Manure, to bury you up to your neck in it, and that's saying something. Now, say <laughs> Now, that's enough. Uh, now, that's it. All right, all right, gentlemen, let's save our opinions till the polling day, shall we? Hey, Alec, how was Rita this morning? Oh, she's, uh, she's getting better, you know, considering what a lucky escape she had. Severe carbon monoxide poisoning. Yeah, lucky to be alive, really. No thanks to the so-called professionals who installed a heating system. Uh, how are your horses, Sandy? Are you suggesting what I think you're suggesting? Jim, I don't know what goes on inside your head, but if there's a guilty conscience in there, I would say it's entirely appropriate. I'm here now. Oh, wonderful. Uh, now, don't be like that. I have got other businesses to run, you know. Yeah, well, uh, nobody's asking you to run this place. In fact, the only place you've run it is into the ground. Do you know how many price mistakes you had to put right once you'd gone? Oh, yeah, well, I mean, different systems take a bit of getting used to, don't they? Anyway, you can go to your lunch now. Oh, well, about time. Anyway, how's Rita doing? Mrs Sullivan is getting better. She'll be home soon. Oh, well, thank God for that. Maybe then we can get some sense back into the shop, eh? <laughs> Running this place. You couldn't run a paper boy's tea party. You yeah, what? I... Yes? I'd like an explanation, please, Sandy. A what? A why you're bad mouth me. I mean, what's the crack? Look, Jim, I've been told to stay out of this and I intend to do so, but let me put these things together for you. Gas fire, installer, carbon monoxide poisoning. Does that ring any bells? No, it doesn't. But then I can't remember all the details. My memory's not what it was. That's very convenient. Listen, any job I've ever done, Sandy, has been professional, OK? How do you know if you can't remember? Because I know what sort of a man I am, that's why. Oh, the sort that gets drunk and falls off buildings. Do you know yes, I know. You'd thump me. Well, if you'll excuse me, I've got work to do, even if you haven't. But rest assured, Jim, the authorities will help you with your memory loss. Are you serious about doing some overtime then? Yeah, of course I am. Nothing if not conscientious. But you're a housewife and a mother. Your family going to be wanting their tea. Oh, Kevin will be all right. He can manage. Are you sure? All right then. You know how to work the alarm, don't you? Yeah, of course I do. OK, see you tomorrow. I'm not happy about leaving you here by yourself. I've got some paperwork to do. I'll hang on a little bit longer. No. Pardon? Don't be silly, Mike. Alma doesn't see enough of you as it is. Has she been saying something, has she? No, it's just, well, you're here all the time. Yeah, <laughs> you're probably right. Still, another ten minutes won't do her any harm, will it? Oh, hang on a little bit longer. So? You're going to enter the Miss Weatherfield competition. Or strike a blow for the restoration of our uh, feminine values. Be your age. Are <laughs> <laughs> oh, you doing hands down? Well, you know, if you were uh, inclined to enter. Which you wouldn't, would you? Nah, nah. Of course not. I know. Who wants a beer? Yeah, great. I haven't got any. I'll go and get some. Have you any particular favourite? That beer, I mean, Lorraine, you know, with you being in the trade and all. No, as it comes. As it comes? Brilliant, excellent, excellent, yeah. <laughs> right, then, you two keep up the good work and, uh Um, it's a great bloke, Curdy. Oh, yeah, very nice. <laughs> yeah, totally committed to the cause. Yeah. Real salt of the earth. I'll do anything for you. How do you feel about him? Oh, it's great. I really like him. Do you? Oh, great. <laughs> <clears throat> 
Brilliant, thank you. See you later. Right, so when is it you're away then? What? On this weekend deals. Why? Because I'm interested. Well, I told you this morning you weren't listening. Did you? Mm. You're saying goodbye to Steve. Oh, well, I mean, yeah, it's, it has stuff on my mind. It didn't mean I wasn't interested, though. All right, then, where shall I start? Main thing is, me and Greg with the right background, and then... Yeah, go on. Then I think he'll make a bit more of a commitment. You know, open up more. Why doesn't he make a little bit more of a commitment now? Because you need the right vibes, don't you? Oh, it's a pity, that. He's just walked past. You're joking! You don't have to make it so obvious, you know. Oh, what? That you don't trust me. Hey? Well, that's obviously why you're staying, isn't it? You don't trust me to be here all by myself. What the hell are you talking about, woman? Of course I do. Well, it's funny how you were on your way home to remember that I was staying late. Oh, I give up. Right, I'm off to the sanctuary of what I hope is a male-dominated rover's return. Oh, and don't forget to... Set the alarm. Rita Sullivan on a slight case of carbon monoxide poison, which we might be responsible for. Now, come on, Stephen. Did I fit the central heating or what? No, I didn't. Yeah, but it was under yours and Bill Webster's supervision. Yeah, but I did it. Well, if you want to be the martyr, Steve. Oh, shut up, you. What? Nothing. Look, listen, whatever. Rita's gone to the authorities. We could be in real trouble here, Stephen. Do you understand me? Uh, bands. Uh... I don't know, the usual, I suppose. You know, chamber one by the levellers, saw doctors. What about super furry animals? Oh, yeah, yeah, they're all right. See, I knew we had stuff in common. Here we go. Here. Yeah, get stuck in. Yeah, uh, Curly likes super furry animals, didn't you, mate? You what? Oh, yeah. Uh, furry ones, bald ones. I love them all. And chamber wamba. Right, I'm done. Oh, right. Uh, you handed that project in? Of course. I could see when What's His Face took it, he didn't rate it. What's His Face? Mr. O'Neill. Eh? Hey? You never forget the name of a good teacher. He didn't seem to be that impressed with it. So I guess that'll be another D then. Do you care? Of course I do. I've told you I'm fed up with people thinking I'm thick. Why? Because, well, I get these ideas right, but when I talk about them, I make mistakes. You see, I reckon half the stuff that goes on is rubbish, and I want to say so. But when I do, sometimes it don't sound right. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I, I, I know how that feels. You don't, do you? I mean, you know loads of stuff. Well, I suppose I do, but people still think I'm a bit odd. I don't. Well, not really odd. Thanks, Toya. No, you, 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 you see... You, you've got ideas and, and, and opinions and you're curious and you get excited about things. I think you're on the right road. You just need to develop the skills to communicate that. It's people without ideas who are thick. Yeah, but I've left it too late, haven't I? I mean, all the teachers think I'm useless and my mates. Well, I can't let them see that I want to learn out. It's not too late, Toya. In fact, well, I envy you. Yeah, right. Well, I do. I mean, you think I know things. Well, yeah, probably I do, but what do I do with it? I run a cafe. You, you've got energy, you've got confidence. I mean, you're not shy. If you want to say something, you just say it. Well, some of us, we've got a lot to say, but, well, it won't come out. Which would you rather be? Yeah, but stuff I say, it's rubbish. If you want it to improve, then it will. You get ideas, don't you? Then you'll work out the answer. Here you are. Try using this. Work it out. You're not thick.
Hi. Sorry, I got held up. Took longer than I thought. Are you leaving? Well, I suppose I could do another hour. And the dragon says, Oh no, don't kill me. So the prince put his sword away and the dragon went, Ah! Right, part two tomorrow. You two, bed if you want to be mechanics. When's Mum back? Oh, she'll be back soon. Why is she working late? Is she being punished? <laughs> no, of course not. She's doing it so she can buy you two nice things. Cos that's the sort of mummy you've got. Someone who never stops thinking about you both. I can't believe this. You and me are like this. <laughs> You better get used to it. Might's put me on the payroll. No, I didn't mean here. I meant me. I've never done anything like this before. After everything I've been through, me of all people. You want to call it a day? No. I mean, the worst you can do is say no. That's what I'm afraid of. I can only have some confidence. That's easy for you to say. Don't be so sad. Well, the longer I put it off, the longer I can dream about it, can't I? It just gets sadder. Well, I'm 15 years older than she is. So? Well, think about it. Curly, she likes you. She respects you. She thinks you're clever. You think so? <laughs> aye, aye. <laughs> Morning, Audrey. Oh, for... We're, uh, we're just off out canvassing. We're going to be telling the electric what a pile of poo, poo your ten pledges are. Oh, right, yes. Well, I suppose being a member of the unemployed, you can afford the time, can't you? Oh, dear, oh, dear. You're not going to endear yourself to anyone with that sort of attitude, are you? Not round here. Actually, Spider is not unemployed. Oh, really? So what does he know about round here, eh? He's only been round here five minutes. Yeah, Audrey, on your manifesto, this bit about slashing the rates, how are you going to fund refuge collection by appointment if you've halved the rates? All will become clear. Clear as mud, no doubt. <laughs> Oi, sir, sir. Well, go and ask me out for a carry tonight, I dare you. Morning. Hi, oh, Lorraine. You look busy. Yeah, we're just off out educating the people. Um, I'll just get some more sanitary. Cheers, mate. I wish I could come with you. Well, you can if you want. No, I've got to work. I need the money. You've got to work tonight as well? I've got this essay that needs doing. Just that, uh, I thought we could go for a curry. OK. Oh, uh, great. I'll meet you at 6 o'clock in the Rovers. Brilliant. See you. See, ya. See you, Spider. See you later, Lorraine. What's up? Spider and Curly have gone canvassing and won't let me go with them. Well, they probably thought you'd be bored. It's a very thankless task, I imagine. But I wanted to go. They just don't appreciate me. They think I'm thick. <laughs> have you got something to say, Mr Barlow? Sorry? Sat there sniggering like butter wouldn't melt up his bum. Toya. It's because of useless old teachers like him that people like me end up stupid. Steady. Concentration, I seem to remember, was your problem, Toya. They take one look at your surname and where you come from, and that's it. Detention every night. If you had ever once just shown the slightest bit of interest. In what? McFlame in Beth, William Bohr in Blake. That doesn't mean anything. It doesn't affect anything. So you'd rather read about pop music and makeup and all that sort of stuff, would you? No. I want to learn about what's going on now, out there in the real world. Then read a newspaper. What's the point in that? It's all full of trash about folk on telly. I mean, a proper newspaper. I mean, Spider and Curly, they, they know all about what's going on in the Middle East and Bogota. And what do I know? Bog all. Because I've been taught by nerd teachers like you. I'll give you that. Just read one little bit, one article. You might learn a lot more than you expect. Likely. 
Please, Fee, just a week's advance. Oh, Maxine, no! Is it seriously expensive, then, Maxine, this hotel? Do you mind, George? This is a private conversation. What's it called? Because half oh, for me might have been there. Hazlitt Hall in Cheshire. No, no, that doesn't ring a bell, that. Mm, it's got everything there. Heated swimming pool, oh, no. jacuzzi, sauna, steam room, 18-hole golf course. I'll do it in a set, so. Yeah, no rush. Does Greg play golf, then? No, I don't think so. Well, anyway, you won't need to. We'll be sitting in the jacuzzi together drinking champagne. Oh. <laughs> going somewhere nice, Maxine? Yeah, me and Greg are going to a posh hotel for the weekend. What, this coming weekend? Yeah. Oh, look at you all green with envy. Wow. No, Maxine, we're green with puking up after listening to you banging oh, on about it all yeah. morning. Sure. Happy weekend, what can I do for you, Sally? Uh, I just want to book in for a trim. You must tell me what it's like, Maxine, because you've got a really fancy that myself. <laughs> I can manage. Oh, steady. I'm just going to pop in the shop and see how Leanne is. You are Ella's like. She can cope on her own. She doesn't uh, need you to interfere. I'll take your word for it, Ali. Uh, oh. uh, now, are you all right? I'm fine. Look, you get me bag and I'll open up. Thank you. Oh, a bit brighter. Oh, well, you look a lot brighter, don't you, Helen? Oh, yeah. Hey, it's smashing to see you out that hospital bed. I tell you what I'm looking forward to seeing, them two little girls. Well, I'll bring them round after they've had the tea. Well, well, as long as they don't stay too late, you know, and tire her out. Why don't you all come round? You, Kevin, the kids. Well, we could. Right. Have you time for a coffee now? I've only got ten minutes. Oh, no that's coffee. plenty of time. Come on, you come and tell me what's been going on. Right, I'll pop the kettle on, but honestly, Rita, I've got to go. Oh, only for a few minutes. Stay. I mean, Mike won't mind. Oh, you're joking. There we are. Ah, come on, get yourself sat down. Oh, I don't want to be sat. I'd rather be doing. No, you're not up to it yet. Come on, let's get your cup off. Right, I'll are. pop the kettle on, and uh, I'll be back after tea time with the girls. I've hardly seen you. Well, she, she has got a job to go to. I'll try and pop in at dinner time. Yeah, I'm sorry, love. Take no notice of me. I'm just glad to see you. Welcome on, Rita. Thanks, love. I'll see you later. Yeah. See you, sir. I, uh, got you some flowers. Oh, Alec, they're lovely. Uh, are you all right? You're not rushing off, are you? Me? No, no, no. I'll stay as long as I'm needed. And unless, of course, I mean you'd rather be on your own. No. No, I wouldn't, Alec. It's a strange feeling, coming back, when you've no memory of leaving. It brings it home to you. I could just have easily been dead, couldn't I? For all I knew out about it. Look, don't dwell on it. Won't Jack and Vera want to know where you are? Well, they'll, they'll manage. I, I, I'm here just as long as you want. Thanks, Alec. Have you got it then? Eh? Hey? The chewing gum I asked you to get me. Oh, damn, I'm sorry, I forgot. Oh, you're finally useless, you seven. There you go. No problem. Greg? Oh, hi. Is it true you and Maxine are going away for the weekend together? Oh, yeah. Sorry, I meant to tell you. But are you going to go? Well, I can't get out of it. She's fixed it up and everything. It'll look odd if I backed out now. But isn't it all over between you and her now? Yeah, I just... I haven't told her yet. I don't want to go. I'm not paying for it. She's paying for herself. But you are going to finish with her, aren't you? Look, can we talk about this later? This isn't exactly the right time, is it? Obviously. When, then? Can you stay behind again? Tonight? Yeah. Yeah, OK.
I suppose you might as well enjoy yourself before you get trounced bit voters tomorrow. Trounced? The only person who's going to get trounced is this rather strange-looking woman here with the air cut from Mars. <laughs> a promising to bring back the Miss Weatherfield competition and prison centres for owners of dogs who let them foul the pavement. Oh, well, I might have guessed a smelly hippie would think it's OK for dogs to leave their messes everywhere. <laughs> That's not the point! In fact... Now I come to think of it, I'm surprised I've never seen you with a flea-bitten whippet dangling at the end of a bit of string. If she thinks people round here are going to believe that she's going to bring back sentencing for it... She's barking! <laughs> she has very high ideals. Yeah, and we've been handing out her leaflets all morning. Yeah, we decided that she was the best advert you could possibly have. For me. <laughs> That's a sort of trick that could well backfire on you. Listen, you know I've invited Lorraine out for a curry tonight. Yeah. Well, I think she's under the impression that all three of us are going. So if she says anything, you don't feel very well and you want an early night, all right? Okay, okay. Thank you. Tomorrow night, Audrey, we shall be down in now but champagne. Oh, wonderful, but don't give Alfie any. It gives him wind, and it's me has to go into the spare bedroom. <laughs> Hello, Audrey. <laughs> <laughs> Say, put that damn thing away. Ridiculous nonsense. <laughs> Hello, Lorraine. Hi. Hi, Spider. Oh, yeah. Hey, what's everyone drinking? That's all right, I'll get these. What are you having, Lorraine? White wine and soda, thanks. Right. So, where are you taking us, then? Ah, oh, tonight, yeah. Um, well, listen, I'm going to have to cop out on that one. I'm a bit tired, you know? Early night, need my bed. Oh. Hey, don't let that stop you and Curly making a night of it. Well... Oh, come on, for me, eh? He'll be really disappointed if you don't. He's been working really hard and he's a really nice guy. OK. Please, just this once and then I'll oh. never ask again, ever, God ever, knows ever. why I agreed to come for a drink with you. Oh, please, just this once. Maxine, look, I am really sick to the back teeth of this now, all right? Just get the message, no. Please. All right. Fine. Take it. Have it. Yeah. What, you really mean that? Yeah, have next week's, have the week after that's, have whatever the hell else you want, all right? But just do not come crying to me when you've got no money and don't blame me, understand? No, thank you. No, thank no, Maxine, don't thank me. He is not worth it and you're going to find out. See you, girls. Bye. Bye. What's it in here, any Rod? All this over time. I wonder thought you'd have been desperate after getting all that money off your mum. Well, it's all tied up, what with one damn thing and another. Well, you want to be careful, you know. Folk might start talking. How do you mean? Oh, well, no. You just don't all us want to be at beck and call of them two, that's all. I'm now I'll do some more for time. What do you think? It's up to you, Janice. Maybe another time. I'll see you tomorrow. Yeah. Bye, Sam. See you. Talk to you. We can talk later. Mm. We can talk any time. But we haven't got long because Mike's popping back in half an hour. Hiya, love. You had a good day? No. Had a rubbish day as usual. Yeah, well, don't get on to me about it. You're not the only one. That's all I've got to look forward to now, innit? A life full of rubbish days. Cos, let's face it, I'm probably going to end up just like you. Don't start. I'm 16 and on the scrap heap, repeating a year. Yeah, well, you needn't be. That's up to you, isn't it? If you'd ever once shown the slightest bit of interest in my schoolwork... I have! I do. When? 
You never go to see me teachers on open evenings. Oh, except to pick a fight. Once that happened. Yeah, once. The only time you went. Listen, you were never interested before. Don't blame me. If I'd have known you were bothered, I'd have gone more. You never asked me about my own work. And if I do get my own work out when Les is around, he always wants to use the table for something. You can't blame us, love. It's the way we were brought up. Nobody ever took an interest in it when we were kids either. I mean, it just weren't important. I'm fed up of being stupid. I'm not stupid. I know you're not stupid. Nobody's saying you are. No, everyone just assumes I am. Listen, I wish I could help you better, but I can't. You could help me with my own work. How? You know more than I do. I know nothing about anything. I can't even read a proper newspaper. It's like a foreign language. Come on then, let's go find you, ma'am. She's obviously forgot we said we was going to the pictures, eh? What's wrong? I want to talk to you about Maxine. Later. No, now. I can't stand to think of you doing this with her. You know she means nothing to me, not like you do. Well, she must do, otherwise you'd finish with her. She doesn't. Greg, tell her you can't go. It's not as easy as that, I've told you. I never expected it to be. I don't want to hurt her. You're two-timing her. You're two-timing Kevin. Are you going to tell him? It's different. Why? I'm married. There are children involved. That's why. So you can't stand the thought of me with her, but I've got to put up with the thought of you with him. Is that right? It's different. I've got kids. Don't you think Maxine's going to want to know why if I do tell her I can't go? We well, don't have to tell her the truth. So? It's Kevin. Oh, well, I usually lock up before you've left. Oh, force of habit, I suppose. Last one out drops the latch. Is there uh, Sally about? Yeah. Well, go on, then. Give your mum a kiss. Mum! Hiya, girls. You forget we said we was going to pictures or what? Yeah, um, Greg asked me if I wanted to do some overtime, but I never thought. Hmm. So, all right, she comes with us? Well, it's up to Sally. It's fine by me either way. Come on, Mum. Is it all right if I am? Um... Yeah, sure. Don't touch anything, Sophie. We don't want you getting electrocuted, do we? Right, well, I'll, uh, I'll see you tomorrow then. Yeah, see ya. See ya, girls. Enjoy the film. Yeah. Oh, you. Hi, Mr. Barlow. Oh, Mr. Now, is it? Not playing old Barlow. Look, I've come to say I'm sorry about the way I spoke to you this morning in the cafe. Well, that's something, I suppose, the first, if nothing else. I just get angry. I don't want to be stupid all my life, and I feel like I've cocked everything up already. Yeah, well, I'm sure you're very resourceful and uh, academic intelligence isn't everything. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm just watching your news. I looked at that newspaper you gave me. Oh, good. Yeah. I didn't understand most of it. I mean, you need to know about so much stuff before you even start reading. Yeah, well, uh, stick to the tabloids, they're much more fun. I don't want to! I want to be able to read proper newspapers. Mr Barlow. What? Do you give private lessons? Oh, no. Uh, private tuition, you know, so I can catch up with everything. No, 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 no. I can pay you. Uh, no, look, I'm going in now and my tea's getting cold, OK? Your favourite one. Audrey Roberts, Weatherfield's drugs czar. <laughs> Audrey Roberts says no to the evils of drugs. <laughs> Are you sure you're not coming with a spider? Yeah, yeah, look, I'm knackered. Uh, right, uh, I'll see you. I'll see you later. This way. Hi, spider. Oh, hey, Toya. Is there anything I can do, you know, to help with the campaign? Nah, not really. It's all over, Barda shouting. Uh, yeah. I'll see you tomorrow. Changes took place. <laughs> Families divided. <laughs> Neighbours <laughs> became enemies. <laughs> Yeah, two pounds seventy-six. Alec. Oh, well, was I asleep again? Just look at you. 
You've been here all day. Well, I, well, I can stop all night if you want. I, I mean, I'll sleep in this chair. Well, you'd have to. You can't sleep in my bed. Uh, the thought never crossed my mind. No, you get off home now. I'll be all right. Uh, shall we have another cup of tea? Well, nearly ten o'clock. Look, is it? Sally never came. She said she'd bring the kids. Ah, well, that and she'll pop round tomorrow, eh? Yeah. I mean, she's a busy lass. Working all day and a family to see to. I suppose you're right. I'm just being selfish. And we've done all right for visitors, haven't we? We've had Betty and Vera. I appreciate you staying this long, Alec. It's just what I needed. Somebody here. Yeah, well, think on. If you do want me for out, all you've got to do is knock on that wall. I think I'll probably pick the telephone up. Oh, the phone. Yes, yeah, yeah, I was speaking metaphorically. Oh, right. Yeah. Right. Well, I'll say good night then. And uh, I hope you sleep well, love. Oh, I'm sure I will, Alec. But if you should wake up in the middle of the night and feel, you know, uneasy about out, right. don't hesitate. I'll come round straight away, no matter what time it is. Thanks, Alec. See yourself, Alec. I will. Good night. Good night. Right, well, thanks for the coffee and the meal. My pleasure. Any time. No, I'll pay next time. Great. You're not going already, are you? I didn't realise it was this late. Well, it's only about ten. I've got my essay to be getting on with. Right. Do you want to see my telescope? Curly. You say the sweetest things, but honestly, I've got to get back. Well, no, I meant my telescope in the attic upstairs. I did mention it before and you said you wanted to see it. Maybe next time. Will there be a next time? You know this essay? Uh, what is it about? Oh... Well, well maybe if you, if you talk me through it, I could help you with it. Hardly. Sorry. It's about the repeal of the Corn Laws in 1846. Ah, history. No, physics. Your face. Of course it's history, you plonker. Sorry. Sorry, what for? Right, well, good luck for tomorrow. Thank you, great. Give Spider my love. Tell him I'll be thinking about him. Yeah, will do. He is a fabulous Spider, isn't he? I really admire him. He's so passionate about stuff, isn't he? Yes, he's very, um, demonstrative. How do you mean? Well, I think people are passionate about a lot of things. It's just that some people are louder than others. Well, I admire that. I think it's easy to keep your mouth shut and sit on the fence. I admire people who let people know how they feel and make things happen. Do you? I think so. Can I kiss you? Gosh, that was unexpected. Was it? I didn't realise you... I'm not entirely unpleasant. Don't be daft. Right, see you then. Bye. I'm very sorry about that, Mrs Baines. It won't happen again, I promise. Well, you're getting a dab hand at dealing with difficult customers. Yeah, well, I've had enough practice, haven't I? You mucking up the papers each morning. Yes, well, you try doing two jobs in a day. Yeah, look, I know it must be hard work for oh, you, so why don't you just what leave... gives you that idea? I mean, it's only an 18-hour stint. I could fit in a night shift as well. I mean, why bother going to bed at all? <laughs> oh, morning, Rita, love. How are you? Not so bad. You must be worn out. Oh, I can motor on for weeks when I have to. No, don't you worry about me. Leanne, have you had your coffee, Blake, love? No, not yet, but it's all right. Don't worry. No, no, no. You go now while we're quiet. Right. Alec, I'm eternally grateful for all that you've done for me. But you can't go on like this. You'll kill yourself. It won't be for much longer. But what if it is? No, I, I think I'd better get someone else in. Look, there's, there's no need. Alec, I can't keep taking advantage of an old friend like this. 
Yeah, well, that's actually something I wanted to talk to you about. What? Me as an old friend. Well, that's what you are. The oldest friend I have round here. Well, you're mine. So what's to do? Well, I had rather hope that, you know, after what's happened, we could become more than just old friends. Morning. What are you up to today? Oh, so that's your business now, is it? Well, I thought if you're doing now as usual, you could be teaching me and earning yourself some money. Toya, why aren't you at school? Well, we'll break up tomorrow and it hasn't seemed worth it. We never do out last week. You're going to get nowhere thinking like that. I'm going to get nowhere at that school. The teachers are crap. I was at that school once, so I'm crap too, presumably. Why come to me? Oh, just think about it. No, this is a joke, isn't it? I mean, you're trying to set me up. No. Well, the answer's still no, anyway. Get out of here before this gets out of hand. Will you back that car up as far as Crimea Street, then you can preach to the converted in that squat. At least I've got some policies. I didn't cobble mine together this election. Oh, I suppose you'd burn at the state for them. I've been a prison for them. Have you now? All I can say for Dame Shirley Porter there. All she cares about is her bloody dress allowance. Uh, right, that's it. I've had enough of this. It's all right, Audrey. Just leave it. Uh, if you could just reverse back a bit, Spider, please. Only I'm blocked in here. You are so sad. Fred, why did you let them get away with it? In defeat, defiance. In victory, magnanimity. <laughs> we haven't won yet. Have we not? Gold Roberts, your business alliance cabinet. Look, I, I hope you don't think I'm speaking out of turn, but I can't keep this to myself any longer. Look, this sort of talk could ruin a good friendship. It was, it was seeing you lying there on the floor upstairs, dead. I mean, for all I knew. Well, it'd be a shock for anyone. Yes, but you're not just anyone, are you, Rita? I... I'm not good at this. It's just that I... I realised that if you... Well, you know, gone... There'd be a big gap in my life. Well, I'd feel the same about you, Alec. Well, then, can't you hear what I'm saying? Doesn't mean to say we have to start going soft in the head. Yeah, yeah but without you, Rita... There'd be less for me to live for. I mean, a lot less. Shall I tell you what I think? What? I think you've seen me have a brush with death, and it's brought you up short about your own mortality. It's addled your brain. Now, that's not fair. Oh, Alec, we do daft things at our age. Look, I'll do us both a favour and forget you ever mentioned it. I won't change my mind, Rita. Well, that's what I said about going to Cartmel with me. Come back. Just in time. I'll see you later. What? Timing. Don't let Fred get to you. Just makes me mad to think the councils up and down the country are run by the likes of them two. People vote for him. Well, that's what's so depressing. It's enough to put you off democracy. No, no. 
Well, I just get frustrated, don't I? Well, that's what he's doing, he's just trying to wind you up. Sounds like he's desperate, if you ask me. Exactly. Good point. That's why tonight Victor will be all that sweeter. Yeah, well, I'm not counting me chickens. He's in a state. Where it's election day and it's bound to get a bit tense. Uh, listen, uh, last night I, I, I didn't uh, do anything that I shouldn't have done, did I? Don't be silly. Why should you think that? Uh, no reason. No reason. Are you sure you can spare us the time? Oh, not now, Betty. He doesn't normally help people out like that, does he? His generosity is not proverbial. If that's what you mean. So what's Rita got that no-one else has? Oh, I don't know, but if has him sniffing round you like that, you can keep it. <coughs> Scotch and threat, please, Betty. Right. Who's winning? Put it this way. Yeah. We are quietly confident. Ah. Uh... Have you made your cross yet? Oh, yeah. First thing this morning. For us, I hope. Oh, it's a secret ballot where I voted. <laughs> Town Hall. It's Fred Elliott here. Could you put me through to the returning office, sir? Right, here we go, madam. As requested, this week's wages and next week's. Oh, thanks for your pal. No, I'm not. Pals do what are best with their friends. I'm indulging you. There's a difference. Well, in two weeks, if we run out of money, then that's my problem. No, it's not. It's my problem. Because I've got to listen to you moaning on about well, it. Well, I won't moan. Then I'm gonna feel really guilty because I'm not giving you another soul. Well, I won't ask, so it will be your problem. I also think you're sending out the wrong signals to Greg. Well, he won't know. Max, he's gonna see that you're spending miles more money than normal. And I might get a bit disappointed when it stops. <laughs> well, he's not after me for my money, is he? Look, Fee, I know we've had a few ups and downs, but this is the real thing. Max, you've known him for three months. So? Look, Fee, sometimes you sound like my mother. Yeah, that's because I don't want to see you getting hurt. Right? Just don't raise your hopes too much, that's all. There's something I don't know. Not that I'm aware of. Well, then. Let me just get on with it, OK? Mr. Rose. Norman McLeod, returning officer. Thank you very much for seeing me. You have a problem? Yes. I'm the agent for Audrey Roberts. I know Audrey. She's not in any trouble, is she? No, far from it, no. It's one of t'other candidates, Geoffrey Nugent. What's he been doing? Dimes what he's been doing. I'm not with you. Porridge, bird, chokey. The beggar's an ex-con. Are you sure about this? He's been bragging about it. Then he shouldn't be standing. That's what I thought. He should have declared this when he put himself forward. Oh, well, you know what folk with a planet to save think about the law, don't you? They think they're above it, don't they? We'll have to check it's true, of course. But if it is? There's no way he can be elected. That's what I hope you'd say. Thank you, Mr McLeod. <laughs> Oh, hi, Sally. Hiya. Um, <clears throat> look, I've been thinking about what you said. Oh, Gregory, yeah. my son. Ah, oh, excuse me a sec. Mike. You never guess who I bumped into this morning. Charlie Russell, old mate of your dad's. Oh, I know Charlie. How's he keeping? Oh, he's well, but more important, he's got more work than he can handle. Really? Yeah. Bring your drink over here. With this. Okay, excuse yourself. Hello. Hi, Ken. Hi, Ken. Are you sure about this, Fred? Returning officer confirmed it. Well, what happens if Spider wins? Then he'll be disqualified. Well, that doesn't mean that I'll win, though. There's only him and you in it. Everybody says so. <laughs> if he don't win, then it's yours. But perhaps he's known about this all along. Then why would he stand? To prove a point, to show that he no, could win if he wanted. No, no, no. He'd have had to have worn up right at the beginning. Folk could never have forgiven him for wasting their votes. 
What happens if he's having us on about this prison thing? I caught him off guard. I provoked him. Oh, yeah. No, I don't think we're about to worry about, Councillor. Oh. When you're ready, Betty! I don't know. How are the rovers? Oh, it was uh, it was all right. You know, quite busy with, with the election and that. Mm. I had a word with Ken. How is he? Ah, well, he's at a loose end, as usual. Do you know, I could ask Ken Barlow to work in the shop for me. He's done it before. Well, if that's what you want, yeah. I mean, mm. you could do worse. Yeah. So... How's your omelet? Very nice. Yeah. Only Cooker were playing up a bit, you know. Steve MacDonald didn't fit that as well, did he? Alec. Well, look, he's getting away scot-free, Rita. Alec, you said this morning how you felt about me. Well, every time you bring that gas fire up, you put yourself further out of the frame. Do I make myself clear? Yes. This'll keep you stoked up for tonight. Ah, great. My contribution to the war effort. Oh, thanks, Rick. Your mum and dad voted yet, sir? You won't get my dad to vote. Oh, you see, that's what we're up against. Apathy. No, oh, it's not that. He won't put his name on the electoral roll. Don't want folks to know where he lives in case he gets in bother. What are you reading? Uh, oh, it's just a novel. Shape of Ice. What's it about? The Titanic. Oh, what, they made that film about Willie now, does DiCaprio? It's a little more illuminating than the Hollywood version, Toya. See, this is what I get all the time. I ask a serious question and folk either ignore me or think I'm taking the mick. Then work at school. I can't. Everyone's always mucking around, and if you, you say you want to work, they just make funny and you lose all your mates. No, you won't take one. I'm never going to learn out. Do you know how much private tuition will cost? I can pay. I've got a job. Round here, you'd pay 15 to 20 pounds an hour. That much? Up to 30 sometimes. How much did you think it was? Well, I'd get 3.50 an hour here, I thought. Maybe a fiver. Tell you what, we'll give it a try. But I can't afford those prices. Well, we'll talk about the money later, OK? Yeah, right. Cheers. <laughs> if we're going to do this, I want to know that you're really serious. Oh, I am. I, I promise. There's just one thing. What? Can we keep it to ourselves? Why? I don't want my friends or family finding out, cos they'll probably just make fun of me. OK. Your secret's safe. We'll have a cup of tea and a fancy in here. Oh, hello. Looks like we've stumbled into last chance saloon. Oh, you'd feel at home, then. What's that you eating? Last supper? Oh, don't start another argument, Fred, please. No need. It's all over about shouting. Oh, do you think so? Gail, not here, Roy. Uh, she left it early. Oh, come on, let's go somewhere else. Have you been up Sunrise Hillway yet? There's a lot of folk up there rooting for you. Yeah, we know. Chep Store Orb, they've got your stickers in the windows. Why are you telling us this? Seriously. I like to give a loser a fair chance. Come on, councillor. Sally! Uh, what did you want to say in the rovers? Well, it was just after last night. I can't leave Kevin. Not because I don't want to. It's the girls. What are you doing? Oh, just in case uh, Maxine's watching, she'll think it's business. It'd be different if I was on my own. It's not because I don't want to be with you. Don't worry about it. I understand, really. Anyway, there's no rush, is there? No. Do as good to think about it. Meantime, we can just go on seeing each other. Unless you'd rather not. No, I, I want to see you. I want to see you more than anything. Well, everyone thinks I'm seeing Maxie. Well, which you are. So, she can act as our cover. Look, you got my mobile number if you want to call me over the weekend. Think about me, won't you? Couldn't get you out of my mind if I wanted. Um, any problems, ask Mike. Yeah, sure, just leave it with me. <sighs> All sorted? Yeah, it's no problem now. Alec, hmm? 
Come on, get yourself off home to bed. Eh? I can manage here tonight. Oh, all right. If, if you're sure. Yes. Do you know, I've been thinking. If Ken Barlow's at a loose end, I could ask him to work in the shop for me while I'm getting better. What are you looking at me like that for? He's done it before. Well, yes, I know he has, but we've had this conversation this afternoon. We didn't. Did we? Yeah, when you were having your lunch. Are you sure? I think your brain's playing tricks with you. You have been overworking. Ah, well, uh, maybe it is, eh? Early nights will do me good. Yes. But promise me you'll have one too. I, I won't be long, I promise. Night, Alec. Night. Night, Rita. How's it going? Oh, hello. Very well, Alf. Our labours are done. Well, you don't look as if you've broken sweat all day. Yeah, well, uh, we've hardly had anything to do since lunchtime. How come? You'll find out soon enough, Alf. Hello. He's here. Oh, my goodness. Shall we tell him now? Tell me what? The results. It's not been declared. A prison sentence says it has. What do you mean? That young man you've been toiling your guts out for has done time in jail. So what? So, Miss Cheeky, he is disqualified from holding office. It's all there on the nomination form. I never saw that. It's in small print on back. But happened you were just joking when you started and you didn't bother to look. You had the nerve to call me a dilettante. But, uh... <laughs> Meet your new counsellor, everyone. Uh, there's some small print you've overlooked. What are you on about? Well, if Spider gets the most votes... But he's been disqualified. Yes, but that doesn't mean that the runner-up will win by default. You'll still have to have another election. Nice one. Are you sure about this? I've been a councillor half me like I suppose you just sat in here with your feet up, thinking it was all in the bag. You should have been out there getting voters into booths. Yeah, that's what we've been doing all morning. We went to those streets, you said. Did really well. Mr. McLeod? Sorry to bother you. It is right what you said about a prison sentence disqualifying him. Yes, I looked that up for you. Provided it was in the last five years and was for three months or more. I was only in for 14 days. Hey? Eh? You tell me it was six months. Yeah, well, I exaggerate sometimes, don't I? It was after a demo. I refused to pay a fine on a point of principle. Well, that puts a different spin on it. How do you mean? It means he can still win. Yes! yes! <laughs> Go on! <laughs> yeah! Look, Danny, you need slate tiles. Yeah, I know, but on a roof like that, you need slate. Yeah, I know it's more expensive, but concrete's too heavy. Yeah, he knows this. He just doesn't want to pay. Right, OK, fine. Put anything on, I don't care. Yeah. Everyone else is doing it. <sighs> Look, Danny, I'll phone you back. Cutting corners again, are we? Give us a break, will you? Yeah. So which lucky widow's going to have a roof fall on her head in a year's time? Look, I'm sick of this. You're going at me about cutting corners. Look, I knew your game the moment you got your grubby little hands on Vicky. There you go again, Vicky. <laughs> Shall I tell you what your precious little granddaughter really thought of you? She was ashamed of you. She was embarrassed, her and her parents. To them, you were nothing but a fat little joke. And all you wanted was her money. Yeah, you had your eye on that yourself, didn't you? What's the matter, miffed? Miffed that I got there before you? You're losing your touch if you ask me, Gilroy. Don't you dare accuse Look, me! Look, you just keep off my back, Gilroy. Stay off it. I, Norman MacLeod, being the returning officer at the election for a councillor of the St Mary Ward Weatherfield on the 23rd of July, 1998, do hereby give notice that the number of votes recorded for each candidate is as follows. Chester, Anne Francis, 127 votes. <laughs> Epworth, Lewis Christopher, 93 votes. Lodge, Stephen, 
184 votes. Nugent, Jeffrey David, 842 votes. Roberts, Audrey, 849 votes. I do hereby declare, I do hereby declare that the said Audrey Roberts is duly elected as councillor for the said war. 40% of the vote from nowhere. This is a searing indictment of the status quo. Official speeches in the correct order, please. The future is green. You haven't got a future. Seven votes difference. It's you as days are numbered, pal. You're off the air. At least we're afloat. Yeah. And we don't dock for four years. You'll be bones on seabed by then. I say bones on seabed. <laughs> Oh no, my friend, because I'm going to be tracking you. Every step of the way. A message for the health and safety executive. I'm speaking on behalf of uh, Mrs. Rita Sullivan of Coronation Street, you know, the lady who's had that business with the gas fire. Well, she's remembered who fitted it now. It was a firm called MacDonald and Webster. Sorry. Oh, when I saw you weren't in your room, I... I just fancied a change of scenery. A few people. I didn't get much sleep last night. Seven votes. It's such a shame. Yeah. You must be very down. I am, Aunt Ian. Although I'm an anarchist at heart, last night when a count was going our way, I wanted to win. I wanted to win really badly. You'd have made a wonderful counsellor. You can do more from the inside. I realise that now. Oh, thanks, Toya. Oh, that one's cold. Thank you. You're a star. And I feel really bad about letting you down after all the hard work you put in. I'd do it all again. I oh, know. No, only uh, I thought I'd just pop round before I go into work. Oh. And you're all right, are you? Yes, I'm all right, Alec. And look, don't take this the wrong road, will you? But. I'm not an invalid. I don't need 24-hour surveillance. Yeah, well, there's no harm in checking. Well, Leanne's down, sirs. If they were out wrong, she'd have let you know. Yeah, well, I prefer the personal touch. Well, you've checked, and I'm all right. So if you leave me when I get dressed, I'm sure Leanne will be pleased to see me in that shop. You, you're never going working down there today. Well, of course. I mean, who else is going to keep ship afloat? Well, you did suggest Ken. Ken Barlow? Mm. Did I? I can't remember. Hey, Alec, I have no memory of that at all. Well, it, it's early days yet. I mean, your system's had a shock, Rita. It's not a bad idea, Ken. Will you ask him? Yeah, yeah, leave it to me. Hey, Alec, I don't know what's happening to me. Look, rest. That's what you need. Rest and more rest. Morning, ladies. How are we all? Councillor Roberts. What can I say, except what are you doing here on a Saturday morning? She's working, Fred. Working? She shouldn't be working. This jewel of a woman should be basking in the triumph of newly elected office. Well, she's not. She's doing my hair, if you don't mind, and I'd like her to get on with it. Do you know how fortunate you are having her in your employ? Oh, Fred, please. No, no, no. The truth has got to be told. Do you realise the financial implications that could result from having Councillor Roberts working here. Yeah, bankruptcy if you stand there keeping her away from her work all day. Hey, something you'll have to get used to. I say you'll have to get used to that. What bankruptcy? Absence. Flexibility is the name of a game in a councillor's life. 
Fred, what exactly are you trying to say? Nothing! Look, uh, Fred, it's really best if you leave us to it, because Saturday's our busiest morning. We've got Audrey, Maxine away. Audrey, hang on, hang on. What do you mean, Fred? He means, Fiona, that I'm going to have to spend some of my time at council meetings. Council, committee, policy groups, think tanks... Yeah, but it's not going to affect my hours here, honestly. Honestly. No, you can't say that, Audrey. Yes, Fred, I think I can. Now, look, would you go, please, and just let us get on here, right? Yes. Right. Very good, then. Never let it be said I came between a good woman and her work. Well, try, ladies. Oh, Just ignore him. You know what he's like? Sorry, Maud. Arena, nice to see you on the mend. Oh, hello, love. How are you feeling? Oh, you know. Yeah, I know. Listen, I was wondering if I could have a wee word with you. Yeah? It's about something Alex said. Oh, right. Yeah, about the accident. Look, uh, I was just wondering, were you thinking of getting the authorities involved, like he said? Alex said that? Yeah, he did a couple of days ago. Well, he's lying. Well, I just wanted you to know, Rita. Look, uh, I'm not trying to cover anything up, you understand? I mean, I'm willing to take the blame if I was at fault. Listen, no one's blaming you and no one's called anybody in, so you just forget all about it. I'll have a word with Alec. Thanks, Rita. Like I say, I'm very sorry about anything that happened to you. Oh, well, don't you worry about me. You get yourself better first. And forget about that damn fire. I have. I'll see you. Cheerio, Rita. So, how's the Kingmaker doing today? The Queenmaker is doing very well, thank you, Alec. And to show you how well I'm doing, I will have a small tincture of your finest scotch and threat by way of celebration. Right. Nay, nay, just a single, Alec. Oh, you're all right, Fred. It's on the house. You deserve your success, and I'm in need of a bit of iron in my soul this morning. To the lovely Audrey. Yes, long may she be putty in our hands. Putty. Uh, mine, I wouldn't mind. Uh, I w you know, I wouldn't mind that. Uh, oh. I mean, she may be a lady of a certain age, but she's still a proposition in my book. Uh, I, um, there's me thinking your interest was strictly political, Fred. <laughs> there comes a tide in the affairs of men, Alec. Ah, well, if you're dipping your toe in the water, watch you don't get out your depth. Yeah, but... Uh, there's not a case of still waters running deep there, is it? You know where you are with Audrey. What you see is what you get. Yes, and what do you hope to get, Fred? Me? Personally, I... Personally, I will catch any crumbs thrown me way. And politically? Oh, very handy. Very useful. Our representative inside that council chamber. Uh, forewarned is forearmed. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it, oh, and I thought a little celebration this evening. Few drinks, sandwich, say thank you to our voters. Yes, well, I can do that, all right. And don't fret, I shall foot the bill myself and see. I shall want a discount, mind. No. <laughs> Queen of the May! Queen for today. What are you having, Councillor Prey? I'm having problems, thanks to you. I deliberately, as yet, have said nothing about time off for these council meetings. Then you swan in, shooting your mouth off, and now I'm suddenly into explanations. Well, I'm sorry if I've caused you any embarrassment, Audrey, but I'm not sure that is just reward for a man who's pounded the streets on your behalf for the past few months. Nevertheless, I will be grateful if you keep your mouth shut in future. I do know the score, Fred, really. Got your woman in then, Alec? Uh, you she see, she started as she means to go on. You know what they say, power corrupts. Uh, let's hope so, shall we? Oh, look, don't think I'm being presumptuous, Ken, but uh, you wouldn't be by any chance looking for work, would you? I thought I'd made my position on working for you quite clear, Alec. Oh, look, it's not me, not escorting. No, no, this is a bit closer to home. It's just across the road, in fact. Uh, Rita wants someone to look after the cabin while she gets on her feet, someone she can trust. She wondered if you fancy it. Oh. 
right. Just a minute. Just a minute. I'm coming. Ooh. Coming. <clears throat> oh, yes? Mrs Sullivan? Yes? Uh, my name's Dalton, John Dalton. I've come to talk to you about the accident. Sorry? The accident regarding your fire? Can I come up and see you? Uh, sorry, I don't understand. Are you insurance? Uh, if you let me in, Mr Sullivan, I'm sure I can explain. Oh, right, just a minute. Mrs Sullivan? Yes? Thanks for seeing me. Uh, John Dalton, Health and Safety Executive. You might remember speaking to a colleague of mine whilst you were in hospital. Uh, I, I don't know. Maybe. Uh, my memory of all this isn't very good. No, I realise it's been very traumatic for you, and I'm sorry to have to bring this up again, but we've had a phone call. A phone call? It was on the answering machine this morning. Now, I know that my colleague said you couldn't remember the name of the company who fitted the appliance. That's right. Well, the caller claimed it was a firm called McDonald and Webster. Can I ask if that means anything to you? Can you tell me who phoned you with this information, Mr Dalton? I'm afraid I can't, Mrs Sullivan. You mean you won't? No, I mean I can't. It was an anonymous call made on your behalf. Oh. Peter. Uh, your door was open, I thought. Oh, I'm sorry, I thought I shut it. Oh, that's all right. Uh, this is Alec Gilroy, a friend of mine. Alec, this is Mr Dalton, a health and safety officer. Oh, oh, all right, right. Health, health and safety, really. Uh, Mr Dalton. Yes, Mr Dalton's come to see me following an anonymous phone call. Oh, well. Uh... Really? Yes, from someone claiming that uh, Webster and McDonald's fitted my gas fire. We took the gentleman's call yesterday. Gentleman? Oh, yes, sorry, it was a man. I was just asking Mrs Sullivan if she knew them. Yes, I do know them, uh, but I can't remember who fitted the fire. Have they ever worked for you? Uh, yes, they have. Uh, they've done one or two jobs for me in the past. Including the fire? Peter, why don't you just tell him? Oh, Alec. Come on, why do you persist in this beating about the bush? Because I don't see what good had come of it. It might prevent the same thing happening to someone else, Mrs Sullivan. I don't think that's likely. The company doesn't exist anymore. Bill Webster went to live in Germany, and Jim MacDonald lives across the road confined to a wheelchair for the rest of his life. He won't be walking again, let alone fitting anything for anybody. Spider, where have you been? Are you all right? Yeah, fine. Can I have an orange juice, please? I called at your house on the way to work, but there was no one there. Yeah, I just needed to think. I went down a calf. You were so unlucky last night. Yeah, well, it's the way it goes sometimes. How much? No, I found me. No, I can't. No, really. Oh, thanks. That's very kind. And don't you go feeling a failure, cos you're not. Last night was a moral victory. Two pints, please. Come here, sit down. I know this is not the best time, but I need to talk to you. Hey, look, if you're worried about me, I'm I'm not worried about you, it's me! Hey, uh, look, Curly, don't be silly. You did all you could, we all did. Not the election. Her. Uh, Lorraine? Yeah, she's blown me out. What? She's made it plainly clear that she's not interested. Yeah, of course she's interested. Look at the way she's staring at you. Leave it to me, I'll have a quiet word. Well, thanks for talking to me, Mrs Sullivan. I'm sorry the visit was necessary. So am I. But as far as I'm concerned, the matter can lie. I've no intention of pressing charges. I think I've got that message. So what about you? Well, under the circumstances, it's unlikely we'll proceed with any charges. I will, of course, have to visit Mr MacDonald to corroborate your story. Is that really necessary? I'm afraid it is. Well, go easy on him, will you? He's had enough knocks for one lifetime. Don't worry, I'll see myself out. Bye, Mr Gilroy. Yes, Bye. Uh, bye. Uh, yeah, right then. Uh, if that's settled, I think I'd best be going as well. Sure you've done enough damage for one day, Alec? I don't know what you mean. Oh, you know what I mean, all right. 
I told you not to interfere. You deliberately went against my wishes. Look, I had to, Rita. An anonymous phone call. It was only right they should pay for what they did to you. That was for me to decide, not you. I was only thinking of your interest. No, you weren't. You were trying to drop Steve MacDonald and his father right in it. I don't know how you could even think such a thing. Oh, go, Alec, will you? You're wearing me out. Look, Rita, believe me, I did Just it for go. you. Go! You don't need to come through the back door, Toya. Oh, well, we'll still keep the secret, didn't we? All right, well, sit down then. Can I get you a coffee or something? No, thanks. I'd rather just get on with business if we can. OK, OK. Now, before we start, there's uh, one or two ground rules I want to establish between us. Ground rules? Yeah, conditions. Now, if I set you any work, I want it doing properly, and I want you to meet any deadline that I set. No excuses, OK? OK. Right. And I want it to be legible. Neat and clear so I can read it. Well, my handwriting's good when I want it to be. Well, let's start. I really do want to learn, you know. You wouldn't be here if I didn't believe that, Toya. Now, if I'm going to help you, I'm going to have to give you back some self-respect, some self-esteem. What do you mean? Well, you say you feel thick, uneducated. Yeah. Is that because you are thick? I don't know. I can't spell. Shakespeare couldn't spell. He wrote some pretty cracking plays. I wouldn't say I was thick. Well, I mean, I'm not special, but not thick. Lazy, maybe. Do you find what you do at school interesting? No. And they pick on me, the teachers. Do you give them cause? Yeah, sometimes. Well, the trouble is that if you get behind, even just a little bit, we well, sort of get lost, you know? And if you don't understand something, do you ask questions? Well, they'd think I was even thicker than I am if I did that. How the teacher's going to know you don't understand something if you don't tell them? Do you know? OK, well, that's the last condition. If you don't understand, you ask, OK? However simple, however much you think it shows you up, you ask, OK? OK. Good. Right, have you brought your set of books with you? No, but I can go and get them. What are we waiting for? You know, I've been thinking, Sal, if we do get this garage, then I've got plans. Huh? Maybe a bit of expansion, you know. Get things moving. I'm, I'm sick to death of just doing repairs and servicing. I fancy my chances with a bit of dealing. Yeah, well, one step at a time, Kim. Yeah, well, what I'm saying is if I do decide to expand, then I'm going to need some help. You know, maybe a receptionist in the office. Put the cars in and that. Make sure all the books are up to date. Make sure all the right parts are ordered, you know. Just streamline things a bit. And what are you looking at me for? Because you'd be the perfect choice, wouldn't you? I don't know anything about garages. Well, you can learn. Come in, get a feel for the place. I've already got a job. So this wouldn't be like a job. It'd be a partnership. We'd be working together. Cut our overheads at the same time. Forget it. Why? Because I like it where I am. And anyway, what you're suggesting, that's just a recipe for disaster. Yeah, but once he gets hold of them, get the Sorry to interrupt, in. Mr Baldwin. Sorry. Um, I just wondered if I might have a word. What about? Work. I need a job. Yeah, you and a thousand others, sweetheart. A very good seamstress. I don't have any vacancies. That's not what I heard. Then you heard wrong. I don't want to bolster anything, Mr Baldwin, but I bet I was probably the best seamstress in Weatherfield. That's absolutely fascinating, Hayley. But I'm not interested. I really am not. Interested. Hiya. Hiya. Cottage pie, all right? Yeah, I suppose so. Well, have you still got the knock on with me about this garage? No. I'd have made you a proper one, but you know what it is. Where's the kids? Oh, they're over at Girls playing. She said she'd give them the tea. Mm. Do you want this before you get changed or after? You put it in now, haven't you? See, if you work for yourself, there wouldn't be this rush. Eh? You'd have more time, you could work your own hours. Look, oh, Sal, I'm sure me and you would work great together in that garage. A husband and wife teams aren't a good idea. Why not? Because we'd always be talking about work. Oh, not necessarily. Yeah, we would. You can't help it if you're in business together. It'd be, have you ordered that part for whatever, and what time's that van coming in for a service tomorrow? Yeah, but at least you wouldn't have the factory hours, would you? Kevin, I like my job. And I like the girls. It's a change from the house. If I worked in the garage all day, we'd have nothing to talk about. I just don't see what's so special about working over there, that's all. Yeah? Hello? 
Hello? Oh, God. Ace it when that happens. Oh, it'll just be some kids mucking about. I'm glad me and you and Lady Wife are back on terms, Alf. Oh, I will. Plus, she'll get you everywhere with Audrey. She loves being the centre of attention. Well, it's the least I can do. I thought I'd blow on it when I opened my big gob in the salon this morning. Yeah, well, don't go thinking that the old champagne celebration will do the trick forever. Oh? Well. Look, look, she might seem stupid sometimes, but she's no mug, isn't Audrey? And if you and Alec think you're going to line the pockets with any influence she has in the chamber, forget it. No, no. I'm t I've known Audrey for a long, long time. And I tell you, if she's in this for anybody, she's in it for herself. She's never like that, is she? I'm telling you. I'll tell you something else while we're at it. I didn't vote for her. I never want to go through that again, ever. Oh, hello, is my old political adversary. How are you? Congratulations, Mrs Roberts. Uh, Councillor Roberts! Oh, come on, Fred, now. Let's be generous in our victory. Thank you, Spider. Would you like a glass of champagne, though? What a Thank woman. You. Yeah. What an open-hearted, yeah. generous soul. Yeah. Are we all charged? Yeah. 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 Right, uh, you'll be glad to hear that I'm not going to make a speech. Yeah. Oh, yeah. All right, all right. Suffice it to say that the best candidate won, yeah. and we're here to celebrate that. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, thank you all for helping and for voting for her. Yes, indeed. Thank uh, you. So, thank what you. I'm going to do now is to propose a toast to Councillor Roberts. Oh, Councillor Roberts. Roberts. Yeah. I'd just like to add something, if I may. Oh, there you are. You may have won the victory fair and square, Councillor, but I'm warning you, I might have lost the battle, but I haven't given up on the war. Oh, well, well, Miss, that's fighting to hey, you just get on with your serving. <laughs> He did give me a chance, well, he wouldn't even listen. I know he can be rude when he won't. Yeah, well, oh, yeah. it just seems so unfair. I know there's jobs out there and I know I could do him give him a chance. Perhaps I could make a difference. Oh. I'll pick me moment. <laughs> Very brave in coming in here tonight. <laughs> well, to be honest with you, I didn't know any of this was going on. I came to see you, so thanks. For what? Well, for telling me I wasn't a failure. You know, telling me that we'd won the moral victory. Well, we have. Yeah, you're right. And from now on, I'm going to get back to my old self, get all this power trip out of my mind, and uh, get back to some real issues and a real struggle. I hope you're not including Curly Watts in your calculations. Why? What's wrong with him? Doesn't matter. Well, listen, he fancies you. Do you think I haven't noticed? Yeah, but I think he's really serious. Yeah, well, I'm not. He's the last person on earth I'd fancy. So, uh, you don't fancy him, then? No, Spider, I don't fancy him. I fancy you. Excuse me, can I have a word with you? I thought you were doing that already. <laughs> you know, Mr Baldwin, you have an unfortunate manner with you sometimes. Oh, really? Yes, you, you can be very patronising when you want. Are you looking for a fight, Roy? <laughs> no, no, I, I'm, I'm looking for a wager. A wager? I never heard you down as a betting man. I, I only bet on certainty. <laughs> no such thing. Uh, yes, there is. She's a certainty. It's just that you can't see it. Look, I really haven't got any more time for this. Perhaps this isn't a good idea. You mean you haven't got the stomach for it? I mean, I haven't got any more jobs. I'll bet you that my Haley can outmachine any seamstress on your present staff. No, just do me a favour, will you? You mean you won't take my bet? Well, what bet? Fifty pound. You make it a hundred. OK. If I lose, you get a hundred pound. But if you lose, she gets a job. What do you say? Be at the factory tomorrow afternoon. Less money in the bank. That's how it's taken. Is it because you don't want to be with me? It wouldn't be good for us to be together all the time. It wouldn't be good for anybody. Well, we could give it a go. So I give my job up and then decide it doesn't work out, and there's somebody else sat in my seat at Baldwin's. Hello? Who is it? Nobody. Isn't it? Yeah? Who is this? Who is it? <sighs> Ung up. Right. What are you doing? Dialing 1471. Then we'll know. <sighs> 
with Eld. Shall we? <laughs> Go on then. Tell you what, you're chirping for the Monday morning, aren't you? Yeah, I like that sort of music. But I've been thinking, I'm going to do a print out of the accounts, bring them home tonight, show you what a doddle it is. What? Even the VAT, Sal. Once you get the hang of it, it's dead easy. Kevin, how many times do I have to tell you I don't want to get the hang of it, thank you very much? And it's not because it's, it's too difficult, as if Natalie can do it and I'm too stupid. That isn't what I meant. I don't want to work at the garage, full stop. Why? Even if it means you could work with me? I've got my job at the factory with my mates. Oh, it's not like you're never going to see him again, is it? You can see him every dinner time in the Rovers. Don't bully me, Kevin. I'm entitled to say what I prefer, aren't I? Oh, so this is because of Natalie. Because it is the job she used to do. No, it's got nothing to do with her. I'm just telling you that I like my work life how it is. There you go. Thank you. Bye. Right. Rita. Hmm? I was just wondering if you needed any extra open air. You know, just till you get yourself back in full time. Cos my dick is desperate for all your work and he'd be brilliant. Pardon? Working in here. Or he'd be really good, Rita. He's really good with people. Nick, what do you take me for? Hey? I'd get a lot of work from you two being together, wouldn't I? Yeah, yeah, you would. Well, I don't think so. Anyway, it's too late to ask, Millian. I've already got a new assistant lined up. Oh, who? He should be here any minute now. No, you don't mean him again. Uh, no, I don't. Uh, Rita. Rita, please. Right, I'm coming in. I don't want to talk to you. Listen, you've got to let me explain. Explain what? Why you deliberately went against everything that I asked. I didn't do it to upset you. Well, you have upset me. Look, I did it out of caring for you. Those McDonald's could have killed you, Rita. They should be reported. That was for me to decide, not for you to interfere. Especially when I kept saying to you, don't. Yes, but you were in no position to decide. I mean, damn it, you're still recuperating. Look, I was acting in your best interests. Don't come it, Alec. Don't pretend you were doing anything but getting back at Steve McDonald again. Uh, well, not on my own account. It was for you. Oh, please go, Alec, before I lose my temper completely. Look, you've got me all wrong, Rita. I don't think so. Oh, Morning, Rita. Sorry I'm a bit late. Don't apologise. Well, Leanne, your turn to teach me a few things now. Have you seen my handbag, Toya? Hmm? My handbag. Have you seen it? No. No. You're only practically sitting on it. Hey, What's that you're doing? What's it look like? Is that a school book? Yep. You're reading a school book in your holidays. So, what if I am? What's come over you, then? I've told you, I'm fed up of people thinking I'm thick. So I'm going to get educated. Well, don't act like I'm against it. You are against it! I said to you, I'm not against it if you're for it. Don't be daft. I'd love you to pass all your exams. Why? Then you could go off to college, couldn't you? Like Leanne's Nick. You could train for a proper career in an office. You could have a smart suit and an handbag with a gold chain on it. Eh? Think about it, Toya. Imagine it. You could find yourself going out with them executive types then, couldn't you? Are you kidding? You are. It, it's them lot in suits in offices who don't care about this planet. What do you think I'd want to be one of them for? I don't know where you get your daft ideas from. I'll see you later. Hi, Maxine. Oh, hi, Sal. So how was your weekend? Did you have a nice time? It was brilliant. It was just fantastic. The hotel was gorgeous and Rock Greg was lovely. And, you know, better than I'd even dreamt it would be. Yeah? It was just fantastic.
think we'll be doing this next century. Yeah, maybe there's something we could buy. Yeah, like a blowtorch. Hi, Spider. Hiya, Curly. Hiya. Hey, you haven't got any good cleaning tips, have you? Only otherwise, Curly's scar is going to look very sad indeed. I should have worked on it yesterday instead of getting myself alive. Should leave it if you ask me. I'll miss seeing them posters up. What am I going to do? I don't know. You can try White Spirit. No, not that. Her. Uh... So, are you going for a pizza at a pub? At uh, pub. Yeah, me and all. Can't be thank you walking. Excuse me. Hiya. Um, I've got an interview with Mr Baldwin. Is he around? Uh, yeah, he's in there in his office. Oh, she's an interview. Oh, about uh, an interview. If he's thinking of hiring her after turning down all his daughters... It's not very fair, right. is it? Really? Come on, girl. Come on, Oh, howdy. Hi. Uh, in the office? Yeah, I won't be a minute. How'd you get on this morning? I'll tell you what, I'm selling them faster than you're making them, Mike. That's what I like to hear. That is fantastic. Well, not if you can't deliver. Oh, don't you worry. I'll deliver. Oh, really? Well, you heard the man, Hayley. If you've got the skills, I've certainly got the work. All right, let's see how you get on with that little lot. I'll uh, give you half an hour. Right, y'all. And I'll tell you what else to really wind me up. Our Les says that Baldwin is thinking of taking Greg on permanent now. Oh, no. We'll see more of him than ever. Oh, well. Oh, well, it's well. not flaming oh well, is it, Sal? Yeah. Not to me, any road. Why should we suddenly have to be bossed about by him? Exactly, yeah. yeah. yeah we yeah. won't be. We uh, will be. Yeah, yeah we, we will, because that's what yeah. he's like, isn't he? Yeah. He'll be lording it, finding fault, swanking about, yeah. all to puff himself yeah, up. Yeah, I mean, Baldwin's bad enough. He won't yeah. have anything to do with <laughs> us. Well, of course he will. <laughs> and I'll believe it when I see him. He yeah. won't. Yeah. He'll be on the phone, I, I mostly, or he'll be out yeah. about chasing yeah. orders. Oh, yeah, ever. said so, did he? Yeah. You seem to be in the north. Just assuming, that's all. Yeah, well, I hope you're right. Excuse me, lads. Start up. Thank you. Ooh, your face. How much? Eh? How much money have you lost? Presuming that else could give you such a long one. If only it were money, man. Why? What is it, though? It's me and Rita, Betty. We've had a serious misunderstanding. Terminal, in fact. What about? Well, it's, it's probably all my fault. I don't know, Betty. It's hard to be entirely sure of your own motives sometimes. Well, you really are upset, aren't you, love? Upset that I've upset her, which, yeah. I mean, I wouldn't do for the world. But when I think what's happened to her, I mean, someone should be held responsible, shouldn't they? Are you ready, Ollie? Yes, same again. Oh, yeah. All right. Um, you couldn't still do a spare pair of hands around here, could you? You do with a few. I'm up to my eyes here, why? Well, it's just I need a job for me summer holidays, so I thought maybe you. Yeah. Well, hopefully it's in the jeans. Um, with my dad and that. Oh, yeah, right. Um, so, if you can use me. Oh, if you don't mind a bit of graft, start as soon as. No, no, cool, yeah. Oh, Lee, um... I'll just be one second. You'll never guess what now. What? I asked Rita if you could work with me. Well, she's only gone and got him. My ex-teacher. Eh? Hey? Boring Barlow. He's behind the counter with me. Can you believe it? What, he serving? Yeah. I'm having to work with him when I could have been working with you. Yeah, well... It... Oh, I'm really act off about it, Nick. Well, there's no need to be. Kevin's taking me on here. Has he? Yeah. What? You mean like all summer? Well, yeah, I think so. And it'll probably be better money than in the shop anyway. Nice one. Mm -hmm. Right, what are you doing tonight? Tonight? Mm hmm Steve wants to watch more boring football, so I'm definitely up for a film or whatever else you fancy doing. I'm really skin. The weekend practically cleared me out. All right, um, how about we just go out for a drink? I'll pay. So as long as we can go into town and get out of this boring place. Yeah, but... Uh, Get your drink. 
Yeah, please. Playing again? No, no, thank you. Not for me. I'm uh, going to get off after this drink. Please stay just for one more. Maxine, no, it's all right. I can see exactly what you really want to do tonight. Yeah, pint in a glass of white wine, please, Annick. Um, right, who wants half a lager then? You want another drink? No. No. Yeah, I'll have half. Do you want another no. drink? Yeah, one? No. No. Can we talk? Yes, sir. Um, two halves of lager, please, Betty. OK, dear. This isn't a great idea. Cheers. Why are you shutting me out? You didn't even say hello to me in the factory. I'm being careful. I've got to see you tonight. I won't let. No, don't do that. Why not? Come to the Regent Hotel. I'll meet you in the bar at 7 o'clock. Please. There you go. Thanks. Right, your time's up. How'd you get on? Well, uh, I finished that load there, so I fetched some more from over there. What? You mean to tell me you've sewn all that lot I gave you? Yeah, why shouldn't they have done any more? Oh, no, 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 that is great. I mean, it's unbelievable. You've done more than this lot could do in double the time. Yeah? Yeah. Still, I might have known that Roy Cropper wouldn't bet on a non-starter. <laughs> well, then, can you start tomorrow? I just thought I'd pop in and see how you were keeping, love. Oh, well, over the worst now, oh, Betty. Thank, thank you. you. I've put kettle on. You'll have a drink, won't yeah, you? Yeah, lovely. Mm. Do you know, it frightens me now, Betty, how near I came to bumping myself mm. off. And do you know, I had no idea. Totally ignorant of it. Oh, no, love. It was so lucky, you know, that Alec was there for you. Yes. Yes, I get the impression there's a big rift between you two. Oh, Rita. What a rotten shame. I see. Has he been running me down? No, no, no. He's very upset about it, love. Well, I don't honestly think I can afford to care, Betty. Oh. I'm sorry, but I basically think he's a very selfish man. Yeah, but what's that? No, I mean it. I mean, if I owe my life to him, mm. then I've got to put that down to an accident. Mm. He just happened to be there. Because if I thought there was another side to him with genuine human feelings, then I'd know my brain were addled. What if I was to tell you that it was him that asked me to come and see you? What if I was to tell you that I saw him moping around all day because of you? I've even seen him under charge for a round of drinks. Very unlike himself, is that? Don't stir yourself, then. Hmm? I'm sure I'm very uninteresting compared to all them sordid sex scenes you're reading about. Hey? Or is it blood and guts? It's one of my GCC set books, actually. Steinbeck. Have you read it? Give me a tea and fancy, please. Oh. Where's Roy? Toilet. Oh, Hayley. I got it. What? The factory? Yeah, I had to go around and do a sewing test, and now he wants me to start it tomorrow. Oh, wonderful. Are you pleased? Oh, that means we can see each other every day. <laughs> it does, doesn't it? Couldn't be better. Well, I thought it could be more convenient from an address point of view, so I've been round to estate agents to see if they've got anything near here. Oh, try them flats on Victoria Street, the new ones. Oh, yeah. Oh, well, it'd be very convenient. We could go around and see one this week. OK, then. <laughs> there you go. Do you know you're the second shop assistant that said that to me today? What on earth's happened to there you are? Hey? Why do you say there you go? Because I'm not going anywhere, am I? I'm stopping here. Well, I'm not. Right, I'm off home now, Roy. Right, right, Pete. That is £4.20, please. Oh, brilliant. Thank you very much. Thank you. Right, well, I'm just finishing. I'm just going to nip over to the corner shop. It won't be a minute. What's he telling you for? Eh? Hey? He's just finishing. Why is he telling you? How should I know? I'm going to come in for a pack of chewy. Oh, it's half gaga if you ask me. Well, you can tell he used to be a poxy teacher, that's for sure. He's a good teacher. <laughs> yeah. Oh, what would you know? You never did any schoolwork your whole time there. Yeah, so? 
All I'm saying is you can tell he used to be a teacher because he can't stop himself being dead boring. Yeah, well, you can't stop yourself from being ignorant. Hey, you, hang on. And who do you think you're calling ignorant? Like I am and you're not, is that it? At least I'm not proud of it like you. Because you don't even feel bad about it, do you? What, feel bad because I was bored stiff of the likes of him? It's him who should be feeling bad. I mean, the rest of the stupid, boring teachers. They like making you feel useless, Toya. They get a good kick out of it. You're just making excuses. Because it's at least half your fault, Leanne. And I bet you regret it now, don't you? If you're honest. Now you've got your nick and you can see the point of education. Unless in being clever is what you're scared of. You might get bored, you know, might he? All right, then. Uh, Toya? Have you been paying her to start a fan club up for you or what? Sorry? You know, I've been thinking maybe we should get a young student in for over summer. Here you go, girls. Never even thinking there was young Nicky Tilsley. Can we just see him have the teas, Kev? Hey. I just want to pop round and see Rita. I'll probably have something with her there. Are well, you going there now? Yeah, I just want to have a proper check-up on her. Well, don't be too long, eh? I was going to open us a nice bottle of wine tonight. Kevin! Yeah, well, just be as soon as you can. For heaven's sake, she's just come from nearly dying. Don't be so selfish. So you've read the whole of the first section? I've nearly read the whole book now. What? Page by page? Yeah, I'm really into it. Much rather read than watch boring telly. Right, well, that's very good. Well, look, Toya, I mean, if you're really enjoying it, perhaps we could firm up our arrangement now. You mean money? Well, no, really more... Perhaps you should discuss it with your parents. No, I've said to you, I don't want them to know. Well, what I mean is... Well, please, Mr Barlow, don't tell them. I'll, I'll get you your money, I promise I will. Yeah, but... Why so secretive? I just don't want them to know yet. Fine. OK. Right. Let's discuss of mice and men. <laughs> Should really be called a rabbits and men, shouldn't it? Rabbits? Well, it's rabbits he mostly goes on about, that Lenny. Then that other one, George, says he wants to spend the night in a house full of cats. Cats? Yeah, he says here, I marked it to ask you. And when the end of the month come, I could take my 50 bucks and go into town and get whatever I want. Why? I could stay in a cat house all night. I'm not surprised he's sorry now. He's got a lot to be sorry for. And you know, Sally, I feel sorry for him myself. But there, feeling sorry for him won't change him from being selfish. That's him through and through. Well, it's a shame, we to you two falling out now. Anyway, you don't want to hear any more of me moaning. Don't be silly. No, it was very kind of you to come round and see how I am. But there must be a million things you've got to do at home. Oh, no, I've told Kevin So, come to... on. Off you go. I've got my tea to put on and you've got your tea to put on. Are you sure? Yes. Give Kevin and the kids my love. I will do. Mm -hmm. Take care of yourself, Rita. I will. Bye, love. Bye. I surprised myself today. Oh, you did? Yes, I did. No, 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 don't tell me. Let me guess. Uh, you're giving all the girls a cash bonus. I didn't say give myself a shock. No. I hired Hayley Patterson. Sorry? Ah, <laughs> see? I've surprised you now, haven't I? You hired Hayley? Yep. What, hired her for what? To plead for your soul? No, as a machinist. She starts tomorrow. 416, love. Oh, cheers. Keep thank the change. You. Oh, thank you. Are you trying to tell me that Hayley can sew? Yeah, like an angel. Amazing. She's worth two either clubs. Yes, love. Pint? Yeah, right. please. I'll get it. Oh, right. Pint, then, is it? Yeah, please. So I've blown it, have I? First rule in the book. Do not tell a guy what you feel till he's told you. I don't believe in rules. No? Well, you still haven't told me, have you? Look, I think you're really cool, Lorraine. But what? But nothing. It can't happen, can it? What can't? What you're talking about. Between me and you, even if we wanted it to. Why not? Hey, it. Ah, two of those, please, Lorraine. Cheers, mate. You waiting for someone? Wow. You'll, uh, you'll have some wine? Yeah, go on. Right then. Cheers. Cheers. You have a hard time getting away?
OK. Not as hard as trying to get you away from Maxine. I saw her today. She said she'd have the most wonderful time she could have ever dreamed of with you. Did she? So you obviously didn't miss me that much. I missed you like mad. That's why I called you. Hmm, Maxine obviously got loads of attention. Sally, me and Maxine, you know there's nothing in it. I'm telling you the truth. So why do you bother? Because I feel guilty. I can't just dump her. I don't want to hurt her. Well, what are you going to do? Try and let her down gently. But if you're not interested in her, you're just using her. I'm trying to be kind to her. <sighs> kind? Well, what would you rather I did? Just drop a bombshell on her? Whatever I say, you'll say do the same thing to Kevin, won't you? Look, you're here with me now, Sally. That's all I want to talk about. Just us. I am completely mad about you. I have missed you, Anna. And I've missed you. I'm going to test you now. Are you brave enough to risk it? I've been thinking, Haley. Mm -hmm. Best keep well to yourself over there. Pardon? At the factory. There are a pretty rumbustious bunch of women work there. Some of them, if they were lads, they'd be in an institution. Now, what do you mean? I mean, the, the way they get when they're on lager. Very uncouth. <laughs> well, very intimidating, actually. Well, they'll be pretty much sober at work, though, won't they? What I mean is... Just keep them at a distance. Don't... don't open yourself up to them. Oh, right. You honestly think I can't look out for myself by now? Well... Don't worry. I'll find me own level with them. And anyway, I think I know a bit more about being one of the girls than you do. Dad? Hello. I've got a toothache. Oh, have you sweet, Sarah? Show me. I want to show Mum. Well, Mummy's not back from your Aunt Rita's yet. But I want her to make it better. Well, she won't be too long. Yeah, let Daddy have a look, eh? No, I want my Mum. All right, don't upset yourself. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll give Aunt Rita a ring now, eh? Tell your Mummy to be quick. Hiya. Hiya. I was just on the phone to call you. Hey. Rosie's got toothache. Oh, come on. I think she's missing that disco you promised her. Oh. Ollie and Wheat had a bit of a bust up and couldn't get away. Yeah. Thought you must have been having a real session. Did you get through just then or did it just ring? No. Hey, do you come home just in time? Silly, I feel like a little girl on my first day at school or something. <laughs> I've done your packed lunch. There's a couple of ham rolls, salt and vinegar crisp, bar of chocolate and some fruit. Can I ask for Mr Baldwin? <laughs> Just keep your head down, Hayley. You know, keep yourself to yourself and everything will be fine. <laughs> what do you mean? Well, nothing. I mean, as I say, the girls at Underworld, they, they can be a bit... Um, ..rough and ready. <laughs> have to take my chances. Anybody, I'd best be going and I don't want to be late on my first day. I I'll walk in with you. No. Oh, yeah. I think I can find my own way. Anybody, I want to go to the cabin and get some sweets. Uh, it's a good way of making new friends is a bag of sweets. Morning. Not too early, am I? Never be too early. Well, I just wanted to get stuck in really. Well, pleased to wear it. Spare overalls in the office. Should do you. All right, sound. Kettle's in there as well. Brew up, and I'll go through everything what needs doing, all right? <laughs> right, anyway, right. I told her, Les. I said, well, if that's the way you want it, fine. But you can go out and buy the whipping cream, because that whipping cream in our fridge is for Sunday's trifle. Watch out. Look who's here. Morning. Hi there, Hayley. Hello, Sally. So, do you know where everything is? Oh, yes, thank you, Mr Baldwin. I explained everything. 
Oh, I buried it. You're going to be sitting just there. Oh, right. Would you like one? I don't like humbugs. Hey. You want to keep your eye on her? Oh, what for? Because she could be a spy for Baldwin. Yeah. There you are. I've just opened a bag of them new Chris you ordered. Soggies, they should call them. I've seen more crisp on a week old lettuce. Oh, not now, Vera. Not now? It were you that flaming ordered him, and we're right out of the regular sort. Can't you handle it? I seem to remember you're the licensee. Eh? Hey, are you feeling all right? I'll survive, Vera. That Rita Sullivan is a... What do you mean by that? Is she all right? I couldn't tell you, Vera, and quite honestly, it's none of my concern. Nothing is from now on, except this pub. What's up with him? I think him and that Rita's had a fallout. <laughs> Could have caught his fingers in the till. Thank goodness for that, that's all I can say. Oh, now, come on, Vera, even Alec is entitled to a little bit of womanly comfort in his old age. Not with her. She's had her eyes on getting behind that bar ever since you asked her to invest in this place. Vera, Vera she turned us down. Only because Sally Gilroy jumped in first. I mean, listen, if he's sweet on Rita, that's the first thing he put straight. No, no, you're forgetting something. The Rovers isn't ours now. Well, half of it isn't, anyway. Anyway, looks like we can send all clear signals up now, cos it's over. What are you playing at? I'm not playing at anything. I'm just getting on with my work. You buy on it or something, Harry? No, I just love sewing. I reckon you were right. Baldwin's up to some at putting her in here. Well, what did I tell you? She must be one of them undercover time and motion sorts. Whatever she is, she wants putting straight. Shooting through them knickers like a flaming zipper. She'll give all the rest of us a bad name. I don't think it's happening. Hey, you, Miss Turbo Needle. I'll tell you what, Ida. Now that I've done all my work, why don't I help you with yours? Yeah. Well, there's no use me sitting here twiddling my thumbs for the rest of the day, is there? Come on, give me some of your work before Mr. Baldwin notices. Well, all right then. Uh, I've got some bits and pieces when you're ready, aren't they? Go on, then. Yes. You see, you know your trouble, Ida. You always see the worst in folk. Um, here, Lee. Have you got one of them on the books? Thanks, love. <laughs> All right, start it up, then. All right, switch it off. I think you've got it. Reckon you've got your old man's touch there, and no mistake. You reckon? Born mechanic. Yeah, well, um, scraping around gearboxes ain't exactly what I've got planned for the rest of my life. Oh, no offence. No, I'm taking. So what are you going to do? Be a PE teacher? Yeah, maybe something like that. But, um, well, maybe more. I've got ambitions like that. Oh, good on you, mate. Whatever you decide to do, it'll be your own boss, I tell you. I won't go back to working for anyone else. No way. Them creaming off the top. Get your own business. You can't beat it. Hi. How's it going? Have you been? Your business. Why do you miss me? What do you think? Good. Well, you'll make the most of me tonight, then, won't you? Tonight? Yeah, come round the flat. I'll cook for you, if you like. That's if food's what you're after. Greg, I'd love to. But what? You're on the street. Somebody might see me. Anyway, what am I going to say to Kevin? Well, you'll think of something. Right. I will. Right, girls, that's it. Last one over to Rovers has to buy all butties. <laughs> Are you not coming, Ailey? Oh, um... 
bad bad bad. Do that for I'm starting to enjoy myself. Yeah, that's why I stopped it. Hi. Ah! <laughs> Hi Lorraine, how's it going? Okay, I suppose. Hey, hang about, what's up? Nothing. Nothing, don't give me that. You've got a right to drop one. Well, I reckon you deserve everything you get after the way you've been messing me around. What are you talking about? I'm not. Spider, it's plain as daylight. You're more bothered about Curly than me. If that's how you want it, fine. I hope you're both really happy together. Look, Curly's a mate. You don't do the dirty on mates. It's part of my personal code of ethics. Doing the dirty? Well, if that's what you think of me. No, wait, Lorraine. Look, it's not that I'm not interested. I am. It's just a matter of ethics, is it? Yeah, that's right. Then that's easily settled. If you fancy me, tell Curly the score. What? Tell him straight as a mate. Tell him tonight. Then we can start having some fun. Hello. <laughs> Hello, Roy. Hello, Hayley. Good morning at work, was it? She's a natural. She was born with a needle and thread in her mouth. <laughs> Great, thanks, Roy. Can I get you a drink? Oh, no, thanks. Janice has just got a round in. I'll see you later. Right. <laughs> hey. It's a funny and that, Roy, isn't it? Oh, Roy's lovely. Oh. It's just a bit quiet, isn't it, Hayley? Well, you know what they say about quietens. Is that right, Taylor? <laughs> <laughs> What's she like? There you go. Here, hang on. You're giving me the wrong change. Are you disputing my mathematics, young man? <laughs> yeah, I gave you a five and you give me change for a tenner. <laughs> Good job I got me principles. Not like you to go giving your cash away, Alex. Yeah, I must be coming down with some of Betty. Rita, mm, is it? What? It's not. Lewis, from what I saw Rita yesterday, I mean, take it to your bed and keep it out of sight for a while. Seems like a very good idea to me. Hi, mate. Hi, hi. I'm Betty. Could I have another one of these for Curly, please? Come on up, love. Cheers, mate. So, have you seen any sign of the lovely Lorraine today? Uh, no, no, nothing. <laughs> Hey, why don't we fix up a night on town tonight? I'm at Moo for a bit tonight. of fun. Oh, I'd love to, but I've got some balls coming round to look at my dad's house. I'm sorry. And I'm booked up and all. And it's so unless he's curry night. Once a month, right, I make him one of my specials. Extra hot and spicy. And if I'm lucky, it gives him a jump start for the rest of the night. <laughs> 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 you know what I mean? Don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> Hi. Oh, excuse me a minute, Alma. Oh, fine, yeah. Hello. I just popped in about tonight. Oh, what do you fancy doing? No, I can't tonight. I've had a pick up a day at the factory. I just want to put my feet on. Oh, right. Shall I get a video and a bottle of wine, then? <laughs> Sorry, Max. I'm really done in. I, ju I just wouldn't be good company. Well, I'll take my chances. Not tonight, eh? See ya. Uh, excuse me, excuse me. Uh, much as I like clean hair, if you finish your social schedule, do you think we could get on before I drown? Yes, yeah, sorry. It was wonderful, Roy. Yeah, I feel like I really fitted in. Good, good. That's good, Hayley. Really? Just like one of girls for the first time in my life. It's like a dream come true. Yes, it must be. Honestly, and I don't think I've ever had such a laugh in my life. That Janice Battis is a scream. Hayley, you will be careful, won't you? What do you mean, careful? Well, women, I mean, particularly that sort of women in factories, they do have a tendency to pry and to gossip. 
I, I mean, you must make sure you, you don't say anything you, that you live to regret. Right, what do you think I'm going to say? Well, I don't know exactly. I'm just advising caution, that's all. Caution? What do you want me to do, Roy? You'll live my life in a washed-out jam jar. No, Hayley, of course not. After everything I've been through to have the kind of life I've wanted, be who I wanted to be. Oh, what are you trying to do, Roy? Frighten me out of what I've always dreamt about. Hayley, no. Well, I hope not, Roy. Anyway, I've got to go. I've got some people coming to Dad's house. I'll see you. Hayley! I would celebrate. Celebrate? Celebrate what? Oh, I don't know. Next Thursday, if you want. Look, I've just got this feeling everything's going to turn out marvellous, so it all is. Look, I thought we'd give the girls theirs and I've got a Chinese takeaway in the oven for us. Oh. Well, it's all right, isn't it? You're not going out anywhere, are you? No, of course not. Where would I be going? Right. So how's our personal code tonight? It's not funny, Lorraine. You've not told him yet, then? No, I haven't seen him today. Well, he'll be in later. Oh, no, he's at some Weatherfield Traders Conference tonight. I thought you hadn't seen him. Oh, yeah, he told me yesterday. Well, that gives me all evening to talk some sense into you, doesn't it? Mm. Oh, that was good, wasn't it, eh? I tell you what, you can't beat a number 52 and fried rice. Yeah, it was great, that Kev, lovely. So it won't be too long before we don't have to worry about takeaways. We can afford to eat out every single night. Oh, hi, yeah, when's that gonna be? When it's not just one garage on Coronation Street, but two, maybe three, eight, and car sales two. <laughs> Are you sure there's one water chestnuts and not magic ones? Look, this is ambition, Sal. We've got to look forward to the future. Got to really go for it. Go for what? You and me working together. Kevin, I've already got a job. So, this will be us two working for ourselves. I tell you, I can be the mechanical side and you can be the financial brain. Financial brain, am I? You're just trying to get me to look at the books again. So, it wouldn't hurt just to have a look at them, see what I'm talking about. All right, I'll look at them. Great. But first of all, I'll just nip out and get us another bottle of wine. OK, and I'll tell you what, I'll go upstairs and get the books. You'll need that, you know, if Vera catches you in here. Letter. Oh, as bad as that, is it? <laughs> Look, you've had fallings out with Rita in the past. I mean, ever since I've known you. Aye, more than I care to remember, Betty. Mm. All of them my fault, I dare say. But there comes a time when you don't want to fall out any longer. Uh, life gets too short for that, don't it? The truth is, you never really know how short life's going to be. Hello. I've lost two husbands in my time, but at least <laughs> I've never left anything unsaid. Well, you're lucky, Betty. You see, for me, feelings and words, well, I've never been much good with either one of them. Well, it seems to me that uh, sorry might get you off to a good start. Mm. That was worth waiting for. Oh, I'm sorry, Greg, I can't stop. Just grabbed an excuse to come round and tell you that I've only got a couple of minutes. And Kevin refusing to let you out of the house, is he? <laughs> no, it's nothing like that. It's not easy, you know. I'd rather be here with you, but... I oh, know. You've got a family. I've got another life. Sure. Believe me, I'd rather be here with you than going through Kevin's flaming books from garage. <laughs> Bookkeeper as well as wife, eh? <laughs> no, but... But I gave him some of my mum's money so he could buy his partner out the garage. Now Kevin wants me to take more of an interest in it. I see. Well, I hope you're saving some for yourself. To have some fun with. Oh, well, yeah, I've still got 25 grand. <laughs> could have a lot of fun with that. Don't forget it's yours, though, not Kevin's. Sorry, it's none of my business, is it? No, but it's true. 
I'm sorry, Greg, I've got to go. It's no sweat. If you can't stay on, it's having any night. Go to bed and dream of you. Hey Max, it's Greg. Yeah, I've uh, I've changed my mind. How do you fancy a club tonight? Thanks for letting me in, Rita. I'll make it quick, Alec. Just on my way to bed. I, I know. I'm, I'm sorry. It's so late. I've left Jack and Vera to turf folk out and lock up. This this couldn't wait. You see. I see. Well, you best get on with it then, aren't you? It'll be an apology, I suppose. Ah, well, I suppose that's as good a place to start. Look, Rita, I I'm truly sorry. I've treated you very badly, I know. Yes, Alec, you have. I thought what I'd been seeing this last few weeks was a different side to you. Something that you were probably too scared to show most people. No fool like an old fool, is there, Alec? No, Rita, that's not how it was. That's exactly how it was. You used me. Just like you used me over the business of the Rovers. You used me to get back at Steve MacDonald. Look, be believe me, Rita, I never set out to take advantage. I swear it. Maybe not. Perhaps you just can't help yourself. Cos there isn't another side to you, is there? That's all there is. A selfish, scheming, sad little man. Have you got no hopes to go to? Come on, you lot, sup up. That does mean you too, Spider lad. Yeah, I'll be with you in a sec, Jack. Right. Yeah. Have you seen out of Alec, Jack? He's scaring around somewhere, isn't he? No, he's nowhere to be seen. You don't think he's had an accident now, Sally, do you? No, no, fear. I'm not that lucky. Gone across to see Rita. You are? I think you wanted a quiet word with the love. Sneaky little rats. <clears throat> Here you go. I'm off phone. Still struggling with your conscience, Spider. Look. Lorraine, I do fancy you, you know that. But I've got to find a way of telling Curly first. Or maybe this will help you. Ooh. Ooh. Lorraine! <laughs> See you later, Spider. I'm a too late for a pint. Obviously, yeah. Uh, I am. Rita, listen to me, please. I've listened to you too many times, Alec. I shan't be doing it again. Rita, please. I didn't come round here just to say sorry. That was the easy part. Well, you've had enough practice, haven't you? Look, just let me finish what I've got to say and then chuck me out if you have to. Go on. All them hours sitting by your bed in that hospital, wondering if you were ever going to come round. It was like I saw my own life flashing before me. The old days in the clubs, the strokes I pulled, the fights we had. There were good times, and there were not so good, lots of them. But believe me, Rita, I saw them all. I... No, no, let me say my piece. I'm not used to talking like this, so don't break the flow. The point is, we go back best part of 25 years, you and me. And, well, they say you never know what you want until it's too late. That's exactly how I felt watching you in that hospital bed. Watching you breathe, wondering if the next one was going to be your last. I thought I've suddenly found what I want, and it's too late. What are you trying to say, Ali? I'm... I'm trying to say... I love you, Rita. Alec... And I want to marry you. I, I know I've no right to expect you to feel the same way, especially after what you've said tonight. After all, what I'm a 
Just a lonely man with any good years left in him long since gone. But at least it's out in the open now. I've told you how I feel. There's no left unsaid. You love me? Yes. Yes, I think so. I've never had much to do with it before. I mean, what me and Bet had was special, yeah? But if I'm honest with myself, it really was what you might call an arrangement. No, Alec. I can't marry you. I am. Well, at least I've got it off my chest. Marriage isn't just about love, Alec. It's about trust as well. And there isn't a bone in your body I could trust. Not after the way you've used me. I'm sorry, Alec. I don't believe a word of what you've just said. Well, I suppose you're right. I'll see myself out. When I read her. Yeah, I've got time to go anywhere else. I'll see you there then. Speak to me again. Why, what have I done? Had a good laugh, did you? You and Lorraine about me? No, we didn't. I saw you last night in the Rovers. You couldn't keep your hands off each other. Lorraine? Oh, don't you start. Curly, mate, don't be like that. Reception committee. Roy, what are you doing here? <clears throat> I just wanted a word, if you've got a minute. We've been falling out. Hey, mine's like that morning after. So I'll make him suffer for a day or two. And if you take my advice, you'll do the same way in. Um, <clears throat> I'm sorry, what, what I said before. Of course, I, I want you to make friends. I'm not. It's, it's just... It's OK, Roy. I know what you were saying and I know why. What's it, bag? Oh, uh, somewhat for your coffee break. I mean, I know she's no spring chicken, but she's still a good-looking woman, Rita. What do you think? She's all right. Whereas him, you wouldn't fancy him blindfold in a thick fog. So? So what's she bothering with him for? Company. She could get that from a cat. No, it's this pub. It's got to be. It's the only thing that makes any sense. Vera, he doesn't own this pub. He only owns half of it. Yeah, but she thinks with her money, he'll get the other half. Morning. That's all busy. Morning, Cook. Uh, Here, pour yourself a cuppa. Oh, thank you. So how's Rita, then? How would I know how Rita is, Vera? Well, you went to see her last night, didn't you? My, you are well informed. And what did I go to see her about? Does your information run to that as well? Well, I suppose it must have been something important going that late. Yes, well, you can suppose all you like, Vera. Whatever we talked about, I've no intention of telling you. Not if you start prying from now till doomsday. See? I told you it was something important. Right, I'll leave you to it for a bit. She'll be back by dinner time. Yeah, OK. Hey, a boyfriend bought her that. What, he just wanted to buy you present? Yeah. Oh. I think he's trying to get back in the good books, but she won't admit it. He's always in me good books. 
I'm just going to go and see if they've sorted out my tax yet. Must be really nice to have a fella to cook for you. Do old meals for you. It is, yeah. Well, set. Makes them independent then, doesn't it? And not to stop them walking off when they want to. <sighs> I've been watching you. And I was watching you and Maxine this morning. Being all lovey-dovey. So, we talked about this. Me and Maxine... It's nothing like us. No. You spend more time with her than you do me. You spend nights with her. Sometimes. Yeah. So what was she doing there last night? You must have been waiting to sneak her in the minute I got round that corner. But we can't talk about this now. So when? She didn't want to know. This is Rita. I went round there, let her know how I was feeling. Which didn't come easy because the way I were brought up, feelings were what you kept to yourself. But I thought, no, speak out, and so I did. And she did the same. Oh, dear. I should have known better, a chap of my age. You thought it had got over all that. Well, when my Billy were courting me, I mean, I was forever saying, no, leave me alone, and don't be so daft. I didn't mean it, though, you know, not deep down. Uh, well, the difference is, Betty, Rita did. Mm. It's 2.20. Thank you, my blossom. Oh! Michael, you're just in the nick of time. Large scotch, is it? Hey, okay. uh, yeah. All right, go on then. Large scotch, love. So, how are things in the knicker industry? Still making the odd bob or two, are you? I'm surviving. How about yourself? Steady, you know. We're not such hostages to fashion in meat trade as you are in ladies' underwear. Your average housewife will still want a stewing steak, no matter what she's wearing under a frock. <laughs> um, excuse me, Mr Baldwin, do you know where Greg is? Uh, I've got no idea. Well, will he still be in the factory? He can be in Timbuktu, for all I know. I employ the guy. He can handle his own social life. So have you never been married or lived with anyone? I haven't, no. And how old are you? 32. Well, what about Mr Pastry that were outside this morning? Has he, uh, has he got around to asking you? Well, me and Roy are really... Uh... Just good friends. <laughs> you can be. We are. Not friends, we are fella, and there's no tin in it. Yeah. Oh, that's flying in face of nature. <laughs> oh, all right, girls. Sally, not with you? No, love. She said she had some shopping to do. All right. Cheers. I don't think I've ever been friends with a fella. Even one I'm married to. Especially the one you're married to. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm friends with Roy. <laughs> Yes, who is it? Oh, it, it's me. Alec. She turned up at the door five minutes after you left. I could hardly send her away. Why not? What? You want me to tell her I'm seeing someone else? Then she'll spend all her time trying to find out who it is, and when she does, everyone will know, including your husband. Come on. Let's be sensible. I was just seeing you with her. Well, I'm sorry about that. I think he's bound to get fed up with me. No. When she's available and she can call around any time she likes. And the more she does that, the more I think, when am I going to see Sally? What if I can get away tonight? Great. Well, I think Kevin's going to be taking the girls swimming, so... Come round. Unless you want to go somewhere else. Hey! Is our toy not in? No, she comes in at four after school. Well, normally, yes. But she's not at school, so she's doing extra hours. I'm sorry, I don't know anything about that. Well, it's what she told me. Yes, well, she must have forgotten to tell me. Now, excuse me, but folk do like their dinners hot. I dare say you've seen quite enough of me already, but I, I couldn't leave things as they were. Me neither. I was on the verge of asking you to call round. Oh? Alec, I am sorry if what I said sounded harsh or unkind. I'm still shaken up with everything. Well, I'm sorry I ever said a word. 
Why, I should go and make a fool of myself and drive away one of the few real friends I've got. I must have taken leave of my senses. Look, do, do you mind if I smoke? Not if you'll have a drink with it. Oh, all right, then. We're, we're just a small one. And what's all this about driving me away? You haven't driven me anywhere. Well, you won't want embarrassing like that again. You didn't embarrass me. I was very touched by what you said. Ah, well, I, I must admit you didn't sound it. No, but I have apologised for that. Aye, yes. I mean, we see each other every day as it is. Yes. I mean, we live next door. You come in my shop. I go in your pub. True. So, I mean, what would be the point of even considering changing that? Well, none. <laughs> none whatever. I mean, like, like I say, I, I'd take leave of my senses. Of course, I'd had a few drinks and so you get maudlin, don't you? No, there'd be, there'd be no point. None at all. Except for companionship and affection and not being on your own at night. Uh, well, well, yeah, there is that as well. Let's just carry on as we are for a bit, shall we? And see what develops. Well, you think something might develop? Oh, no, Alec, you're at it again, asking me questions I can't answer. I, I, I know, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Rita. No, I came over here to try and save our friendship, and if I've managed that, that's enough. For now. For now. <laughs> There we go. Now, we're going to have some fun today. We're going to do punctuation. Oh, I'm hopeless. Yeah, even so, it's absolutely vital. In any case, it's a bit like riding a bike. Once you've got the hang of it, you've got it for life. <laughs> the only time I tried riding a bike, I fell off and cut my knee. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what we'll do. I'll take you through the basics, inverted commas, apostrophes and things like that, and then I'll get you to write out a short passage of dialogue. Dialogue? Yeah, a conversation between two people. But, uh, it doesn't matter what they say, the idea is to demonstrate that you can punctuate the speeches. Have you seen that new barmaid in the Rovers? Lorraine? Er, uh, oh, yeah, I think so. Mm. Think she's pretty? Uh, well, well, I haven't really thought. No, well, you're probably too old. <laughs> no, not really. That's one of the problems. Anyway, let's not worry about that now. Let's worry about inverted commas. Do you know what they look like? Little marks. Mm -hmm. And, uh, when would you use them? Hiya. Oh, hi. Where were you at lunchtime? I was looking all over for you. Yeah, sorry. Um, Mike asked me to uh, deliver this late order and I got stuck in traffic. Hi. Well, so, uh, well, I'll see you tonight. Do you mind if we don't? Only Mike's asked me to take this buyer out for dinner. OK, um, tomorrow then? Tomorrow. Definitely. Mm. See you then. He's lying, isn't he? I know for a fact my Baldwin didn't send him on a delivery because I went into the Rovers and Mike said he hadn't seen him. Yeah, well, maybe Mike just couldn't be bothered telling you. Didn't sound like it to me. Anyways. What? It's just something. It's, I don't know what. It's, it's something. What, what something, Max? What are you on about? All right, it's not something somebody else is thinking about when I'm with him. No. No, it is, and he keeps lying to me, and it's all a load of rubbish instead. He's just seeing somebody else. Max, come on, calm down. No, I know. Max, you don't know. Yes, I do, and you know no, too. No. You know you don't like him, I know you Max, don't. Max, I don't know him. Yeah, well, that's it. Neither do I. Right, so this is a conversation between the stupid man yeah. and the bimbo. Yeah. Right. Bimbo, do you like my hair? Stupid man, yes, I think it's lovely. 
Now, can you see how you've, uh, you've opened the inverted commas, but you haven't closed them? Why do men, who are, like, clever... I mean, I've called him a stupid man, but Ian really is clever. What happens to their brains when they see someone who looks like a Barbie doll standing in front of them? Well, that's one of life's mysteries. Well, I think it's pathetic. Yeah, but uh, can you see what I mean about not having closed the inverted commas? Yeah. Right, OK. Bimbo, can I see you tonight? There should be a question mark there. Shoopy man, you can see me any night. Because they do, yeah. And all because of our areas and what sort of figure she's got. That's all that matters. Well, of course it's not. Well, you have to say that, don't you? <clears throat> Bimbo, somebody tell me you change yourself to trees. There's only one N in chain, by the way. Stupid man. Oh, I don't care about that anymore. Not since I've met you. Pathetic. <sighs> At which point, the punctuation has gone out of the window. Look, I'll tell you what, I'll correct it for you and you copy that again, OK? I mean, I'm trying to improve my brain, right? Yes. I'm wasting my time. I might as well invest in a bottle of air dye. Right, I'll see you tonight, then. And I'm sorry if I was a bit snappy, you know, about Rita this morning. Yeah, that's all right. Anyway, she's getting her strength back now. In fact, she said she might be in tonight for a drink. I said mm. we'd all be delighted to oh. see her. <laughs> Uh, oh, bye, Betty, love. Ta -ta, love it, sir. Ta -ta. I'm off as well, love. Right. Yeah, well, it's come over him. He's cheerful all of a sudden. Oh, it's, it's from when he went over to see Rita. She must have said something he wanted to hear. Anyway, I'll see you. Ta-ra, love. ta -ra, Betty, love. And you said I were imagining things. I did not say you were imagining things. Look, they're after getting together. And that means one thing, this pub. And what do you do, eh? You sit there on your big, fat backside as if you haven't a care in the world. What am I supposed to do? Well, for one thing, you can start agreeing with me. And where were you this dinner time? I told her I couldn't come. Ah, no. No, you was not. Because I went in there thinking I might be on for a freebie. And the barm cake that runs it told me he hadn't laid eyes on you all day long. And what's more, he wasn't expecting to. So come on, let's have the truth, shall we? I went to a mate. Oh, I. So why do you have to lie about that? Because we were doing schoolwork. I know I'd only get a mouthful off you if I told the truth. Schoolwork? Yeah, but I see it. What do you want to go doing schoolwork for in your summer holidays? To catch up. Th then I might stand a chance of getting a decent job instead of end up doing something gross like being a barmaid. He's not wrong with being a barmaid. Well, I'll just have a couple of drinks with girls and then I'll be back. But I might not see you later, girls, so give us a kiss. Go on, have a nice time. See ya. See you later. Bye. Yeah, see you later. Girl. Bye. Uh, a pineapple juice, please, and, uh Oh, usual, please, right. Oh, uh, and a pineapple juice. <laughs> Getting the right little regular you, aren't you? I know. <laughs> I'll read here again at lunchtime with girls. <laughs> oh, you're getting on all right with them, then? Yeah. yeah. Of course, they want to know all about me, so, like I say, I've had to be a bit careful, but they're ever so nice, really, and it's great to be a part of a gang. I can't say I've ever done that, not even at school. There you are, love. It's, uh, 120. Oh, I think I've got the correct money. Ah, evening, Vera. Oh, hello. Uh, Rita's not been in yet, has she? Not that I've noticed, no. Oh, no I didn't want to have missed her. No, you wouldn't. I think you'll find that spot on. <laughs> Sit down, shall we? Whether you'd be in. A point, please. Hey, listen, I thought I'd better tell you. Apparently, Curly saw us. That uh, saw us together. That'd be just about his level, watching. Oh, no fair dues. Look, he's upset with me because he's what I see in you. I'm putting a good word for him. I can think of lots of words for him, but none of them very nice. I even say, so, you can see his point of view. <laughs> I just can't help comparing myself with her. She's single. She can come and go as she pleases. She shouldn't have to make any excuses. She's not the one I want. I just think you're going to get fed up with somebody you can only meet like this. 
In secret. You're bound to. I'll see you every day at work. Greg, it's not the same. I felt really sorry for Kevin tonight. Why? Well, he thinks everything's all right. We've got over the worst and it's going to be all right again. Would it be if I wasn't around? No. No, not for me. I don't love him anymore. It's as simple as that. I could never have believed that you could fall out of love with somebody after 12 years. When you have a family with him, but I have. Perhaps he knows more than you think. No, he doesn't. He's not that clever, Kevin. He doesn't hide things. I'm the one who does that. I think he probably would have been better stopping with Natalie. <laughs> You've got me feeling sorry for him now. You were that pleased when he'd managed that holiday, all right? I think he thought he'd set the seal on it. And then when I gave him the money for the garage, and the rest of the money, well, we're just going to pay off the mortgage. He thinks this is proving how much I love him, all this money I'm giving him. What he can't see is the money's the only thing that I can give him. Go on, then. What? I just wanted you to know that I didn't do the dirty on you, as far as me and Lorraine's concerned. Why not? You did. Oh, look, I did everything you asked me to do. It's just... Well, she ended up taking a fancy to me, didn't she? I, mean, I can't help that, can I? <sighs> yeah, OK, OK, mate. In a way, you did me a great service. I come. <sighs> this is Raquel, the girl I was telling you about. Looks a bit like Lorraine. Yeah. Well, not only did I go out with her, I married her. I worshipped her. I would have done anything for her. And you know what she did to me? She left me. She walked out. So, thinking about it, you probably saved me a lot of aggro. Right. The thing is... You should be careful, mate. Here, look at her. Come to see what she's going to get for her money. She's seen it before, have you? Yeah, but she'll be looking at it through new eyes. I saw him. Rather you than me. And I think we're OK. You know, he was married to someone who looked a lot like you. Oh, well, thank you. Oh, that's really made my night. Oh, no, that's not what I meant. Do you mean he's going to start stalking me? Yeah, so they haven't put an offer in yet, but the estate agent thought they would be doing. Oh. Good. Oh. So, then I've got to sort out where I'm going to go. Well, I suppose you have. Uh, have you thought any more about Victoria Flats? No. No, not really. Mm. Well, look, um, let me know if you need a second opinion on anywhere you find us. I'll be glad to do that. Thank you. I know in one way this is none of my business, but... Go on. All this money you're giving Kevin... Which is all I'm giving him. It's all money, though. You think it's wise, handing it all over like that? Well, I've already given him half of the money to give to Natalie already, so it doesn't matter what I think, does it? OK. Well, the other... 25,000. Well, we're going to put that into the house. When you don't know how long you're going to be living there. I mean, going from what you've been saying about the way you feel. Well, whatever happens, I'm going to need a home, aren't I? So are the girls. A home, yeah. But it might not be that house. And it might not be with Kevin. It might be a different house. With somebody else altogether. <laughs>